So let's revisit Army Hammer. For those of you who are out of the loop, a couple years ago, Army got super canceled. And I even made a podcast about it that I think now is privated just because the information on it is way out of date. But Army Hammer was basically outed by an ex for being super into kinky stuff. The dilemma is that she also accused him of being a cannibal. And there's something about that that is obviously off putting to most people, but whether or not it's true is the mystery. Is it, was it true? I don't know, but it really canceled him from Hollywood. I mean, Army Hammer was like the handsome boy. Everybody loved him. And after this, he just fell off. Even for me, like I said, look, as much as I come to the internet to have nuanced takes on these scandals with boys, I, I also lose my interest in these boys. Like I stopped watching. I was so into Army Hammer's movies and stuff. And then I just fell off because now every time I see him, I see him as a possible abuser and I just like get the ick. But he's saying that those things were not true about him. And he's here to tell his story with Piers Morgan. So let's check it out. Army Hammer had it all. Money, looks, charm, an ever advancing career as a Hollywood leading man. But in 2021, it all came crashing down. A series of women accused him of being a sexually abusive manipulator, even, by his own words, a cannibal. He said, I'm 100% a cannibal. I'm freaking out. It was all he wanted to ever talk about. I get a note that says I'm gonna bite the f out of you. And he was just like acted mad. His cancellation was immediate and total. But Army Hammer has not faced any criminal charges despite a multi-year police investigation. Now, three years after his world collapsed, He's ready to face the world and go uncensored. He joins me now in the studio. I'm sorry, let's stop it right there. I think what's really funny about it already is like, and this was my initial initial commentary for this. It was like, I think a lot of men who are into kinky are into it for two reasons to generalize it or simplify it. One, they're power hungry. They want to hurt somebody in a way that gets them less in trouble. Or two, uh, they're into kinky because it is truly a form of expression and they just think it's interesting and they are and in they are interested in being, you know, consent based and thoughtful, but sometimes they make mistakes. OK, so two groups of men get into kink who f right? There's the third group that does it well and blah, blah, blah. But no one's perfect, right? Even like two amazing kinksters that are hanging out and operating together, they can make mistakes. It's just usually the way they have the conversation is different. So people make mistakes. But ARMY seems to fall into a category of he doesn't actually want to like research BDSM as a lifestyle. He doesn't actually want to integrate himself into the community. He doesn't care about the consent elements. He just wants the benefit of being a dominant, I want to bite you and I want to do this stuff, which is like fine in of itself. You're like, I'm not shaming you for wanting to bite your partner because I'm, I'm assuming you don't mean in an evil way. But if it is an excuse to be powerful and to dominate somebody in a bad way, that's not good. And I think Army maybe falls into that category most likely, but I don't know him. I don't know, but it seems like that's what is up with him. The question is, how do we avoid this? And can you? Can you educate people like Army Hammer into not being abusive or is their only desire to be in this lifestyle for the power? And this is a thing that dungeons do worry about is the person coming into this kink scene actually just exploring something nerdy and fun, using it for meditation or, you know, intimacy, or are they actually learning these skills in order to hurt people and get away with it? Well, Army, it's good to meet you. Um, obviously, I've followed your career. I mean, the thing I remember you most vividly for, because uh, I was in America working at the time, was Social Network and mm. this massive oh, yeah. hit movie. Mm -hmm. And you played both the wing. I totally forgot about him in the Social Network, but yeah, he killed it in that. Uncle Voss twins who were involved in the battle with Mark Zuckerberg. It was mm -hmm. a brilliant part. You played it superbly. You got lauded for it. You won awards for it. Um, and from you know from that to working with Leo DiCaprio with Julia Roberts. If people were talking about you as the next George Clooney, the next great Hollywood leading man, maybe the next James Bond. And it was legitimate praise. You know, you're a superb actor at the top of your game and it was all going the right way. I want to transport you, if you can, back to your mindset then. What did hmm. all that acclaim and attention do to you? <sighs> um, well, thank you, first of all. And thanks for having me. It's good to talk to you as well. Um, it was a wild time. I think that there was opportunities and successes that I wasn't necessarily prepared for and I didn't know how to handle or deal with. 
Um, so on the surface, while everything might have looked just like pure glitz and and glamour, uh, behind the scenes, it, it was it was honestly kind of like uh, nerve wracking and terrifying. A lot of it, and it's a lot of pressure. And pre- Army always looks like he's wearing braces. I want to say this: um, this is one of the many interviews he's been doing. If you guys have missed it, he's been on Bill Maher. He's definitely doing the. He's been on a podcast, like. He has been doing a lot of interviews with a lot of different people. And it it is interesting, sort of like he, he's trying to come back. He is trying to come back into Hollywood. You know, what's interesting, though, is like Hollywood's definitely done worse. I mean, hello, Weinstein, anybody? So it is kind of interesting that they but I think Army was just so new in the community. It's not like anyone would defend him. But think about how long Harvey Weinstein was in the community. Like, you just think about that. It's kind of interesting. Pressure that I didn't really know how to deal with. And a lot of it I didn't deal with very well. You dealt with it in a pretty time-honored fashion for Hollywood. <laughs> uh, a lot of drink, a lot of drugs, a lot of women. Yeah. Um, did you realize as you were going down that road that it's a pretty perilous path uh, with a lot of bodies littered at the end of it? No. No. I think at the time that was the last thing from my mind. And and by the way, if any of those thoughts would have popped into my head, I would have just assumed it was my own neuroses. And the answer to that would be another drink Mm. or more drugs or, you know, seeking comfort in another person, which I had become incredibly adept at. And, uh, you know, I I think I never had those moments Mm. or those thoughts until everything came crashing down. At the height of your partying, for Mm. want of an all-encompassing phrase, how hard were you partying? I mean, talk me through a big night out with Army Hammer. I mean, it, you know, I I definitely don't want to sound like... A- this interview's already off to a really weird start. Is it just me? Okay, wait. I think two of you have said he looks so sad. Army Hammer does have puppy dog eyes. Do not fall for them. Do not fall for his puppy dog eyes because he does have that. He has that like... Mm. You know, he has that, that look... Don't fall for it. I don't, I already, I haven't seen any of the interviews. So this is my first time seeing him back. I've waited to do it with you guys, but I'm already not believing him. I'm glamorizing. No, no, I know. But like, I was really good at it. Uh, All my friends called. Mm, Piers is setting up it up this way. So his success made him this way that Hollywood makes people go crazy. Maybe that's what Piers is doing. Piers does feel like he's setting him up for, he's leading him. He's asking like leading questions me the water buffalo because whatever they would drink i would drink all of that and more whatever drugs they were doing i would take all of that and more and when they were done or tapped out i'd move on to the next group of people Mm. hold on i believe it's called cute aggression when you desire to squeeze crush pinch or even bite the object of your affection due to overwhelming feeling towards them he is not having cute aggression i know because i have cute aggression I, he does not experience, his experience with wanting to bite his partners, from my understanding, was not about cute aggression. It was about dominance and possession, which is different. Cute aggression is a real thing. It is a real phenomenon. It's like when you say like, oh, I'm gonna squeeze the baby so much. Like, I'm just gonna love you to death. It's like a very specific relationship with like, oh, I, just, I get it around Indiana, especially where I'm like, I just wanna squeeze her. I love her so much. I just wanna, uh, and my partner watches me like, and he's like, oh my gosh. Like, and I do that with him too. I'm like, I just wanna squeeze you. I love you so much. But it's it's not about power and possession. From my understanding, Army doesn't have cute aggression. He has like a desire to own somebody. Also, I'm going to speed this up to 1.25 just because they are slow talkers. And go, all right, well, what are we getting into, guys? Like, it just... What would you drink? Oh, uh, I mean, you know, it would be a seven... I hate this already. Pierce is, like, setting it up, like, what would you drink? What would you do? He did do another podcast with one of his friends where it was more, like, intimate. If you guys vote for it, I will switch to that one. But I wanted Piers Morgan because I thought Piers is so sensational and he's so pokey that he might bring out more honesty in Army. So I had the option of watching this one with you or the one with his friend. But the one with his friend, I watched a little bit of it, gave me the impression that his friend was letting him cope and kind of lie. I don't think Piers Morgan would let him lie, if that makes sense. Like Piers wants the view. So Piers is going to piss him off. And then we're going to, you know what I'm saying? That's why I chose the Piers Morgan interview. Eight martini dinner and then, you know, keep going from there. With what? What do you mean? Well, oh. With what other drinks? Oh, wh- whatever you had. The answer was yes. And literally anything. Li- literally anything. And the answer was always yes. And what else? And, and what, what drugs did you take? I mean, what did you have? It, I, I, I wasn't 
I wasn't cocaine, picking. presumably, the Hollywood sure. drug of choice? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there was cocaine involved. There was stimu- other stimulants. Ecstasy? There was, sure, sure. Ecstasy. Did uh, you ever get into injecting in it? No, no. I, Are you I relieved never, you never took that leap? Because that's the one that often kills people. Yeah, I, it just, it, that was never a draw for me. Mm-hmm. I never, I never, fortunately, I never got to the point where taking drugs more recreationally wasn't enough. Uh, I think... I was acted upon by now. See, he's trying to make it sound like he's addicted. He's got a drug problem. He did this with baby reindeer where he was like, well, the the baby reindeer guy, Gad, is an addict. Maybe we can't trust his version of the story. First of all, that was over a decade ago. And second of all, not all drug use is like. Some people do drugs casually. I don't know how to tell you guys this. I feel like how is this not obvious by now that not everybody who does drugs isn't just doing it casually. If you can drink casually, you think you can't have drugs casually? Outside force. Were you addicted to any one of those things or were you addicted to partying? I would say I was addicted to escapism. Mm. That, that I was addicted to anything that would get me out of myself. I felt- Maybe we should learn how to use the word addiction better. Cause I really, this is, I really struggle with like, what is addiction? Because I just feel like we use that word to sensationalize our lives. But like real addiction doesn't feel like something you brag about. And this feels- different you know what i mean such a deep sense of discomfort in my own body why i mean look i no, i mean look i'm looking at a guy who should not be feeling uncomfortable about his body yeah right you're a very handsome guy don't you're very charming i've seen don't flirt with him bro interviews with you before it all blew up mm. um i'm looking at you now thinking why would you feel discomforted by your by who you are by your body maybe there is something to the idea that no one would assume it or people wouldn't accept you to feel that way that lend itself to you feeling even more that way you know, oh, well, you, you, you have everything in the world. You should be fine, so we're not worried about you. Like, yeah, yeah, pick yourself up by your own bootstraps kind of thing. But everybody needs help. I, I don't think... But what were you escaping from? I had, you know, I, for probably a myriad of reasons, um, I had the inability to make myself feel okay unless there was something else doing it for me. I didn't know how to... I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm on the couch in therapy here, but I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't know how to accept myself. I didn't know how to be okay in my own skin. These were never anything that I was taught. I believe him. And I do think... Like, I... Here's the thing. I do believe this is probably the case for a lot of people who hurt people that they're fucked up. Trauma makes you ugly. Not always, though. Not everybody who's traumatized ends up hurting people. Then you have to ask yourself, am I hurting people because of my trauma or because of who I am? Because I don't personally think we are our traumas. But I do think we should take partial responsibility for what we do regardless, right? So then the question is, yes, that I could believe you. Now what? Right? Like, I believe you. But also, now what? Because I believe in redemption. And I believe in his ability to be a better person. Do you really understand or do you somewhat understand? Now, let's remember that we haven't gone over his accusations yet. So we don't even know what he's apologizing for or faux apologizing. And again, this is what it means. Social work is hard. Like from all my understanding of people I know in social work, the reason it's so difficult is because you're dealing with some of the most underprivileged communities who also are struggling to such a point where you even want to abandon them because they keep abandoning themselves. There's something really hard about that in humanity. In some ways, he feels a little too entitled to me already, but I'm not sure if that's my prejudice playing a role because he is wealthy, he is white, he is in a position of privilege. So maybe my prejudice is playing a role, so I'll be open to that. But I'm not feeling a sincerity from him that I would prefer to see. Yes, you said I believe him too, but I also feel like he still can't face himself. Hard agree. That's what that's what the insincerity is, I think, is that I don't really believe he faced himself. And I don't think any of us really are. That's why therapy is such a huge industry. There'll be some people who will say, oh, come off it, Army. You were living the high life of a Hollywood star, a classic Mm. storyline, right? Of the good looking, smart talking, charming guy who just wants to party all the time. And that you can look back because things crashed and burned and say, actually, now I look back on it, I think I was running away, escaping, I was feeling this. Were you really feeling that at the time? Or do you think it's an explanation that you can now look back on with more clarity? I think like all things, it's not black and white. I'm sure there's a Venn diagram of both of those things. And the answer is probably found somewhere in the middle. Mm. At the time, did it just feel like I was having a good time? Yeah, some of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Other times, did it feel like I was so anxious and uncomfortable that I needed something? Yeah. I think both are true. It's not necessarily a binary thing. A lot of people in your position at that age, they love fame 
and also hate fame. Sure. That it is actually in its way a very insidious drug. Yes. And I would say for many famous people I've interviewed at stages of their careers, mm. it's one of the more destructive drugs, actually. Absolutely. Would you agree? Yeah, um, because there's aspects of fame that are, to be perfectly honest, delightful. What are the, mm. what are the best things of being famous? Yeah, you can get a table at a restaurant mm. when they're full. You don't have to wait in line for things. People give you free stuff, clothes, travel. Uh, people want to hang out with you. You become a popular kid. People want to sleep with you. People want to sleep with you. And people will sleep with you. And people will sleep with you just because. And, you know, even if they don't necessarily want to. And In that whole period. Yeah. True. How many women did you sleep with? Oh. You know, I, I was married for a, I a, a long portion of that. And I was faithful for a long time in my marriage. And I think that really saved me from going too far off mm -hmm. the deep end. You know, for the first seven years of my marriage, which, you know, included, you know, a year of engagement and, and all that stuff, I was monogamous. I, I was faithful. I didn't, I didn't cheat on my wife. Um, what made you finally cheat? Mm. I think that I got to a point where... I want to answer this really carefully. I think what happens in long-term relationships are the two people will grow constantly. Ooh, can I just say something before he says whatever his answer is going to be? They say there's the milestones in relationships and whether or not you make it or not. And seven years is one of the milestones. If you make it past seven years, you're going to make it to 14. And if you make it past 14, you're probably going to make it till you die. But seven years is when most divorces, I think from my recollection, occur. So he's on that seven year mark and that's usually when it happens. So I'm not that surprised because to be honest, most people, if they're going to be that statistic, he's going to be that statistic, which is why I say most people are settling in their marriages. When I asked my parents, what were you doing at your seven mark? My mom and dad both laughed and they were like, oh, having sex, making like having babies, running a business. We were just so happy. That's what I, that's what they were like. I was so happy. And I was like, cool. And they said, I said, 14 years, what were you doing? They go, oh, we were so happy. We were doing this. We had more babies. Our business was doing great. We had, we were happy. If you're not happy at those moments, those are the moments where it happens. Right? So, so seven years, 14 years. And then, yeah. And if the people start to grow apart at first, it's almost, it's, it's minuscule, it's unrecognizable. And it's like a tanker ship going on the open sea. If they're off by one degree for the first mile, you probably don't notice. Five miles, you're a little bit offshore. But you go 500 miles or 1,000 miles, you lose sight of each other and you're in a fog bank. And all of a sudden when you're lost and you've lost your partner because you're not checking in with each other, which is a two-way street, you can't find that person again. And I think that's what finally happened in my marriage. I think you have two people who grow, which everyone will do, but they weren't growing necessarily together. And from that first moment that you took the decision to be unfaithful, again, I'll ask the question, not because I want to be preary, I'm just curious about how bad this problem got for you. Mm. How many women were there from that point? Probably more than the average person would be exposed to. Give me a ballpark. I would say, I, you know, I, I haven't done the math. But... 50, 100, <laughs> 200, 500? Sure. <laughs> He just said, sure. <laughs> Maybe not 500. That's, that's, that's quite a bit. But many hundreds. I wouldn't say many hundreds. No. I, you know, I would say enough. <sighs> yeah. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. What do you feel about that now? Just what does he benefit from not giving a number? See, my brain would be like, oh, I can give you a number. Let me think. Like, what, what is the shame in giving the number? Wouldn't it be better for you to give the number so people don't imagine a bigger number than it is or a smaller number than it is? Like, you know? On that point, never mind the allegations which will come to if, you, but what do you feel about if I look at how it, you were behaving? Sure, if I look at it as it pertains to me, mm. I look at a guy who was really hurting and needed something and didn't have Ugh. it within himself to give himself what he needed. Ugh. So he was looking for that love or... <laughs> Or acceptance from other people. And that's one way to look at it. If I look at it in, you know, in relation to the other people, mm -hmm. I look at a bunch of people who were used like a drug to make someone feel better. It wasn't even about- But that's so normal. People, that's why conservatives don't believe in casual sex because they think you're using people for their bodies like a drug. It's like, yeah, that's why you're, that's why you have to ask yourself, are you having superficial sex? He's just so superficial in his answers. But to be fair- I mean, he's trying to, he's got a pressure. He's like trying to, you know, he's trying to do this whole like whatever interview aesthetic. But 
This is why, you know, sometimes having too many sexual partners is a cope. Sometimes having no sexual partners is a cope. Look, celibacy can be just as negative as being too promiscuous. And then it can be just as positive. It's, it's all dependent on why. Why? Why? Why is this happening? Why is it going this way? Why is it working out this way, right? And look, Army, for me, doesn't sound like he's done the work yet. And I understand it's a process. It could take a long time, right? But if he's going to go on this, like, interview propaganda machine thing, then he's better. He got he has to have a story because remember, he's not just doing this show. He did Bill Maher. He did other shows. He did other podcasts from my understanding from all the recommended videos I got of Army Hammer in their last month. I'm like, oh, he's on tour, right? Like, why is this guy showing up on everyone's shows? Because he's trying to, like, re, you know, integrate himself back into the community, back into Hollywood. I'm sure he's running out of money. Like, I'm sure he's going to need some jobs. Remember, like, just because you're famous doesn't mean you're making money. But I just don't like the way that he just described that personally, because even though it might be true and it's something you can say to a therapist, you might not want to say it on television. Those other people, um, which kind of makes you a cad, if you will. Yeah. Were you, were you very arrogant at the time? Would you say? No, I, you know, I, I don't think I ever was arrogant because I, I think I lacked the sort of. You sure about that, buddy? You sure about that? Overinflated sense of ego or self-confidence. I think there was a bit of an imposter syndrome at play as well. So it precluded me from ever being like, I'm the great. Okay, hold on. How does one successfully do an interview like this? He's being forced to talk about why he cheated while he's still a cheater. Most likely someone outed his taboo kink. He's forced to talk about it. He's not forced to talk about it. He's not forced to talk about it. He can just go away. He can still get jobs. He can do other things. It's his branding. He's doing this to save his branding. And ultimately he cheated and he has a problem. And he's the one ex like... He's the one who caused the problem. Like, this would never have been a problem if he didn't cause it. This He's not being forced to do anything. Like, this is his life. Like, he did this. He cheated on his wife. He had toxic relationships with other people. Right? Like, what are we talking about? Someone accusing you of being a cannibal? But it doesn't matter if he's a cannibal or not. Right? Like, he should be able... Okay, look. He's hiding something because he's acting guilty as fuck. But to some extent, he's probably hiding his shame because he hasn't dealt with it yet. Right? He's obviously not ready to talk about it. But ultimately, I don't see a lot of remorse. Right? Look, this is how I would have done it if I was him and I truly felt like I didn't do anything wrong. Hey, so there's this thing called kinky sex. And I had it with somebody. And I chose it with somebody who obviously was the wrong choice. We're all in a toxic cycle of you know, whatever we were all going through. And these were the consequences. And I am deeply regretful that I had the interaction with them. Again, we don't know what it is. I have to, we have to get to that point where they should have started the story with the actual accusation and then move forward. But he's not having a real conversation, right? He's not having the real conversation. So I'm not going to give him, this is 2024. I'm not giving these white men or men in general any benefit of the doubt, okay? This is 2024. We're not giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm willing to see him for where he's at. And right now I see a lot of avoiding. I see a lot of dishonesty. Somewhere in this, he's not being truly honest about his own personal experience with it. Now, maybe it's the, the Piers Morgan interview. Maybe it's the fact that it's a TV show. Maybe we should have watched the podcast with him and his friend and he would have like gone more emotional. But either way, what I hear is a lot of, I was hurt, so I hurt other people, but he has yet to say that I regret hurting my wife. He hasn't acknowledged her pain. He hasn't said he's regret hurting anyone yet. So let's see if he even says that. And you're lucky to be with me. I, think, I don't think that was a part of it. Did it bring you any validation? Did it bring you any of the love that you were craving? In the short term, it, it felt like it did, you know, but it wasn't real, you know, uh, any more so than eating candy that's really bad for you makes you feel full, but then later makes you feel sick and you have cavities and you have to fix that. I mean, it was a good year before the allegations first emerged that you and your wife announced you were going to get divorced. Hmm. Did she know about this? Were you honest at that time about any of the infidelity or were there other reasons at the time that were the cause of the breakup? I mean, infidelity was a key factor in our... In so she knew, she knew you'd been unfaithful? Yes, I, I told her that I was unfaithful. What um, made you be honest in the end? I got to a point where I realized I was becoming someone that I didn't recognize and didn't want to be. 
Um, and then I came clean to my wife at the time and told her what was going on. And you it, said, do you tell her the scale of it? At this point, it had only been one person. Right. And it was the person who then ended up accusing me of rape. Mm. That, oh. Uh, that is the person. Oh, he got accused of grape grape. Oh. Person who I had the first and only affair at that time on my wife. This is Effie Angelova. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So she was the first person who I stepped outside of my marriage for. And how did your wife react when you told her? Appropriately. Yeah. A lot of anger, mm. a lot of betrayal, um, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, which I caused. You know, I mean, it, it, that's. That's on me. And did, was that mm. the catalyst for actually breaking up? Yeah, yeah. And we tried. We tried working on our marriage for a while. Mm. After that, we spent a considerable amount of time in couples therapy and trying to work through our issues. And you know, as we continued to try to work through them, it just became clear that the damage had been done. I had done the damage. Even as mm. you're telling me this, it looks to me like you're feeling quite emotional about that moment. It was a dark time. It was a dark, painful time. Yeah, it was. And it's, it's also something that I have to accept is on me. Mm. Like that's, I had an affair on my wife. Mm. I, obviously, I'm not the first person. Good question. Good question. Okay, so he told his wife because he knew that person was coming out with the information, not because he was being honest and open with her. Yeah, is that what I'm hearing as well? Is he saying that he only told his wife because he knew it was about to go public? Or did he tell his wife and then she went public? When did she make the accusation? And I'm not saying he's a rapist. I'm not saying he did anything to that woman. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, which came first? The accusation or the divorce? The divorce, the accusation, you know? Not just rape, he abused multiple women, presented as BDSM, but it seems in like he intentionally sought women who knew nothing about it. Okay, so is he making it sound like it was just one person, but it ended up being like multiple people? Mm. When she talks about the rape, it's extremely disturbing. I believe her. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Mm. Mm. Let me tell you, I'm going to say something that is adjacent to this, but isn't in any way talking about the woman who made the accusation because she's probably telling the truth, right? Maybe, maybe not. Listen to this. You know when Papa Gut and lyrics and all these boys laugh at me when I talk about consent and I talk about verbalization and I talk about cuddling and feeling safe with people and they think it's all fun and games? It's so you avoid graping someone whether intentional or not. I do think you partially have to have the intention of breaking someone's consent to be truly a rapist, like to have the pathology. But ultimately, you can grape someone without the intention of graping them if you misread a situation. Because remember, from your perspective, you think you're having fun sex. From their perspective, they don't know how to tell you to stop because like when you they try, you don't listen. Like, do you understand? Like, there's a, 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 a communication barrier that happens and people who try kinky without having the rules about the consent. Like, the reason we have safe words, the reason we implement consent, like, little contracts or some form of confirming with your friends that you're going to do a scene is for moments like this. Every time I did a BDSM scene with somebody, we would have a friend on the phone, like, on call. Like, hey, if we don't call you in 45 minutes, call us to see if we're okay. Because maybe we were doing something a little bit more dangerous or more adventurous or maybe we just wanted a check-in. The idea is that we're not accusing you of being a horrible person. We're saying because we're good people, we're going to take every precaution necessary to harm reduce. So there's, like, this element that's missing in vanilla bubbles that want to be kinky where they just go into kinky bubbles and they don't or they go into kinky sex, but not kinky bubbles. So they read about kinky sex, but they don't know anything about why our communities have these things in place to kind of be safe about it. But I also understand, I, like I do understand why people laugh at me or think it's funny or think I'm out, I'm so outside the norm. Look, if the norm is that you keep accidentally crossing people's consent barriers, then let's change the norm. Right. If the norm is that you're going to giggle every time I talk about consent because you think it's funny, let's change it. And then we also have to be aware of what bubble we're in. Look, I'm not asking every bubble to have the same rules about consent, but I'm saying you have to be careful because if you have sex with the wrong person, you might accidentally grape them. And it's it's just as bad. And that's the issue I had with George and, and Katie. Not that George meant to assault Katie. That doesn't mean he didn't accidentally do it. And it doesn't mean Katie needs to throw him in prison for a mistake he didn't realize, but both of them need to verbally communicate to avoid this in the future. So again, all these people that don't understand, like this is gonna keep happening to even good or bad people. Let's say they're good people. 
Good people will keep make this will happen because you don't have the skill or sex education. Look, if you don't even know how to use a condom, you think you're going to care about consent, safe words? Or what about STI testing? What about even like there are so many things people don't know about. There are so many things people don't know about. So many, so many people in quote normative society, they're not getting STI tested before every partner. Just think about that alone, right? It's fine if you want to take that risk, but that's why you have to be the person who says for your own safe, this is about you. If you have sex with someone, you should ask them if they're going to use safe words, even if you're vanilla, you should ask them how you feel about intimacy. You should have a conversation, right? There are ways to do this that are appropriate for the bubble you're in. You don't have to make it so formalized, but there should be some verbalization. Are you okay with this? Are you sure about this? Okay. Yes. Okay, good. It's like, you're just asking. I don't think Army Hammer did that. I don't think any of these men who often find themselves in these positions do it. And then maybe they're just horrible people. Maybe even if you gave them every tool necessary, because I've seen that happen, you give the man every necessary tool and they still grape somebody. You give them every single safe word, STI preventative, every little thing to harm reduce. And they go, um, I'm not going to do any of it. Well, now you're a predator because I gave you the tools to be consent based and to protect somebody and you threw them out the window. So now you are either a predator, let's be more nuanced, or you're just very unsafe to be with. Maybe you can be unsafe without being a predator, but either way you're unsafe. And now people can't vouch for you in the community. That's why in the traditional BDSM communities that I've been in for most of my life, you can ask for former partners, be like, who'd you play with before? Who do you know before? Who have, who have you played with before? Can I have their numbers? Imagine in vanilla culture, if it's like, hey, before I have a one night stand with you, can I call one of the girls you've been with to know you're okay? They would be shook. But that's kind of what was normal. Now, I don't know if it's normal. I haven't been in a dungeon in many years. But like, I think a lot of vanilla people, a lot of fucked up people join BDSM circles or kink bubbles because they want to have fun with a fantasy and they don't think about the consequences of how that fantasy can impact people. You know, this might sound stupid, a uh, stupid question, but can you have an STI if you're not sexually active? Yes. Yes. Depending on what it is, because a lot of things are spread orally, sharing drinks, um, kissing, uh, touching, technically you can get an STI without being sexually active. That's, you know, technically. In the history of Hollywood to do that, but I did it and it's less than becoming behavior that I have to own and take accountability for. And, and I have to also own the pain that I caused. How do you get on with your wife? Then? I would say we're very good co-parents. We've worked through a lot of stuff together. You know, um, we are able to put our good co-parenting is nice. Sorry. Uh, the reason why people laugh at consent, because now people on the extreme say consent can be taken back months or weeks later. It's not that consent is taken back months or weeks later. And people who are doing that are like incredibly wounded and they need to go to therapy, right? You can't revoke consent after you've given it. But what you can say is, even though I gave you my consent, I actually deeply regret it. And I think in that moment I felt pressured and I just need you to know that for me, that wasn't an experience that was good for me. But I also know that that, that is partially my contribution to the situation, which is different than somebody saying like, well, I didn't even want to have sex with you. Like guys, not wanting to have sex with somebody is different than not wanting to have sex and being forced, right? Like you can not want to have sex with someone in the same way you might not want to drink a drink and you still drink it anyways. Because sex in of itself is not always this intimate, crazy thing that everyone builds it up to be but it can be, it's an experience. And the relationship you're having with that experience is dictated on your childhood, your trauma, the way your parents raised you, how you see that in your bubble, the guilt or shame you're gonna feel. You have to make sure that when you're having this experience, because it takes two to tango, you need to take care of that person you're having sex with as much as anybody else. The same women and men or the same human beings that are struggling with consent are probably in need of therapy, right? So it's not about people you know, who are, ill intended or have like problems that are like, Oh, I revoke consent. Uh, it's not funny. It's usually people that are in situations that don't quite make sense to them. And then worse than that, you're in a situation where you say like, I really don't want to do this right now. And then people go, I can't believe you. I can't believe you don't have sex with me. I drove here. I bought a condom. I just can't, I can't believe you're not going to have sex with me. I already got all the way here. Those are bad people. Don't interact with those people. Anyone who shames or guilts you for literally not having sex, like don't hang out with those people. Ban them from your phone. Never call them again. And if you call them, 
You are participating in a toxic relationship and now you are one of the toxic people, period. Being toxic doesn't mean you're evil, but being toxic means you will tolerate bad behavior, which could lead to something truly horrendous happening. And that is not your fault if it goes worse, but look how much you can avoid in your life with the wisdom and discernment to make a different decision. And that's what we're looking at. My sister said, you have nice arms, Brittany. <laughs> Thank your sister. Thank you, sister. <laughs> okay. Serious topic. We're talking about serious things right now. Our children first and foremost. And, you know, I would say that in a big way, bygones are bygones. And it was a messy, murky time. And I think... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, God, we're never going to get through this interview. I know the situation with Aziz Anzari through consent conversations like a tornado. I covered that too when it happened, though I don't even remember it now. Though I, I, I think she... It was a big conversation about he thought she was playing a game. She thought she was there to have fun, but not have sex. And it was like confusion. It was like confusing communication. Let me just say this. And this is why I called out Papa Gut a little bit ago. I saw a comment that said, don't lump him into this. But let me tell you this, because Papa Gut has said things on his stream like, if you cuddle with someone, that's definitely probably aiming towards sexual. Or if you kiss someone, that's the implication. And I'm telling you right now, with Aziz Anzari, from what I remember, the problem was is he thought this night was going to end in sex. And she thought this night could end in many different ways. And there was a huge miscommunication that occurred between those two people. I don't know if either of them had bad intentions. I could never know. I'm not inside their mind. But I will say both of them sounded ill-equipped to have a straight conversation about whether or not they were having sex. Listen. You can go up to somebody's apartment and not have sex with them. You can kiss them and not have sex with them. You could be naked together in bed and not have sex together. And if you do not understand that, you are not compatible with sexual partners. You need to be having sex with people that you can both agree what things mean. What things mean. If I'm getting naked with you, I don't, that cannot just mean sex. And I would tell people that like, hey, if I get naked in this room right now, will you think of that means sex? And if they're like, yeah, I'm like, okay, then I won't get naked. Because what you're doing is you're saying we are communicating differently. We are communicating differently. And that's the problem is you can't just assume the world is operating the way you're operating. You have not seen the world. You have not traveled to too many countries. You sit in your homes in your mother's basements and you think you know how the world works. You do not talk to different cultures. You are not integrating yourself into people's like bubbles. You have no idea how the world works. And so don't sit there and tell me, oh, Brittany's so funny. You're the one who literally has limited information. And I am trying to give you more information. And you're like, I don't want it. And then you have the audacity to think you know how the world works when you don't even listen to it when it tells you things. These things will keep happening. You will keep having these situations. And I am so tired of being sympathetic to people who won't even take the precautions to avoid it in the first place. I'm over it. Men, women, non-binary people, if you are not going to take the precautions... After somebody corrects you or tries to give it to you, I do not care. Okay? It is hard enough trying to find good people to interact with in the world who care about your mental health, who care about your safety, who care about STIs, who care about everything else. And then you have people who are literally told with love and compassion, hey, I see you doing this. Let me help you not make a mistake. And then you make it anyways and then have the audacity to say I was lonely. I needed care and love. I was a wounded person. Go to your therapist because the internet doesn't give a fuck. Go to a therapist or a priest because the internet doesn't give a fuck. I already hate this. I already hate Army Hammer. He's just not self-aware enough and I can tell. Nobody puts their best foot forward in those times. And um, If you had your time again, mm. would you have not succumbed to temptation? I, I, you know, the, the succumbing to temptation thing is, is interesting. Right, because part of it is maybe I wanted out of a relationship that I wanted out of, mm. you know? Lots of people do that because they're weak. Violet with the super chat says, if he did negotiate, got the consent from the woman, then he sexted and then she agreed to the participation in this kink because he's f fam, is that his fault? Oh, famous, sorry. If he did negotiate, got consent from the woman then he that he texted and they agreed to participate in this kink because he's famous, is that his fault? That's not a real question. I appreciate the super chat, but you're not asking a real question, right? Nothing is anybody's fault, but it is your responsibility to handle the consequences of how your actions are received. And then you can make the decision to accept those consequences if you think they're fair or not, if you think they're unfair, right? I'm not sure what you're even asking. What is his fault? What is he responsible for? 
He's responsible for destroying his marriage. He's responsible for maneuvering his life and his brand in a negative way. He's responsible for the way that people are receiving him. He's responsible for choosing a bad sexual partner. He's responsible if he did grape that girl. He's responsible for a lot of things. I don't know if she was a bad sexual partner, but like, let's just say. So he's responsible for a lot of things. Okay. I have no reason to believe that this woman is lying about her assault because I haven't seen any of that evidence. But I do see a man who's acting like he's not aware of what he did. Should there be consequences for consensual acts in regards to kink stuff? You're still not asking a question, right? You you like ask a specific question and I will answer it, right? Like you're not asking a question. You're implying something that makes it sound like you have an answer in your head and I don't know what you're aiming for. Should there be consequences for consensual acts in regards to kink stuff? What do you think that means? Right? Like, ask the question again, girly. Okay? Uh, I had a therapist at one point during that call having an affair the coward's way out. Oh, if you don't know how to rephrase it, maybe chat can help you rephrase it because I don't know exactly what you're asking. Okay? Right? Because part of it is maybe I wanted out of a relationship that I wanted out of. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I had a therapist at one point during that call having an affair the coward's way out. You know, it's like you wanted to end this relationship. You wanted to blow things up. And do you think that's the truth? I think like we talked about before, wow. I don't think it's necessarily binary, but I think that that did play a part in it in terms of the shades of gray of it all. Mm. Uh, about a, a year later, January the 12th, 2021, before this woman, and she was anonymous at the time, it turned out to be Effie Angelova. Mm. Before she went we, on- Do we know who this is? He keeps saying her name like we should know who that is. On Instagram and made all these lurid allegations about you that day. Do you remember that day before? Um, what were you doing? I was down in the Cayman Islands. Um, I was there. I was, I had gone down to the Cayman Islands to be with my kids. Um, my now ex was down there. My dad was living down there. Um, and so we went down there at the beginning of the pandemic. Life was great because was you, great. Had, you had a lot of big roles. Yeah. Uh, some you'd signed up to, some you were looking to sign on to. One of them was actually the leading role in The Offer, which was the Robert Evans story. Mm. Uh, you would have played Al Ruddy. Uh, I love that series. It was a Paramount Bar series. It would have been a great role for you, I think. Um, life probably couldn't have been professionally going any better for you it's right then. It was, it was going to be my biggest year as right. an actor in terms of the amount of projects, the caliber of projects. I thought I was untouchable. I thought that, you know. He did seem to be having a huge come up, right? Like he seemed to be having a huge come up. This is the, fir- this is the biggest year I've had. I'm, I'm now, I'm good. I'm going to be okay. And boy, was I wrong. How did you find out about the Instagram posts? Um, There had been threats. After this, we're going to read her Medium article where she talks about the experience. Um, She wrote it in January 25th of 2024. Okay, so we'll read hers after from her perspective. From Effie that had come before. uh, And this is going back even farther. There were threats that she would reach out and tell me that... She wanted to uh, kill herself. Like, and it, it was, it was. How long has your affair been? We the actual affair lasted ten months, mm. uh, and mm. then it and then it ended. Uh, but then, you know, there was sort of a lingering involvement, even though we never saw each other again. There was communication that went for another couple of years. And in the end, did you break it off? Did you do you think that was the catalyst for what then followed? It's hard for me to say what her motivation mm. and 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 why she did what she did. Um, but I don't think that that helped. Had you lived in fear that she might go public? She, I, I remember when we were having our affair back in, I wanna say 2017 or, or whenever it was, um, there was a time where she threatened to tell my wife. Okay, listen, he's not being canceled for having an affair, right? Like she has a Medium article where she details the assault. We'll read that after to give us some perspective. I'm gonna also speed them up to 1.5. Um, but it sounds really, really toxic and messy because, because cheating is, I don't know how to tell you guys this. Cheating is incredibly messy. People get hurt. They want to tell your wife. There's a lot of things that happen. It could be a false accusation. Maybe she was jealous. There could be so many things. That's why don't cheat. Don't lie. There's no such thing as a perfect victim. And even men who cheat can be victims of false, false accusations, right? Okay. That's true. 
But damn, you are asking for a recipe of disaster when you be out here cheating, playing two women's hearts, and you think shit ain't gonna hit the fan. You think shit ain't gonna hit the fan. And she said, you know, I just can't live with the guilt of this anymore. You know, this is so terrible what we're doing. Even though she knew I was married when she reached out to me first. We had talked about my wife. You know, we had talked about the affair. Ugh. But there was a time where she said, I'm, I'm just gonna have to tell your wife what we're doing. And um, that was also one of the big motivators for me coming clean in this situation mm -hmm. because I just, I, it, it just caused such an intense anxiety for me. So you get to this day, yeah. January the 12th. Do you recall exactly how you found out? I got a call. Who um, I, because prior to that day, she had accused me of other things on social media. That was the day where she accused me of rape. Right. And that was the big word. That was the, mm -hmm. you know, record needle scratch. I mean, it, what deal. she said was you had a, a four-year affair, she said, with you. Do you she says, you said the graphic and violent text about cannibalism, about rape fantasies, your desire to drink her blood. These messages began to leak out all over the internet across two days. Mm. Some of them, and I'll read just a few, three of them. You First and foremost, I just want to say, regardless of what's in those text messages, I do not kink shame. And I've seen some people do that. Like, I saw that happen to a streamer. And I think it's gross that people are, are and even though, listen, even though I have plenty of issues with said streamer, I am not okay with people leaking his sex messages to them and like outing his kinks and stuff. That is bad form, okay? It is bad form to kink shame people. I don't trust you if you kink shame. If you kink shame, I automatically think badly of you. It doesn't mean that it excuses bad behavior, but posting people's sexting messages, shaming people for their kinks, like outing their sexual proclivities, like all of it is fucked up. Unless it involves animals or children or something super bad, don't do that. And lots of people have fantasies that BDSM allows you to play out without it even being close to real. So him having a cannibal fantasy is not that big of a deal. If it's like a, like that, well, that's what movies are. When you watch movies, and you love a vampire scene, the vampire, the murdering scene in like a, mo a fighting movie. It's not because you want to do those things. You're just having fun with your imagination. That's what kinky sex is. That's what imagination is, is you're not actually doing the things you're pretending to do. That's why it's fake. That's literally why it's fake. Also, I love that you guys are trying to reword this comment. Let's see, if a kink act involves some level of consensual violation, no, nothing involves consensual, you cannot consensually violate, right? But I love the way the question is framed. If a kink act involves some level of consensual violation and it gets taken too far by accident or on purpose, should there be some consequences for the person that violated the boundary? You cannot consensually violate someone. You cannot consensually grape somebody, right? You can role play grape, but you cannot consensually grape somebody. The idea of it being grape means you cannot do it consensually. So you can role play as if you're not consenting, but that's why you also have a safe word. So when you really wanted to stop, use your safe word and then the people listen to it, right? So you can't consensually, like in BDSM, you don't, in my bubble of BDSM, you don't consent to something you don't want to do. Like truly don't want to do like truly, truly, truly. It's one thing to say I'm hesitant. I don't want to go to the gym today, but I'm going to do it anyways. That's not a consent violation. Okay. That's the equal to BDSM energy. Oh, I don't want to do this today, but I want to do it. Role playing is fake. You are faking the sensation. Everything should be fake, right? If you're doing grape play, it's fake, 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 fake. It's not real. It cannot be real. If you make a mistake during an interaction, you're usually like, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. How do we like fix this? Don't blow it up. Don't make it a big deal, but also make it appropriate. React appropriately. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? I love you. That wasn't my intention. And then don't do it again. You learn from your mistakes. That's the key. Making a mistake isn't a problem unless you don't learn from it. Now, if you're two very incompatible partners, you might be always miscommunicating and therefore the mistakes are too much and you might just need to break up because you're not compatible, right? Like Dr. Kirkonda has really, he's really helped me reframe that we can't just call people words. We need to be clear, like you're just a liar. You're probably not a narcissist. You're probably just a liar, right? Because not enough of the population is suffering in the numbers we think they are with these great big things. They're probably just liars. They're probably just snaky. They're probably just like, malicious, but not even knowing why they're, they're maybe just unhealthy, right? Lots of unhealthy people get into lots of situations, which breeds more unhealthiness. That's why I say it takes two to be in a toxic relationship, right? 
So if you find yourself in that situation, you need to be healthy enough to get out. And if you're not healthy enough to get out, there has to be a question of why. You just live to uh, obey me and be my slave. You said, to her, I will own you as my soul, my brain, my spirit, my body. Would you come and be my property till you die? If I wanted to cut off one of your toes and keep- Oh, hold on, hold on. I got a, he's reading the text messages. I'm gonna slow him down just a bit. So these are the text messages that got outed. A few days. Hmm. Some of them, and I'll read just a few, three of them. You just live to uh, obey me and be my slave. You said to her, I will own you as my soul, my brain, my spirit, my body. Would you come and be my property till you die? Okay, literally so cringe when you read people sexting messages out loud. This is all just fantasy talk for most people. Okay, if it's in any way real, super cringe. But most people are engaging in pure imaginative play. That's what this is us usually is what it is. Usually. When you take it too far and you're serious about it, that's the abuse because no reasonable, rational adult is okay with this. I dated a girl, as you guys know, and she was my top. And she said, do you want to quit your job and live under my bed? And I said, no. And you know, I don't. She goes, I know. But imagine how cool life would be if I paid for everything and you just like lived under my bed. I was like, okay, it was a BDSM bed with like a cage. I was like, that's hot in fantasy. But in real life, it's horrible. Asking someone to live under your bed for real is torture. For a fantasy though, sure, that's super hot. Like, let's play that game. Look, if you go to traditional BDSM masters or um, experts who are in very specific BDSM bubbles, they're very specific. They'll say, even when you do BDSM 24 seven, you're not really doing it 24 seven because real life happens. Because BDSM at the end of the day, even a lifestyle, there are responsibilities that you have to attain, attend to. Even if you have these like fantasies of being like, I'm handcuffed all day and I can't even pee without your permission. Okay, well, if your partner actually doesn't let you pee and you have a, you know, a health consequence to that, then your partner's a bad partner, right? Like your partner's a bad partner. If you're willing for your partner to actually suffer at the hands of your BDSM, you're doing it wrong. I've never been hospitalized for BDSM because we play safely, Right. You, you, if you go to the hospital, which happens a lot, I've, I knew a surgeon once and she said the worst thing she ever saw was a light bulb in someone's anus. Girl, girl. And this is usually from people who are inexperienced, who aren't reading up on how to do things safely. So again, all of this is fun when it's a fantasy, but if it becomes real life, that's the problem. If I wanted to cut off one of your toes and keep it with me in my pocket, so I always had a piece of you in my possession. Uh, I'm 100% a cannibal. I want to eat you. It's scary to admit. I've never admitted that before. It was that stuff which obviously blew off around, sure. around America and around the world. Army Hammer, I'm a cannibal, in your right. own words. Right. Let's first of all address that elephant in the room. Are you a cannibal? No. You know what you have to do to be a cannibal? You have to have actually eaten someone. Have, so, you, no. have you ever eaten any human flesh? No. Okay, but like... Wouldn't we though? Because if you're lost at sea and you eat a person, are you a cannibal or did you just do cannibalism for a second? You know? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just saying something that like sounds hot to him. And even though you don't get it, I'm um, just a reminder. People are literally disturbed by people's fantasies about sex and you believe in a God in the sky that murders children around the world and lets it happen because that's just how life works. You believe in a God that saved Trump's life during an assassination attempt, but not the firefighter that was in the audience with him. I don't really care what you guys think about sexual fantasies when you literally have a God fantasy. God saved my political candidate, but not the man in the audience. You're gross. At least Army Hammer's probably fake. The question is, did he grape that girl? Because that's the real accusation. That's what I want to know. Not a question I thought I'd ever ask him. I'm Not sorry. a question I'd ever thought I'd have to answer, by the way, but no, never. What do you feel that a large swathe of the public just think Army Hammer is a cannibal? If you believe that, I have a bridge to sell you. Yeah. But, the, but the reason they would believe it is because you said it. Sure. I'm 100% a cannibal. And I think a lot of these things, these text messages, um, it's, it's, so it's this. This was a very intense affair, very sexually charged between two people with very similar proclivities and kinks. And any of those conversations that we had inside of that relationship, when you take them outside of that context mm -hmm. and put them into broad daylight, it doesn't look so good. It's, you know... It's, and we've never seen what she was saying. Correct. 
I think, I, I for, have for seen, a very good reason. Right. I'm going to come to, to one of the other accusers. I have seen some of the to and fro there, which puts a very different light, actually, sure. on her claims. But in relation to, to Effie Angelova, I guess, look, there were rape fantasies. Is your position that all of this was just role play? That it was, it may be offensive to people to hear about this and to read about it, but it's kind of BDSM, kinky sex role play. It's not actually meant to be taken seriously as you wanting to rape her or to be a cannibal. Is that your argument about the way all this it's played not, out? It's, it's not only my context. argument, that's the reality of the situation. You know, different people have different sexual fantasies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and there's a very broad spectrum of sexuality. And People are allowed to engage with their own sexuality, however it fits them and what they do. And if you find a partner who is amenable to these things or even excited about them, in my case, you know, a, a lot of this I was introduced to by Effie. Um, well, it was her idea. Yeah, quite a bit of it, yeah. She, she had more experience in this arena than I did. Who first raised the concept of cannibalism as a role play? I, I think that was just sort of like born out of a desire to sort of like, I, I want you so completely and I, I, I want you. He's a vor. He wants to eat her. He vor. So totally that it's almost like I want to eat you. But I don't think that's any different than when someone looks at a baby and goes, oh, my God, look at those cute little. No, no. Do not claim cute aggression right now. Cute aggression is an actual cannibalism and it doesn't turn into a fantasy. Okay. Wait, today is Vore Day, by the way. Is Vore Day a thing? Is that the, is today Vore Day? What? At legs, I just want to eat you up. Like it's, you know, there's a part of the brain that controls cuteness aggression. We're not going to have a headline, Army Hammer, I want to eat babies. Right, right. preferably not, <laughs> preferably not. Um, but, um, you know. It, but it was all from your point of view. This was all fantasy talk. Sure. Albeit you were indulging in yeah, very a lot intense of it, sex. It, it was all fun fantasy. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, and some of it sent while I was sitting in a room by myself, you know, inebriated or you, whatever, thinking like, oh, this, oh, I'll say this. This will be fun to say. You know, and you were both drinking and taking drugs throughout, throughout this period? Uh, I mean, I don't want to speak to her, mm. but um, I certainly was. Yeah. I guess he maybe can't because of legality. See, this is why a lot of people do BDSM sober, but these are vanilla people doing kinky sex. Lots of guys, I hate to say it, vanillas are absolutely doing kinky sex and they've been doing it forever. That doesn't mean they're BDSM. So when I talk about BDSM, I'm talking about the lifestyle, the community. It's like saying gay. You know how there's like a gay community, but then there are gay people who are not in the community. That's the same thing for BDSMers. There are people who do BDSM that aren't in the BDSM community. And so when I interact with a person, not now I'm married, but you know, if I was to interact with a person when I was single and they said, oh, I like doing BDSM. I'm like, mm, do you mean like BDSM in general? BDSM from corn? Do you mean BDSM? What do you mean by BDSM? Because it's different everywhere right? Everybody does it differently. So for me, I'm only interested in doing BDSM with very specific kinds of people, like real BDSM, right? Like actual BDSM too. Slapping someone isn't BDSM. Kinky sex isn't BDSM. To me, BDSM is a very specific lifestyle choice. Vanilla people can whip each other and it's not BDSM. Like using a flogger on someone is not BDSM, right? It's like, it could be kinky. It could be a lot of things, but that's why you have to be very specific about the people you talk to and interact with, because you might say, oh, I'm a top. And to them, that means something totally different than what it means to you, right? Oh, I'm really into this thing. But like, what does that really mean? And all lifestyles in which you are dealing with people in intimate situations can lead to a lot of confusion and miscommunication and toxicity which it sounds like they were both very toxic. Obviously he was cheating and he was lying and he wasn't being honest and he wasn't having a good path to figuring himself out. And sometimes I wish I could hold classes for people like this, right? Like, okay, let's hold the classes. Let's go, right? Let's have a class and I'll educate you. And then the question is, if after I educate you, you still violate people's consent, like what the fuck? Are power dynamics what makes it kinky? Well, then parents and kids definitely have a kinky relationship. No, power dynamics exist everywhere in society. You know, like power dynamics exist everywhere. You can get a massage, like cupping, and it's just a massage. You can go to a BDSM dungeon and get cupping done to you and it's BDSM, right? Power dynamics exist everywhere in the world. Teachers and students, parents and kids, Older sisters and younger sisters, like power dynamics exist everywhere. The cashier at the grocery store, you, the shopper, BDSM is very specific, but also like, I'm asking what makes it kink? Well, it's subjective. It's not like, uh, it depends on the community. It depends on the bubble, right? He says kink is used as non-conventional sexual practices, concepts, or fantasies. Well, 
sure, but at this point, it's all pretty common. Now I've heard from Vanellas that it's so common to choke and slap people that people are making YouTube videos about it and talking about why women, generally speaking, are into slapping and choking. Like, is it that kinky if everyone's doing it? And honestly, let's be real, what Army Hammer is doing, I bet a billion trillion doll hairs that all of your politicians are doing it in different ways. Yeah. The reason I ask is, is it possible that she believes you crossed a line, legitimately believes that, that you lost the kind of boundaries because of all the drugs and drink that you were taking, and that you can both be right, that in your eyes it was all consensual fantasy role play, mm. and she was a very you know, enthusiastic co co-conspirator, if you like, in it. Right. But that actually there were times when, because you may have been out of it or whatever, the boundaries were crossed. I mean, do you accept that's even a possibility? I believe that that's a possibility for her now. I think that there is a legitimate world in which she has convinced herself of these things. And I also know of after these sexual encounters that we had over those 10 months, I know that I received extremely graphic text messages from her, echoing the same sentiments that we talked about before and taking them even further. Do you think if people saw the full context of all these messages, a very different light would be shed on them? True. Shout out to the RNC grinder crash. I'll never not love how gay Republicans are. Conservatives are so gay. I really wish they would just get over it so we could all get along. You're obviously so fucking gay. Just get over it so we can all get along. It would immediately clear everything up. Yes. Why don't you just leave them? Well, because I was having these messages on Facebook Messenger at the time. And I was a married man, so I had to cover my tracks. So when messages would come in, I would respond and I would delete everything so that nothing would be sitting on my phone. Um, but then when I was under investigation for two and a half years by the LAPD, we subpoenaed Facebook multiple times uh, for those messages because of the exculpatory nature of Did you ever, ever get them? I did not personally get them because no charges were brought against me. Mm. I know that a sizable... I know that a sizable piece of all of those messages were sent to the LAPD, and I believe that's why everything was dropped. Mm. But I don't get access to those because there was no charges. I'm going to come back to, to Ellie Angelo when there was a, a more sinister development in that part of it. But on January the 14th, this is two days later, Courtney Vucekovic, who was an app founder who dated you in 2020, or said she did from June to October 2020, told the New York Post page six that you subjected her to emotional abuse, sexually coerced her, and made her feel unsafe. And she repeated some of this in the documentary House of Hammer about your second He puts on this creepy... We got to watch this. We got a deep dive. Playlist. And... She's like... Like... It's like the ropes were around your neck, your wrists, your ankles, behind your back. It's like... It was... I mean, I had bruises. I had... I hated it. First, have you ever watched mm. that documentary? I watched part. Ooh, we should watch that. Part of the first episode. Have you seen that clip before? Uh, I don't remember that clip. What's no. your response to what she was saying? I mean, I think first and foremost, I understand why that's a compelling clip. Mm. You have a woman expressing unsafety and fear and all of those things. I, I, I understand why that is a powerful clip. Um, I disagree with the nature of our relationship and how she described it. I, hmm. I, I will say this. There are people that I left um, who were hurt and who were upset. Uh, none of those people were hurt or upset because I pushed any sexual boundaries that they weren't interested in exploring or trying. Are you sure, are you sure about that? I mean, well, I, let me I'll ask you a different, different way around. Can you be sure about that? I mean, it can be that women... We know this, right? I mean, some women can go along with things sure. because they're in your thrall and they want to keep you happy. But it may be at the same time they're not really enjoying it at all. I mean, Well, that's why you have safe words. And that's why you don't punish people for safe words. Yes, it is. It is truly human nature, male or female, human, to people please. And in order to help people pleasers not deny themselves agency, you give them agency by giving them a safe word. And then you reward them for using that safe word by not punishing them for using the safe word. People pleasing is in everyone's nature on a spectrum, right? Okay. So a safe word is a gift to you and your partner to avoid situations like this. And that's why I say, are you a predator, bro? Or are you making a mistake? Because if you're a predator, then it doesn't matter how many safe words I give you, you're going to violate, right? 
But if you're somebody who's making a mistake, then if I can give you a safe word and you use it, you won't make the mistake again. Not that mistakes won't happen. Not that, not that miscommunication won't happen. Not that you guys won't have a moment and need to renegotiate but that you will have the better tools to make it easier the next time. And that's the difference. Guys, it's not about having a perfect relationship isn't a relationship without miscommunication. It's a relationship that makes it past the miscommunication. A perfect friendship isn't a friendship that never has bad moments. It's a friendship that lasts through the bad moments and makes sure that there's less and less bad moments over time. It's not about getting rid of everything that's imperfect. It's about harm reducing for the next time. It's about saying like, oh, huh, we're fighting. Why are we fighting? Okay, let's make it better. And then actually working on it together. But if you don't work on it together, then of course someone's going to feel neglected, whether they feel entitled to that or not, which goes back to yesterday's conversation. Be careful of the narrative, like the narrative you tell yourself. Be careful of the story you tell yourself about what happened. Because if you tell yourself the wrong story, you're just going to set yourself up for failure as you grow as a person. It is better to face the truth of what happened than deny yourself the potential of growth because you can't face yourself. But of course, most people won't and it is what it is. So I can't tell with Army if he's truly facing himself. It doesn't feel like it to me because it feels dishonest, but I don't know why. And let's be real. We all feel dishonest to somebody. So maybe our prejudice is playing a role. Do you think we're being too prejudiced to Army? Because that could be true, right? That's just like some people will never see him as a good person. Some people never see you as a good person. Some people never see me as a good person. But it's not true, but maybe it could be true. So then the question is, how do you discern? Well, first you have to acknowledge what is it, what is, what is so human? People pleasing. People pleasing is so human. All of us do it. Moms and dads do it, creators do it, teachers do it, celebrities do it. Army Hammer probably has a part of him that is people pleasing. Like the part of him that didn't just tell his wife he wanted a divorce. When you don't tell your partners you want a divorce and you want to leave, you're probably suffering from some level of people pleasing and denial of wanting to face yourself because you don't want to be seen as the bad guy and you want to give that person what they want, even if it hurts you, right? So what people do instead is they cheat or they do other things. Like, again, ultimately, it's too complicated to just sum it up, but also it's pretty simple. And this all goes back to character. Do you have a good character or a bad character? Are you cynical or are you optimistic? Do you see bad in everybody? Are you paranoid? Or do you see the good in people and you're willing to accept that they're flawed and you're willing to say, okay, this was toxic, I'm over it. Because look, I've been in so many toxic, three, I've been in two and a half, two, two really, toxic relationships in my life. And neither of those people deserve jail time. Neither of those people ever violated my consent in a big way. None of those people, even though they were so unhealthy, None of those people needed anything more than intense therapy, and they probably shouldn't have dated other people until they got that therapy. But they weren't criminals. They weren't like, they were so mentally messed up, but like they weren't, you know what I mean? They weren't assaulters. They weren't, you know, there's so much that goes into a messed up person. You can be so messed up, okay? You can be so messed up and never be a truly like horrible person in the way that Army Hammer is being accused of being, which he might be. And that's all we really care about. Did you grape this girl or not? Because that's what I care about. I don't care about his kinks. I don't care about miscommunication. I don't care about any of that. I care about the violation of the grape. That's a big accusation, okay? Do, do, There's do, an aspect of that that I you understand. look back on all this. Do you accept? I mean, if you yes. were having, for instance, if you, I, were, I accept that if you were having this relationship with, with Effie, for example, it was extreme mm. in its nature in terms of the language you use and the things you were doing. Is it possible that when you tried to replicate some of that with somebody else, they might go along with it, but they might also feel pretty uncomfortable? Do, do you think that's a possibility? I do, I do, and I understand now the nature of the power dynamics of these relationships, where because of you know my position or my career or my notoriety or fame or whatever you want to say that people might be inclined to go along with something that isn't necessarily their bag of tea. Um, I also know that in my sexual relationships with people, I was very cognizant and very- um, I was doing a scene with somebody who taught me that I was responsible for asserting my boundaries. I would use a safe word and he would punish me. After playing two times, I ended things fast. It's all good. It was a little traumatizing for certain reasons, but he's human. So if he would have shown a pattern and no remorse, I would have told our dungeon staff, even though it happened at another location. Um, 
Yeah, that's a huge red flag. I don't know. I'm not going to talk to you about whether or not you should have reported him to the dungeons, but I will say huge. If I saw that, I would have reported it to my dungeon if it was happening in the dungeon. If it was happening outside of the dungeon, I would tell people in the community that like, oh, I played with that guy because you are now the resume for that guy. Hey, I played with that guy and he would punish me for using safe words. So I don't play with him anymore. And that would be something that in my community would go around. And that's the difference. Like I've never played with somebody who punished me for using safe words. Not in that way. Like maybe they'd be a little embarrassed sometimes, but like in general, like no, because like that's a huge violation, right? To my memory. I'm trying to think if I've ever had that. That's a huge, that means you're causing the exact cycle of abuse that occurs in these situations. So hopefully he never went on to do that to anybody else and he learned his lesson, but that's a huge issue, right? That's, I'm sorry, but those are the people that turn out to be great pists. Because if you're willing to punish somebody for a safe word, if you're willing to shame somebody for speaking up for themselves, then you're going to be the one who, who also gaslights them into thinking that they deserve to be graped. Because think about what kind of character you would need to be that kind of person. I'm not saying they are a rapist. I'm saying there's a path to get to places. There's a path you go on where you get to places. Okay, his current partner contacted me and we talked about it. He apparently doesn't do things like that. Okay, good. Okay, I'm glad he learned from it then. Okay. Okay, that's good. Very aware about presenting. These are my desires. These are my kinks, if you will. Mm -hmm. Do any of these sound good to you? And then they would say, oh, I like this. And, oh, we can try this. I've never tried that. I have questions, but I'm not saying no. And I don't like this or I don't like this. And then you say, okay, great. Well, let's move slowly through this. If this is anything you want to try, we can try them. And we will make sure we do it safely and with communication and with healthy boundaries. If it's nothing that you want to try, then great. We won't do any of that. How would, how would a woman you had that conversation with, how would she express concern once you'd started? I would make sure that it was very clear that at any point, whatever was going on could be stopped. How? I, I, we had safe words, which is a very important oh. part of BDSM. So what, 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 what? Oh, so he's going the I do BDSM route. Okay, we had safe words. Okay. Orange was pause, meaning I feel a little overwhelmed, but I don't necessarily want to stop. I just need a second. That's my yellow. And then red is I need this to stop immediately. For those who Mine is red as well. You don't know what BDSM is. What is it? Uh, bondage, dominance, sadomasochism. It's the idea of sort of heightened sexual scenarios. Did, when you were younger, did you ever think you'd end up so sort of addicted to that kind of sexual behavior? Yeah, it's not addiction necessarily, bro. Relax. I never thought I'd be on your show talking about it. Right. That's for sure. Which is not easy. I mean, I, right. do, you right. know, I, I, I do applaud you for facing the music about it. It's not easy for someone in your position who's lost everything to come on and have to talk about this. Okay. Thing. Has he lost everything? Feels like you're attached, my bro. Sure. You know, it's not something most men would enjoy talking about. It's a bit exposing. It's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a bit scary. Okay. Now compare this BDSM to AMP in Mr. Christopher, like gay BDSM or queer BDSM or traditional leather BDSM. Now compare the differences and tell me these aren't different communities. Like they might use similar words. There might be some overlaps, but you see how different they are. If Mr. Christopher was on this show, the way he would be explaining his life with AMP and the way that he would be, it's so different. It's so different. Right. This is what I'm saying. I don't think army is in the bubble that could educate him to have truly safe BDSM. But to be fair, I've been to lots of dungeons in LA, a lot of which got shut down over years, of course. And they do do classes like a lot of dungeons. You're not even supposed to join them until you have a class. That's what I look for. When I, someone tells me they're in BDSM and they invite me to a dungeon, if there's alcohol, and it's not regulated, I have my eyebrow raised. If there's not a class to get into a dungeon, my eyebrow is raised. If they don't introduce safe words, my eyebrow is raised. If, you know, there are certain things that I'm looking at, because lots of people say they have a BDSM dungeon, but when I go, it's all of the red flags. It's all of the red flags. And so I'm like, mm, are you into BDSM? Like in the way, so again, this does not feel like the same bubble as like a Mr. Christopher at AMP. It's, and I'm not saying you can never have alcohol at the dungeon, but it's very, there's a lot of protocol. Usually we have mocktails. Usually there's no drugs. Usually there's so much that goes into this. So like for them, for Army Hammer, when Army says like, I was on all these drugs doing BDSM, red flag. Um, How do you feel having to talk about it? <sighs> Honestly, um, I don't love it for the sake of my kids. Mm. 
Um, I hate the idea that there's any way their father's sexuality or whatever, however you want to say it, could be weaponized against them by mm. bullies or mean kids in school. Uh, but at the same time, I have to come at it from a place of self-acceptance and self-love. I feel like Army Hammer watched Fifty Shades of Grey and he's like, oh, I love this shit. And I was like, ew. Or what's that other one? 305 or 300 Days or 385? What's that stupid movie? I never watched it. Oh, my God. No, I can't. It's so cringy. I, can, I can't even get through the Fifty Shades of Grey movies. They're, I've done it, but they're so difficult to get through. But I bet Army Hammer was like, oh, yeah, this is my shit, bro. Red flag. BD Summers I hang out with. Fifty Shades of Grey is like not BDSM. It's just like a weird middle age fantasy, but it's not BDSM. So like if he reads that, yeah, 365. Oh my God. No, thank you. And, you know, understand that some people love cilantro and some people hate it and neither are wrong. But nothing that you did in your estimation was non-consensual. Correct. A third woman came forward a week after this, January 25th, Paige Lorenzi, uh, who's a 24 year old uh, who claimed that you'd had a relationship for four months in 2020. Mm. She corroborated some of the other stories. She told Page Six again that Hammer, you allegedly branded her pelvis with the letter A, bruised her, sexually coerced her, took graphic photographs of her without her consent. Again, what is your response to what she claimed about you? I disagree. I disagree. Um, I think that she is entitled to her opinion and I, I, I... Did you brand her? I wouldn't say brand, no, but you know... What did, what did you do in relation to that? Alex? Okay, first of all, Branding is very common in tribal communities, religions, um, social groups, uh, anime communities, BDSM dungeons. I don't want anybody to be out here acting like you aren't branding yourself when you get a fucking Trump tattoo on your skin, when you get a bumper sticker for your car, when you put a fucking cross tattoo on your arm, when you get Luffy tattooed to your calf, you're signaling to your community who you belong to, what community you belong to. And in BDSM, yes, they do like little scarification or branding, or they do all of these things. So does Jackass. The show Jackass, they did a branding episode. Remember? Bam Margera went to the hospital because he got infected. It might not have been kinky, but it certainly was for shits and giggles. There was a scenario that we talked about beforehand. Uh, that we had discussed where, um, you know, I would basically take a little tiny point and just kind of trace the letter A. What do you mean just point? What do you mean? Just like the, the... He's so cringy, bro. He's so cringy. Let me give you a protocol that we do to mitigate harm when doing branding at the dungeon. Because we know relationships end and things go sour, it is better to brand with things that will be neutral moving forward. I have a flower scarred, like did I have scarification on my, well, both my legs. One was for, I volunteered as a, a bottom for someone to practice. And one was a form of branding from my former partner who him and I had a very serious conversation about one day we might not be together because realistically that's how life goes. And we were right. So we wanted to put something on my skin that one would fade over time, but two wouldn't be something that I regretted, like his initial, which would have been a regret. So we did a daisy because I love daisies. So we did a flower and now there's only like two lines of the flower left. It's basically faded now after, I don't know, eight years or whatever it's been, but you brand them with things that won't matter when they leave you. That's why you don't get your, you know, couple initials tattooed or people's faces on you. It's fine if you do, I'm not judging you, but it just helps in the process, like for a breakup, for something going badly, you know? So again, I think, uh, that's, that's what you would do. But see, I know that because I've taken so many classes. I've been in the dungeon scene. I've read so many books on BDSM written by BDSMers, right? <laughs> he's so terrible at explaining shit. It makes him look bad. Like he's ashamed of what he does. So he can't speak about it properly. And that's another problem. He's not owning his freak. Wait, who's, who's match my freak? Somebody gonna match my freak. He's not owning his freak. Mr. Christopher, Amp, me, we own our freak. You will not make us feel bad for it. But that's because we also take so much into consideration about safety and consent and like everything else. The problem is like, this is what I'm saying. Like 
These people aren't in the deep BDSM community. They're not thinking about the origins. They're not thinking about leather. They're not thinking about queer oppression. They're not thinking about how much goes into a lot of these communities. And it is a global community. So also, maybe you just know about the BDSM American community. But what about the global community? BDSM is global. It's not just like an American thing. You know what I mean? So Army is just giving off super insecure, which makes him suspicious. But also he's probably trying to get back into Hollywood where he's playing to a very vanilla and normie community because he's always been the good boy. Like his aesthetic is like, you know, it is going to be tainted by this freak. It will. He'll have to rebrand, right? Do you have a series of BDSM info since you got into so much? I used to be a BDSM content creator. That's actually what I used to do on YouTube at one point, but YouTube demonetized my whole channel. And it's just like, it wasn't worth making content about my life so much or about the dungeon. And I got sick of answering, where do I find a dom? Oh my God. I got sick of doing BDSM content. It was like the same questions every year, which is fine. I love it. But um, I don't do BDSM content now. YouTube demonetizes all of it. So like... I'm going to have to blink out the word BDSM probably when I go to edit this clip, if I edit it. The the, uh, the tip of a small knife. A knife? Yeah. Yeah. And you literally cut a... I, I mean, there wasn't even blood in the situation. It was more like a, a scrape, just to sort of like enjoy the... It, it's along the lines of couples getting their own initials tattooed on each other. Mm. Um, but, you know... It's, in a, bit, more it's a bit different to a tattoo though, isn't it? No. Nope. Well, it's, it's less not. permanent. I, it's I, not different than a tattoo. It's literally the same. It's literally the same. Tell me the difference between a tattoo and scarification. Go ahead, I'll wait. What's the difference? There's absolutely no difference. And the dilemma is Army doesn't know that. Even if he believes it, he doesn't know it the way I know it. I know for a fact there's no fucking difference. Go ahead and tell me what the difference is from scarification and a tattoo. What is the actual fucking difference? Because one is not morally wrong and not, one is not morally right. Let's be real. I guarantee you it was such a small thing that... You say sort of matter-of-factly. I mean, sure. I'm, I'm not easily shocked. I'm a little bit shocked by that. I mean, yeah. it's a strange thing to do to somebody, isn't it? To nope. use a knife to brand them with your... Nope. Presumably your initial for your name. With your initial is a little weird. Right? Like, his initial is cringe. It's like very 15 years old, in my opinion. And I stand by that. And I know people at the dungeon are like, what? Yeah, I think your 50-year-old doms that are putting your initials on people through, via scarification is like you're a child. But I'm also, I also think that about tattoos. Like, I don't know why you're getting your partner's name tattooed on you, but you do. Like, even, like, I'm sorry. Like, I just, I'm not judging you for real, for real. But it's just cringe. Like, it's just kind of like, mm, but like also praise, like, go for it. It's not immoral. It's not immoral. Okay. It's not immoral. Yes. I think to some, it probably sounds really strange. To some, it probably sounds like a very romantic I don't gesture. even remember Christian Grey and Fifty Shades doing that. Sure. I mean, but, you know, if we look at Christian Grey... There's a lot of gray in that situation that if you turned everything no, black no, no, Christian Gray, black and white, abusive and toxic. No part of his relationship with Anna was reasonable. Black and white, we're looking at a very different movie then. No, and, you know, that's the problem. If you watched Fifty Shades of Gray and you thought it was romantic, you need to go to therapy and talk about your childhood traumas. It's not. It's not healthy. It's very toxic. I Do you see parallels in what you were like with him? You talked about a, a power imbalance. He clearly utilizes that in that movie franchise. I guess see, we, look at, we look at that now. And, and, say, and yet you would say that you, you would say looking at the totality that none of it, certainly in his eyes, was was non consensual. Sure. Um, I think when the movie came out, everyone loved it. Women loved it. When the books came out, women were first in line to buy it, and people celebrated them. I think now, if we look at it through, no, they were traumatized. Those women were traumatized. Okay, it was a kink. It was porn. We didn't celebrate Fifty Shades of Grey. Everybody just used it as their porn. That's what all these romance stories are. Why would an eleven? Why would a hundred year old vampire be interested in a fifteen year old girl? Why would a hundred year old vampire even be at high school anymore? Right? Robert Pattinson said it best. He says, "I don't understand why they're still in high school if they're like a hundred years old." That's the problem. When women write out fantasies, you have to equate it to porn, and porn is not real. It is a fantasy, right? So if you take it seriously and you're like, you know what's really romantic, this porno, you've lost the plot. But you know what? How many people's sex education comes from porn? Too many. Too many people learn about sex 
because of books and they don't, and like, that's good. I learned a lot about sex from books, but you got to read the educational books with the fantasy books. So you know the difference. You got to deconstruct the fantasy. The fantasy is not good. Okay. It's just a fan. It's fine if it stays in a fantasy. And that's the problem is he's saying, if I look at 50 shades of gray in a certain way, it's good. Nope. Not really. A prism of what we see now in culture, there's a whole host of issues we could draw with those movies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, were they wrong? The fictional characters, were they wrong to be engaging in what they were doing at the time when we looked at it and loved it? No. What does Are it say wrong? that so many women love Fifty Shades? Does it say that a lot of women secretly harbor the same kind of thoughts that you've been condemned for actually doing? I mean, if the book sales represent that, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. I think that there is a broad spectrum of sexuality. People are toxic. It's the toxicity. Actual BDSM isn't going to... Fifty Shades, like... You have to remember that, like... Remember when Anna was like, I want to work at this company. Leave me alone. And Gray was like, I'll buy the company. And now you work for me. Okay. Just because women say they want a relationship doesn't mean it's not toxic. Just because Fresh and Fit say they want a certain type of relationship doesn't mean it's not toxic. And I think that for a long time, huge chunks of that spectrum were considered amoral, even illegal, if you look at homosexuality. But, you know... Where was the line for you? Was there a line? I mean, if you hadn't been exposed in the way that you were, would you have carried on down this path and how worse could it have got? I don't think that the path I was on would have ever ended in... I, I would say this, there was nothing to be gained for me in having a sexual experience that my partner didn't appreciate or enjoy, because that was also a huge sense of validation for me, making this person that I'm with feel good, mm. making this person that I'm with, I mean, I don't know if I can say this, climax, like these were things that made me feel good and made me feel powerful, which I desperately needed because I didn't know how to give them to myself. I mean, I, you know, you, you're... You don't know how to masturbate? <laughs> like, what? He's like, made me feel good because I didn't know how to give them to myself. Go to therapy. And also, look, he needs to get on here like a rock star and be like, yeah, bro, we're all into different things, bro. Why, you're not, Pierce? What the fuck, you're not into it, bro? You're missing out, bro. He is needs to come at this with full ownership. Not this like, woe is me, I'm a victim. Be like, look, bro. Just because you don't get it doesn't mean it's not legit. And then he should have referenced 100 books and he should have referenced all of these historians and he should have referenced BDSM YouTubers and he should have referenced, but no, it's like, I'm a victim. I didn't know to love myself. So I had to do this. And it's like, yeah, exactly. You're traumatized. Exactly. Netflix's Love and Leashes is a very cute movie representation for BDSM. I love it. I've already seen it. Shout out to Love and Leashes. Love it. So good. Your uh, team have shown me a lot of the messages, for example, from Courtney, mm. which if they are, I've not been able to independently verify, I'm going to make that crystal clear to the viewers, but on the assumption that they're true, um, they would certainly cast a very different light on the consensuality aspect of this. I mean, she certainly is clearly keen to keep doing this in these yes. exchanges with you, even yes. whilst professing to have thought differently at the time. Yes. Do you think in all these cases, if people could have seen, again, I think I've asked you this before, but in terms of, of the total allegations, if everyone could see all of the exchanges, do you think you'd be sitting here cancelled in the way that you are? No. I mean, by somebody, right? Like some group, for sure. Not at all. So do you feel that it's been unfair, the way that you've been treated, for that reason? I, a buddy of mine always says, the thing that makes life fair is that it is unfair for everyone. Um, so for me to sit here and say it's not fair, sure, there are elements of this that don't feel fair to me. But, and, I, and I've said this, and I'm not being trite. I'm, I'm not being glib about this. I'm incredibly grateful for everything that happened. I now am able to be the father that my kids deserve. I'm able to give myself the love and validation that I was looking for from others. I'm able to be a good example to my kids. I'm able to also be a good example to my kids about sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we fall on our face. Would you even be here if your kids, and I mean alive, if this hadn't all come out when it did? Was the, the spiraling nature of your general drugs, booze, women, the, the, the kind of extreme sex stuff you would do, do you think that would have potentially led to you dying? Yeah. 
Really? Mm. I think that that's how these things go. This much is enough. Then it's not. Then this much is enough. Then it's not. Then this much is enough. Um, You're always chasing the high. Yeah. And it gets You're, harder and harder to get it. It's, it's physiology. Mm. It's dopamine. It's, you know, getting those hits in your brain. And I, I know the path that I was on was only going to lead in to one place, and that's death. And in a way, esoterically, it, it did. Mm. It led to a career death. It led to an ego death. It led to all of these different kinds of deaths. Um, but, you know. But as, not actual death. Thank God, no. Things got. You know, it sounds like he had an ego death. I think he needs about 10 more. I think he needs about 10 more, you know? Because he still hasn't learned it. He hasn't gotten it. I can tell. I'm so sorry. I refuse. I don't believe. I don't think he got it. I don't think he gets it. Like, he doesn't get it, you know? <laughs> I gave myself the validation goes on national television. He doesn't. He doesn't get it. I'd be shocked if he knew enough to throw out reputable sources. I think he just uses BDSM as a shield for bad behavior, but I could be wrong. I've personally never trusted him. You know, I that's what I think is probably happening. I feel like he is using BDSM to cover up his bad actions, which a lot of people do, right? So I do think that's probably what's happening. Um, Yeah, he needs like 10 more ego deaths before we can really have a conversation. You know what I mean? a lot more serious uh, several months later in 2021 when Effie Angelova, who had that lengthy affair with you, went public with accusations that you had raped her. That initiated an LAPD, Los Angeles Police Department investigation. Gloria Allred, the famed feminist mm. attorney, took up her case um, and she was seen giving a pre-recorded statement making allegations about you. We've got a clip of this. On April 24th, 2017, Army Hammer <laughs> violently raped me for over four hours. In Los Angeles, during which he repeatedly slapped my head against a wall, bruising my face. He also committed other acts of violence against me, to which I did not consent. Okay. Again, what do you, what do you feel? I will say this: if this is not true, this would be very hard to watch for anyone. If he's innocent of raping her, watching someone accuse you of that and then be theatrical about it—I'm not accusing her of not doing it. We're going to read her side of the story next because I don't know; I wasn't there. But from his perspective, if he really didn't do it, that would be incredibly difficult for people to, I wouldn't be able to watch something like that. That would be very hard for my brain to process that I was being accused of something that I know I absolutely didn't do, right? Like that would, I would need, I would need a therapist to help me through that. If it was that big, like if it was this famous, if it was this loud, I would need a lot of help through that process. So we're going to read her side of the story from her own perspective, because I think that's important. But I will say like, this is what's so difficult about this situation because I think the reality is like, we don't know we were not there. We do not know we were not there. So we have to then be very, we have to use discernment to come to a wise conclusion about the circ like the situation in a way that makes sense. But if it did not happen, that would be incredibly hard to watch. Like I would feel burdened by that. And I could see him wanting to die because- I know that feeling, but I will also say that it feels like this wasn't the right time for him to make this statement because it feels like he doesn't really know yet or doesn't get it. And I think that that's the issue. Ugh, I want to see Brittany interview him about this. Bro, if I could interview him, I could ask him some fucking questions that would make him like, I feel like I could ask some really good questions that would really get him to have like an honest conversation because this feels very much like, I'm trying to save my reputation. And that's not the lesson he should have learned from the situation. But maybe the lesson won't be learned for a long time. Maybe going on Piers Morgan was and the other shows was like a part of the learning, but he hasn't learned the lesson that I think we're waiting for him to learn. And the same way, I wonder if Cody has learned it. See, if Cody Ko came out and did an interview, would he sound like ARMY? Because I know Cody Ko could be a great person today. But the, the point is, is that he would need a level of awareness of why people are mad at him in the first place and a real understanding that what he did was wrong to Tana, right? So the dilemma is like, that's the dilemma. It's like, I wonder if Cody knows why it's so hard for people to process that he has sex with Tana at 25. Or does he not get it? But then also, does he have the empathy and the embodied experience to know why? It might take him a long time to get it. 
you know? It's like he's got stuck in the mud but doesn't know what to do but keeps spinning his his uh, tires and doesn't know how, doesn't know it's only getting him more stuck. Yeah, that's how I feel. I feel like he doesn't, yeah. Well, let's see what happens. Still watching that now. It's not easy to watch um, because it represents one of the most difficult times of my life that I've ever been through. And it's not easy to watch because it also feels emblematic of how angry and hurt I made people. What? That was wasn't an answer. Truth, do you think? No. Is she, she telling wasn't. the truth? Okay, hold on. That was a horrible answer. Jesus Christ. Of how angry and hurt I made people. Was she telling the truth, do you think? No. She wasn't. About, there, any, about any of that? There were sexual encounters that we had that were, I would say, more extreme in nature. Um, but the encounter that she's talking about uh, was something that we discussed and we planned. She planned. She said to me, I will be at this Starbucks at this time. I want you to follow me home. Then I want you to break into my house and I want this to feel like a real scenario. Ooh, this is why you have to get a third party involved when you do kidnapping scenes. So another word of advice, if you're gonna do a CNC scene, if you're gonna do a kidnapping scene, you have to have some friend, someone you trust to be in on it so they know what's happening. So they're a third party witness in case anything goes wrong. And you should have check-ins. Somebody you call and check in with. Hey, the scene's going well. We're doing good. Hey, the scene is over. We're doing okay. This is why. Because you want to make sure everyone is good. And look, you don't know. You never know. In the same way women don't know if they're going home with a rapist off a dating app. Men don't know if they're going to bed with someone who's going to falsely accuse them. Nobody knows. We're just hoping we pick the right person. But do you think maybe the person who's cheating with you might have some moral dilemmas? Do you think the person who's cheating might have some moral dilemmas? Like, that's the problem. You're already with somebody who's a consent violator. Cheating is a consent violation. Even if you're the other woman, you are violating this woman's right to sort of like, you're ruining her relationship. Maybe you're not doing a direct consent violation, but you know what I mean? Like, neither of you are good moral people. Hello? So if you're going to do a scene like this, you have to have a third party in on it. Maybe even a fourth party, maybe even a fifth party, right? So where I'm standing right now, these are two immoral people having a, an affair. That's how I'm seeing the situation as of right now. Now, the scene she described of her grape was slamming my head, right, into a cabinet or something where I want to see, first of all, don't do that. Okay, head trauma is real. Don't do any BDSM that's going to end up hurting your head. OK, so I don't even know why you would do that in the first place. Guys, even if you're doing BDSM, you got to be safe. You know, every form of breath play has a risk to brain damage. You cannot do safe without risk breath play. Yes, you can never choke somebody in a real way and deny them oxygen. OK, if you cut off someone's air supply, you are absolutely risking brain damage, period, every single time. Every single time. And we do it anyways, but you have to know there's the risk of brain damage. So when it happens, one, you've already got some sort of acknowledgement of it. Your partner's not going to go to prison. Like ultimately, you're not wrong for taking risky, having risky hobbies, right? You go skydiving, you go base jumping, you do all types of things. You get modifications to your body. Sometimes you die. You do steroids. How many young men have died from steroids? right? Their partners aren't going to go to prison because they were helping them inject. Like at the end of the day, we have to allow people to take risks to their bodies, but we should make sure that the people who are taking the risks understand it to an extent or slash we accept that they're going to make the decision anyways, right? <laughs> this cult believes in safe, sane, and consensual. Exactly. So again, we have to be careful, okay? Didn't you say you knew someone with brain damage from Beth Play? Yeah, I, I didn't know her, know her, but she was at the dungeon and they would do talks about, they had done breath play like hundreds of times. And they eventually did it too many times. Yeah. Same, well, you know, again, with peace and love, we act like humans aren't taking risks on their life every day. Just getting into a car or getting married or marrying someone off the internet. Like that's the big joke on TikTok. Like when you realize you married some guy off the internet and now you live in his house and you're like, hmm. Yeah, we're doing that. Every day we're taking risks. So harm reduce your risks. Make sure you're dating somebody with a good character. And people who cheat don't have good characters. That's why they cheat. 
I don't know why you are holding out for these cheating people as if they have a good character. They're literally married and they're fucking you. What are you doing? What are you doing? I want this to feel real. And we negotiated back and the And the scenario was what? It was what would be called in that sort of world consensual non-consent. Oh, so look at him learning the BDSM words. And yet doesn't feel like a real BDSM to me. The rape. Consensual. Well, I mean, a rape role. Rape play. implies that there is no consent. But she right. wanted to simulate. Correct. It, w- it would be a simulated. But with her knowledge, in fact, as you Not say, only her knowledge, her planning. You know, she said, meet me at this Starbucks and follow me home, then come in the door and do this. So, you know. Th- yes. But if they didn't implement safe words correctly, if they didn't check in, like you can plan all of this out and you can still accidentally grape somebody it, or on purpose grape somebody if you ignored a safe word. Right. So the question is, did she safe word and he ignored it? Did they make it impossible for her to safe word? Another, 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 uh, Another tip, if you're doing consent, non-consent, and you want to tie somebody up so their hands are behind their back, you want to gag them and blindfold them, how will they safe word? How will they safe word? Can anyone tell me? This is like a class, okay? You've tied up their hands, you've blindfolded them, and you've gagged them. It's a consent, non-consent scene. How do they safe word? Okay, so some, some examples. One, they can hold a bell that they throw out of their hand even though their t- hands are tied. They can hold a ball or something right, bright, something like red or yellow that they can throw out. They can moan for very specifically like a long time or in a pattern that sounds weird, like mm, or mm, or like they can do a noise that matters. They can do lots of things, right? They can do so many. The thing is you have to implement a rule that allows them to remain safe, 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 right? So again, you have to, but then you have to be, you have to rely on that partner to catch it, to pay attention, to pay attention, to not just get so in the moment they, oh my gosh, don't see the safe word. So it has to be obnoxious. The reason why red is the safe word is because in which way are you having sexiness and red comes up? Example, oh, I love the way your tongue is so red. Oh, I guess so, but not really. Oh, I love the way your feet are so red. No, I love the way it's like, okay, red. Why'd you say red? Oh, because it's a safe word. It's supposed to knock you out of the moment. Your safe word should knock you out of the moment. If that's not good enough, use a different word. Pineapple. Why would you say pineapple right now? Oh, she's knocking me out. He's knocking me out of the zone. The idea of the safe word, it should knock you out of that headspace in which you are too in it to be like, oh shit, my bad. Because sometimes in BDSM, you get into a flow. Let's say you're doing a really nice whipping scene and you've got a really great flow going and you're just zoning out, bro, ultra instinct style. You're just like vibing. And then all of a sudden you hear like traffic and you're like traffic. And then your brain goes traffic and you realize, oh shit, they're done. The idea is like it should knock you out of even if you're like in a deep mode. Now, some people claim that they're so in subspace, they're so in top space, they can't be knocked out. Okay, that they can't be knocked out, then you're probably not safe to play with unless you have somebody watching the scene that will help. So then you have a DM, someone a dungeon monitor, you have somebody at the dungeon or somebody in the play area, you invite a friend over for the afternoon. The dilemma with a lot of these people is they don't play in front of people. See, I was in a community where we felt safe playing in front of people. Now, I played at home a lot, but I could play in front of people and we could rely on our community to be like, hey, I think your partner's passing out in the scene. Oh, shit, you're right. Like one time I was in, um, I was with some friends at the dungeon and they did a needle scene where the, there were, they were, she was a doctor and she put needles on the back of her bottoms, uh, I'm sorry, on the top of her bottoms back, right? So like on the up, on the up section, all the way down their arms. And then they put them up against the St. Andrew's cross and they flogged them and the bottom started to like, kind of like pass out a bit but the top couldn't quite see because of the angle though they saw it happen pretty quick but before they even saw it a split second before they saw it the dungeon monitor saw it and that's the idea is like we need to be able to you know put things in place that make us feel safe and sometimes that means having people watch your scenes if that's uncomfortable for you then you have to have somebody you call or you have to have a way to check in and ultimately look false accusations are real But more than that, so is grape. And you do not want to have either happen.
this, I, I had never engaged in anything like this before, so we tried it and I got to her house and the door was locked and I had to shoot her a message and be like, your door is locked, I need you to come unlock the door. And she was like, oh shit, sorry, be right there. So it was, it was, it was even awkward and, and clumsy, but it was something that we tried that we never did again, but it was something she wanted to try and I wanted to be an accommodating partner. There were screenshots published by Airmail magazine in which Effie appeared to have told an Instagram follower that she'd had consensual sex, her words, with you, allegedly writing, he is not dangerous. Yes. He didn't rape anyone. She also told another follow, follower, allegedly, she was not saying that you had raped her. Airmail mm. reported those conversations took place before she made her initial allegations public. Yes. When you saw that report, what did you feel about that? I wasn't surprised. I knew that she wasn't raped. I knew that she didn't consider it rape. I knew that we had a completely and entirely consensual sexual relationship from start to finish. So to see her out there saying publicly that I did not rape her. How did it end? How did this relationship end? That's what I want to know. That I never raped her, that it was all consensual. And then to see a international press release where she's crying and saying that I raped her, it wasn't easy. What was fascinating to me, because I know Gloria Allred very well, mm. is that she dropped representing her yes. because she could not get her to sign a sworn affidavit to the effect of what her claims were saying about you, that it was non-consensual and rape and so on. I mean, that on the face of it is quite telling that someone like Gloria decided this is not for me in this case because she couldn't get her client to do this under oath. Mm. Yes. Did you think that was significant? Yes. Under penalty of perjury, if she signed this affidavit and it was found to be untrue, she would be in legal jeopardy. Does any part of you think that this was part of any plan that she had all along? Were you set up or, or did it all Do you guys think like she had hurt feelings? Do you think she was just jealous? Do you think like she was hoping he would leave her or leave the wife for her? And then we'll go over her 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 words as well because she has her own perspective, right? But there does like, again, we weren't there so we can't know. But I will say like, this is what happens when you don't have the right education. You're sloppy and things happen. I still don't know, though, because I haven't seen her case, so I'm not going to give a verdict. I'm still very unsure, but we'll see. Or go on too long for it to be a, a setup like that. Oh, you mean initially why she approached me? I just wondered. I mean, you were a Hollywood star. You know, she's come up to you. That's how it all started. Do you think you were set up, or do you think it was legitimately a genuine relationship with two like-minded souls, but then when it soured and it sort of ended, that's when she changed her view of what had happened. I think it's more that. Mm. I don't think it was a premeditated, I'm going to take this guy down before I ever meet him. Mm. I don't think, I don't think it, she was that calculated. Mm. I think it started organically, became very intense, and then ended. And I think those feelings of loss or anger metastasized. And I left someone with very little recourse except to do this. Hmm. The, the repercussions from her making the rape allegations were unbelievably severe yes. and almost instantaneous. I want to talk first of all about your wife, Elizabeth, at the time. Obviously, you'd already commenced divorce proceedings, but when she learned about all the text messages and the I'm a cannibal stuff and so on, did she find out at the same time as everybody else? Or had you told her that? She was aware of my relationship with Effie before. But the mm. details, the, the, the lurid yes. details. Uh, I know, I don't know how much, but I know that when I made it clear to my wife at the time that I was having an affair and that I was wanting to call off the affair, I know that Effie sent a sizable portion of our messages back and forth to Elizabeth. Really? Mm. Including the cannibalism. Oh no, the woman who was willing to sleep with a married man ended up being a shitty person. I'm shocked. Like not fully, maybe you're partially a shitty person, but like, I do think it's shitty to sleep with somebody's husband. And I think we all know that. It's pretty fucking shitty to sleep with anyone's partner. Okay. It's pretty fucking shitty. In a monogamous relationship. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what. Like, I don't know what. Why are you bothering the wife? Like, that's the problem. Why are you bothering the wife, bro? Leave her alone. You're already causing the... Why is the other woman coming to the wife and being like, your husband's cheating on you with me? Bitch, she don't want to hear from you, bitch. She don't want to hear from you. Go away. You're literally go away. Nobody wants to hear from you, bitch. Why are you coming to this woman as if you're a girl's girl, bro? Nobody wants to hear from you. Hello? Specifically. 
Stupid. Um, she gave an interview, Elizabeth, to Elle. She said, I support Army through his journey. I always will. Uh, adding, do I want my son to become this? Do I want my daughter to stay in a relationship like this? What did you think when she said that? I don't know when that interview was given. Um, but quite, quite recently. Yeah, I think, I think that I am proud of the place that Elizabeth and I have gotten to mm-hmm. as co-parents. Where, yeah, a lot of unfortunate and painful things happened. Uh, most of them my fault in the relationship. She made you undergo psycho-legal evaluation involving the custody of your kids. Yes. That, that must have been an incredibly difficult thing for you to go through. I mean, you're the father of these children. There's no suggestion... Um- Hello. Yes, but to be fair, you just want to make sure that he's stable enough to take care of the kids after everything. You've never been anything but an excellent father. Well, just because you're an excellent father doesn't also mean you're not a grapist. You can be an excellent father and a grapist. I'm pretty sure those two things could happen at once, though. I I mean, you know, that's usually what happens, right? You're like, but he was such a great person. I knew him my whole life. I can't believe he did these things. What about that girl whose dad was a serial killer? And she's like, he was a great dad. I'm sure he was a great dad. Oops. And a serial killer. You know what I mean? So... You have to go through a psycho-legal evaluation to determine if you're fit to be their father with potential consequences, mm. very serious consequences for you and your relationship with them if it had gone the wrong way. That, that, that's, a, that's a horrible experience. I see a mother doing what she felt she needed to to protect her kids. Um, I wasn't necessarily worried about the evaluation because... I, I, in your words, I had, I had never done anything to hurt my kids mm. other than have, you know, an affair and pick a very dangerous person to do it with. Your wife was clearly very angry with you, made a number of allegations about you, mm. but the report concluded you were not a danger to yes. children. How relieved were you when, when that was the conclusion? I would say very relieved, but also not surprised. But had you feared losing contact with your kids? I couldn't imagine anything worse. As I mean, part. during the time of the evaluation, I was only allowed to be around the kids with supervision, a, a therapist. I mean, that's, that's awful. Yeah. It, 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 I, I remember there was a time when I was under the evaluation where my, um, my daughter came up to me and she said, you know, Dad, I need to go to the bathroom. And uh, I looked at the therapist and I wasn't allowed to take my daughter to the bathroom. You know, I, we had to get someone else to do it because I couldn't be alone with my child at the time. It was tough. It was, a, it was a dark time. It was a dark time for everybody. Did you, did you ever feel like ending it all? Yeah. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Did you come? I mean, I believe that, right? Like, under this much pressure, you probably would want to end it all. I mean, people have definitely done it for less. You know, let's be real. But obviously, there is definitely a pressure there. Um, I mean, guilt eats people alive. Shame eats get people alive. Let's be real. You know? Mm. Close to, to trying. Mm. What did you do? I, uh, I considered a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've spoken about this before. I, I, I just decided that I, I wasn't going to be able to get through this. Mm. That it was, it was too much. And I decided that it would probably be better if I wasn't here. Um, and I just swam out into the ocean. A long way. We were down in the Cayman Islands, so I swam out a long way. But then as I was out there in the ocean, I just, I thought about my kids standing uh, on shore. They were on shore at the time? No. No, but you thought about... I thought about them standing on shore and asking where I was. And that made you come back? Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to keep going until inevitably you would have drowned. I mean, it wasn't a great plan, (laughs) you know, Um, but I was desperate and I wasn't thinking clearly. I mean, you never... I mean, it's, it's horrendous that you'd reached that point. For any human being. Yeah. I mean, the lowest moment of your life. Pierce obviously thinks he's innocent. And so he's asking him all these leading questions. He's not very, being very, like, journalistic about it. But to be fair, I don't think any of the people interviewing Army are going to, like, be neutral about it. I, the other one is, like, his good friend. Like, the other one is, like, they're all just men. So, like, I can't imagine, you know, at least the ones I saw. I can't imagine anyone, like, they're not asking him real questions. They're asking him, like, leader questions. Lead, 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 leading questions, you know? Would he be a one or a two? What makes him appear as a one? Right? Like, why, like, when we ask that question, is there something that you see that could even be close to a one in Army Hammer? 
you know? I mean, a one is useless to themselves and their communities. They're very specific people. They're in a very specific place. Like depression, not being able to eat for four months is not being a one. Like a one is very specific. Even depressed people are functional, even when they're not. Right? Like he's not a one, but I'm curious, did you see something that indicated he could be a one? To me, he's like obviously a two. Just a person going through life, doing their best. Like twos are just doing their best with what they have. Ones aren't even trying. Like that's the difference. It's like twos can struggle. Like a baby is a two. A baby's doing what they, they're not, babies are not useless to themselves or their communities. Some people think babies are ones. How can a baby be a one? They're literally doing their best. You know, they're doing their best. You know, ones are, Ones are doing less than their best. Like they're not eating the cupcake. That's why they're a conundrum. They can't even do slightly. They're like, can't even do the basics. Usually they're really struggling. And you're like, why? But it's not even for reasons that like, oh, you're disabled. Oh, you're this. It's like, none of those reasons exist. But Army's just like a dude in a bubble who's struggling. Just like normal dude life, celebrity life. I hope so. Yeah. Your career was basically immediately cancelled. Mm. You were dropped by your talent agency, William Morris. You left two other projects, Shotgun Wedding with Jennifer Lopez and the Paramount series The Offer, uh, which we talked about, about the making of The Godfather. Um, you were not able to work. You had no income. At one stage, you were reported to have been acting as some kind of estate agent in Cayman Islands just to make ends meet. Is that true? Yeah. That was the only way you could make money. Yeah. So your career just basically was just bang, done. Yes. When that was happening, it was, it was all obviously around the time of Harvey Weinstein and uh, the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement and so on. Mm. Did you think you were just going to be another star chucked on this bonfire and there would be no way back? Or what did, what did you think? I mean, I was. I, I was I was thrown into this fire that was burning its way through the industry. Mm. Um, oh, hold on. What do you define as a baby? You said babies are developmentally unable to take care of themselves. Which baby? How old is a baby? Do we consider a baby less than one or a baby less than two, like years old, less than three years old? Like what's a baby? And also like being unable to care for yourself is not an indication of my levels. My levels are not about your inability to take care of yourself. It's that's not what the levels are about. Right. Like people in comas aren't ones. <laughs> in some ways the genesis of the movement is pivotal and vital and healthy. Um, I think what it started to become is not. Uh, it became a witch hunt, it felt like, mm -hmm. where you know people were getting thrown into this fire, and sometimes by people who were throwing them into the fire with good intentions, and sometimes by people who were throwing people into the fire to save themselves. But I don't think they realized that every single person who was thrown into the fire was just fuel for the fire. And the fire was just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it burned everybody. For someone who, by your own admission, the day before all this happened, or the morning of the first Instagram leak, felt you're untouchable and heading to Hollywood superstardom potentially, that's a pretty extraordinary turn of events that literally within three months, you're done. It was a massive swing of a pendulum. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you literally did become untouchable for different reasons. Yeah. People wouldn't touch you with a barge pole. Yes. I, I couldn't get jobs outside of Hollywood. You know, I applied for multiple jobs while living in the Cayman Islands. Like what? Uh, I applied to be a timeshare salesman. Um, I applied to be a drama teacher. Um, I applied oh. to be a real... You can't be around kids, bro. Estate agent. Or I guess drama teacher for adults, maybe? Um, and, you know, each time the letter we got back from the government, an official Caymanian government letter said, due to issues of character... We do not think it is in the best interests of the community for this. Well, maybe you shouldn't have cheated on your wife. ...person to be admitted to the Cayman Islands. The, the day those Instagram leaks occurred, how rich were you at the time? Um, I wouldn't say that I was sitting on a lot of money. Um, I would say that I was incredibly financially irresponsible. Mm. Um, but what were you worth, would you guess? I don't... I mean, it, we owned a house in Los Angeles. Um, he had nothing. He had no money. I had big paychecks coming through, but you know I didn't pay cash for my house. I had a mortgage, uh, and even though I had these big checks coming through, I had a. 
he wasn't famous enough to be completely good. He was probably bad with his money. It sounds like he was bad with everything. Bad with his marriage, bad with his money. Like the irony is like none of this would have happened if you didn't cheat. If you had just gone to counseling. Now, actually, that's not true, though. It probably would have. Well, I don't think any of this would have happened if he had cheated because the timeline would have shifted the moment he made a different decision. But if he had actually just gone through divorce proceedings, patiently waited, gone through the right amount of counseling and like moved through his divorce, then things would have happened differently. The dilemma is like when temptation kept knocking, he opened the door. When temptation kept knocking, came knocking, he opened the door, right? She slid into his DMs. Why did you answer the DM, my bro? Why don't you have enough wisdom not to do that? Now, he says he has a better understanding of himself and he's about to go into his family history, apparently. That's what the, that's what the timestamp says. Ugh. But let me tell you this, okay? <sighs> he doesn't get it yet. There's there. He definitely does not. He's not having a real experience with the situation. I don't trust him. I think he could make this mistake again easily because he's not. He didn't learn his lesson. He might be still learning it, but I don't think he learned the lesson he was supposed to learn. Yeah, I don't think he learned it, you know. Big, extravagant lifestyle. And I had, you know, business manager being like, you cannot spend this much money. And, you know, you're wife cannot spend this much money. So we had big checks coming through, but in a way I was also living paycheck to paycheck. Because you were, the, you know, you're, you're from the, the famous uh, Hammer oil family. Your mm -hmm. great grandfather was Armand Hammer, was oil tycoon. There were reports that you were cut off from any inheritance from the family oil fortune. Is that true? Yeah, I haven't received any Why? inheritance or anything like that. What, what could anything. that have been if, if this hadn't happened to you? There was a world in which my life could have looked very differently. There Wait, his family cut him off after this? His family? Cut him off after this? Oh, shit. There was a world in which I, you know, would have finished high school and then gone to college oh. and then gotten an MBA and then gone. No, 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 that's different. Okay, so they cut him off before any of this. Is so when he was a kid? To work with my dad and had job security for the rest of my life and probably never done anything exciting. Uh, but it would have been dependable and I would have been okay. And I chose at an early age that that just wasn't the life for me. Wait, did he say Arm and Hammer? Like Arm and Hammer, Arm and Hammer? Wait, that's a huge legacy. Like the Arm and Hammer, like that's that's his family? No. Your aunt Casey mm. uh, came forward and publicly said she wasn't surprised about the allegations about you because the family had a history of abuse. Let's take a look at what she said. We are the true definition of dysfunctional. And it's, again, threats of... Um, oh my gosh, what? He's part of that family? It's like Tucker Carlson being a part of Swanson frozen food. I'm shook. What? Bodily harm or... Uh, Who is this? I'm sorry, I missed it. Because the family had a history of abuse. Let's take a look at what she said. We are the true definition of dysfunctional. And it's, again, threats of um, bodily harm or uh, retribution or disownment. I mean, there was always this, if you embarrass or do anything outside the family, and we were always photographed and surveilled, you know, the cameras by our own family. It was like they were watching every move we made. So when the allegations against Army Hammer were made public, mm -hmm. did you say, of course, this is this family? How did you process it? I wasn't surprised. And the reason I say that is because what... I experienced growing up was so familiar. And it's not something, Tamron, that you just wake up one day and decide to become a monster. It's a learned behavior. Now, Casey claimed that her father, who was your grandfather, sexually abused her as a child and killed a man over a gambling debt. Um, she also uh, revealed that Armand, who you were named after, was a, his name uh, said that he, sorry, she also said that Armand, who you were named after, was a monster of psychological warfare who threatened sexual violence on your great grandmother. Um, and as a result of all this, you then came forward and said a pastor sexually abused you when you were 13, and that may have sparked the whole thing with BDSM and so on. Hey, hey, wait, Do you think there's any hey, truth? Hey, hey, hey. Don't put your sexual trauma on BDSM, but also maybe. I feel like I ended up in BDSM for all the great reasons, like all the good reasons, but some people do end up in BDSM for all the toxic reasons, like they end up anywhere for the wrong reasons, right? I mean, it's always about why. It's always about why, you know? So he was, okay, oof, that's a, see, that's what I'm saying. People who are, well, that's the problem. Is like, look, 
it's not true that everybody who experiences trauma will end up hurting people. That's just so untrue. Now, it is true that on a spectrum, trauma impacts a person's relationship with what's healthy and unhealthy, and you might engage in things that are more unhealthy than healthy, right? And then you can learn you can learn how to be healthy. But then some people are raised in environments and where things are not only encouraged, but taught to them as the norm. Like, I think Cody Co was probably taught it was very normal to have sex with a 17-year-old since he's from Canada. It's what people were doing around him. He probably felt the most connected to teenagers, which says a lot about his psychology, but okay. And then there's like this whole thing, right? So Army Hammer could be somebody who was raised in a particular bubble, ends up in a particular place, but that's the question, right? And it always, it always stems from parenting, but also our parents are breaking curses or trying to, or maybe they're not. And that's why I say it is also a part of breaking generational curses, not having children. Not having kids is just as much about breaking generational curses as having kids you raise well. Because ultimately, not everybody is really able to heal enough to have kids that they don't give too much of their trauma to. And that's why I say it's interesting to see people give themselves gold stars for being such good parents when their kids are literally paying for therapy right now. But also, even if you do your best as a parent, and truly I've seen great parents try their best, you're going to fuck up. You're going to fuck up. And it's not, you're not a bad person for fucking up. I've seen so many good parents do so many amazing things and try their absolute best, but they had their own curses that they ended up causing in their kids. And it just is what it is. No one could ever truly break every curse before they have a kid, right? That's not possible. So with that said, I still don't see him having a deep awareness of this connection to the trauma. So let's see him talk about his family in this section. Because again, he's not giving me a deep, profound understanding of the human condition yet. But maybe it's also that he's on Piers Morgan. To what she was saying there, that there's something almost genetic about this, that it was just a lot of stuff in the family of sexual abuse going on. And that when you yourself are subjected to it, with this person, I'll come to that in a moment, but it all just was a, a, a potent toxic cocktail. I don't know, because it goes to sort of like the nature versus nurture argument. Mm. I, I can't speak to what Casey's childhood mm. was like. Do you, is she still alive? I, I'm assuming she is. You don't have any relationship with her? I, I, I've never had a relationship right. with my aunt. I've never been with my aunt alone, one-on-one, -on -one, mm. in my entire life. So mm. when she was on a documentary talking about me, it was, it was, it was surprising. I didn't, I didn't understand how she became an authority mm. on me or my behaviors. Um, I think that... She could you have know, just wanted attention, honestly, but who knows? In my family's history, were there dysfunctional people? Absolutely. In anyone's family history, there are dysfunctional people. Mm -hmm. Does that mean it necessarily is going to directly translate into my life? Maybe in some ways. Is it my fault that there are dysfunctional patterns in my history or family history? No, that's not my fault, but it is my responsibility. And if I don't want to pass that down to my children, I have to turn around and face that and True. say, okay. I need to do the work on this. The incident with this pastor when you were 13, what actually happened there? Um, there was oh. a, a pastor in the church that we went to who took an interest in me. And, um, you know, the, the words we now know to use is I was groomed by this pastor and then sexually abused. In what way? Oh. Uh, in all the unpleasant ways. Did he rape you? No, I so, was never. Uh, okay, sometimes I feel like we are very lax in asking people about their sexual trauma. Like, sometimes I think we're too relaxed about the way we ask people about their rape. You know, like, okay, everybody, okay. We're raped, but it was... Um, I Physical was... sexual abuse. Yes. Yeah. Do, do you remember being traumatized by that? Yeah. Yeah. And do you think there's a link between that and then your proclivity for quite extreme sexual behavior? You know, I, I, I don't know is the short answer for that. Uh, I mean, it would, is, it would screw anybody up. I mean, there's yeah, no for sure. I mean, there's, there's definitely ramifications for childhood sexual abuse. Um, do I think that being introduced to sex in a way where I was completely out of control led to me wanting to be in control in a sexual relationship? Sure. I, I, that logically makes sense to me. I mean, I'm not a sex therapist, but that makes sense to me. Do I also think that people like what they like and maybe that can exist independent of trauma. Mm. Yeah, I think that that exists too. I think, again, there's probably some sort of overlap there. A, a year ago, The Hollywood Reporter suddenly announced that prosecutors in the LAPD uh, in Los Angeles County said that you would not face criminal charges in the case involving FE. The LA District Attorney said, due to the complexity of the relationship and inability to prove a non-consensual forcible sexual encounter, we're unable to prove the case beyond- Oh my God, stop. Blames BDSM, but not the church classic Pierce. Shut up. True. On the reasonable doubt. 
And you said, I'm very grateful to the DA for conducting a thorough investigation and coming to the conclusion I've stood by this entire time that no crime was committed. I look forward to being beginning what will be a long, difficult process of putting my life back together now that my name has been cleared. Um, I mean, that was a time when if the LAPD could have nailed you, that they would have been desperate to do so. Yes. There was a lot of allegations being made about famous people, but not much of it was leading to actual convictions in a court, courtroom. Mm. Um, but while that investigation was going on for two and a half years, you must have considered the possibility of potentially being charged and potentially being convicted and maybe going to jail. I mean, that was a fear. It was a fear. I, I think you never know how those things are going to go. And that's what my attorneys kept saying to me over and over and over. And I would say, I didn't rape anybody. I didn't do this. This is, this is provably untrue. And they would say, you can't say anything because you never know how this is going to go. And I think that was a big part of why I stayed silent for so long, partially because I wanted to make sure that when I did finally say something, I wasn't leading with anger at this situation. Mm -hmm. This is a very complicated situation, and mm. there are people who have been. It's true. He did come to this interview not with anger. He doesn't seem angry. He seems uncomfortable. He seems slightly unsure. I don't think he seems completely healed or anything like that, obviously. I think he's like in the middle place, but he's not angry. I will give him that. In this situation where they were violently attacked or abused or raped, mm -hmm. and that is a massive issue that we are dealing with. In this situation, I knew that it wasn't true, but my lawyers were saying, if you go out there and say anything, that could be the thing that tips the scale. And yes, we have all the evidence that we're looking at that shows that this was a consensual relationship, but you never know what'll happen. You might get charged. And if you get charged, you're going to court. And if you go to court, you never know what a jury is gonna do. It's scary. You feel like your life is in jeopardy. How relieved were you when that news broke? I remember exactly where I was when that call came in. Where and were, you? where were you? I was standing in an airport. I was where? standing in an airport. Uh, I was in New York in an airport. And I was about to fly over to uh, a friend of mine's wedding. And I remember I was standing in the airport and that call came through and I, I couldn't even help myself. I, I yelled out loud. I in the middle of the airport? In the middle of the airport. I was so relieved that it finally felt like this chapter of my life was done. In January 2024, so about six months later, Effie didn't just double down, kind of trebled down. Um, she penned an essay for Medium, which is entitled My Traumatizing Experience with My Rapist Army Hammer. And she then went into details, calling you a manipulative psychopath, that you'd been so cruel, you'd severely damaged, you crushed her, you raped and beat her. Um, she became more and more scared of you. I explained I felt disassociated, overwhelmed with shame and self-blame, frequently nauseous, began self-harming since he assaulted me. I couldn't see him anymore. Um, and she quoted you as saying, I need to rape you again. Remember when you were on the floor and I walked away and grabbed a knife, you were crying on the floor and I left you in a pile of tears, grabbed a knife and held it to your throat and raped you more. Everything else seemed boring. You crying and screaming, me standing over you, I felt like a god. I mean, pretty devastating to read that. The, the quotes that she ascribed to you, were they true? I don't remember saying those things. I know that- But they, they could be true. I know that we had the encounter that she had planned, and I know that we spoke about it afterwards. I don't know that those were the words that we used. But, but you, could, you could have said it. It's the kind of language you were using with her. It, 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 in the context of a relationship like that, that would be the language that you use, yeah. But again, your position would be this was role play, fantasy. Correct. And one that she was fully on board with. Correct. Why would someone who spent so long with you, and you've explained this to a... That's wild. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Uh, mm. Damn. That's... That's wild. Ooh. He def said those things. Oh, he def said those things. You know, I will say this. Um, I feel like you would remember if you said something like that. And the fact that he's fudging around it tells me that he definitely said it. He just doesn't know how to justify it. And I would say this is why it's so important to really be careful with your uh, partners, but also to understand like what you're saying to people or what's in text message or, you know, if it's verbal, you know, what tone you were saying it with, you know, because, oh, oof, I don't, it's not a good look. See, he almost had me. I was like feeling better about everything. And now I'm like, oh, 
And we're going to read that Medium article. So just trigger warning for everybody, okay? We're going to read it. Because, like, that's not great. I don't know. I don't know. I don't trust him to be in a good place yet. But I think he could get there. And I do believe in, to be fair, I believe in restorative justice. Like, I be, I'm a progressive. I believe bad people can be good people. I just think they should do the work to change as a person. But I believe people can change. Not all people change, but I do believe certain people change. And look, since not a lot of people change, most people are pretty happy with where they're at. A lot of bad people are also kind of happy where they're at. Who can fault a tornado for being a tor tornado? I don't fault you for being a bad person. I don't have to, to stay away from you or to have a relationship with you in society, have a relationship with you that keeps you away from people from hurting them, right? That's the dilemma. Hey, if he ever starts an OF, I'm sure people will subscribe. He should think about it. To a degree, but were you surprised that even when the LAPD didn't lead to any charges being made and the DA's office dropped the case, were you surprised that she then did this piece, as I say, kind of trebling down on what she'd said? At this point, nothing really surprises me with her. Do you think she actually, I might have asked you this earlier, but do you think she actually believes this at this stage? I think that there is a, a legitimate possibility that she's convinced herself that this is true. But at the same time, I don't know what's going on with her. She's also spent the last year on social media saying that she wants my nine-year-old daughter to be raped. So whoa, I don't think- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, maybe she's just a stalker, bro. What the fuck? We're dealing with on social media time. I don't know what's going on with her. She's also spent the last year on social media saying that she wants my nine-year-old daughter to be raped. So I don't think that we're dealing with- Really? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's horrific. I know, I know. And she's putting this out there on her platform. Have you, has she tried to contact you? Well, I, I'm, she, I, I've blocked every single avenue of communication. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, through lawyers, there's been a lot of communication through lawyers of her asking for money and-, and Whoa, okay. There's alleged screenshots and messages from other people. And allegedly she's like a very vicious person according to Reddit. So like, I don't know how many of these things is true. We'll go over it in a second, but apparently Reddit does not have nice things to say about this woman. She actually might just be crazy. Oh, damn. Okay, we're staying up late, bros. We're, we're gonna dig into this. We're digging into this. In return for her silence and, you know, extortionate. How much money? Money. Oh, millions and millions of dollars. Like what? millions and millions of dollars 10 million no, not quite that much but yeah a lot of money that i don't have you know and by the way even if i did have it i'm not sure i would give it to her but do you think money is not. the main incentive you're of course you don't give it to her of course you don't give it to her what the fuck not from you if i'm going to go off of communications between my lawyer and her lawyers yes mm -hmm. yes you entered a 12-step program after you reached rock bottom mm -hmm. uh what did that do for you gave me a new life. It gave me a sense of freedom. It gave me a sense of self-esteem that I'd been hungry for my whole life. It allowed me to be the father that my kids deserve. It allowed me to be the friend that I want to be to people. It, it, it's, the, it's the best thing that ever happened to me outside of having Do you ever drink alcohol now? No, I, I have no interest. When was the last time you had a drink? Uh, three and a half years ago. And no drugs, presumably. Mm -hmm. So a very clean, very different life. Yeah, and a better life. Sometimes a more painful life, sometimes a more stressful life, mm. because I have to now feel all of these things that I was running from before, but ultimately a better life. Have you been able to have relationships? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be purient, but the sex side of things, mm. is that very different, Vienna? In the sense that, like everything else in my life, there is a higher degree of control and nothing feels out of control for me. Nothing feels wild for me. Everything feels more balanced and healthy. And uh, there isn't a little devil on your shoulder missing the cannibalism. <laughs> well, it's hard to miss something that you've never done, but- uh, oh, You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, there's always going to be a devil on our shoulders. It's just about how much bandwidth you give him. Mm. And mm. right now I'm in a place where he's still there, but he gets very little bandwidth. There were reports that Robert Downey Jr. paid for you to go to rehab, is that right? Uh, no, he did not. He did not pay for me to go to rehab. Has he been supportive to you? Uh, I would say that yes, he, he has. You don't seem convinced. Well, I, that was well reported. Mm. Is that really not the case? I don't, I don't, I don't want to bring anyone else into my situation. Uh, there are a number of people who have been extremely helpful and I'm incredibly grateful. But is he one of them? Yes. In what way then? 
in the way where anyone in Hollywood who suffers from any sort of addiction issues, whether it be alcohol or process addiction or drugs, decides to get sober, that guy... Is she is he going to ask about any other of the victims allegations? So he did cover the other victims allegations slightly, but didn't deep dive into them. Apparently, there's a YouTube video about the other victims. So we might move into that as well. Let's see. We'll find you and he will help you. It's, what was the best amazing. advice he gave you? Sit down, shut up. Everything's going to be OK. Hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. Did you hear from Leo DiCaprio? Because uh, he starred no. with him. No. Didn't, didn't mm. Or Julia Roberts? Mm -mm. What do you feel about the fact they didn't contact you having started movies with you? I try not to think about the people who didn't contact me. I try to focus on the people who did, who showed Um, Also, not everybody you meet is going to be like reaching out to you during this situation. I see people going through stuff all the time and I don't personally reach out to them because it's not my business. But also, we're not close like that and it might be inappropriate for me to reach out and then they might feel like, oh my gosh, now I have to like give this person attention. So like, you know. Their support. Which other notable people did actually reach out to you and help? A few, a few. Give me some names. You, um... Luca Guadagnino has also been vocally mm. supportive, which is something that I could not appreciate more. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I'm also well aware that it is a precarious situation right now. And anyone who vocalizes support mm. comes under fire. And I understand that my situation was inflammatory. And anyone who gets too close might also light on fire. Given what he went through, has Johnny Depp been in touch? You start with him in the... Lone Ranger? Uh, we've communicated a few times. Hmm. Yeah. How? Yeah. Um, oh my God. Piers, I feel like Piers just wants a headline. That's why he's asking these questions. They're just headline questions. I don't actually care what celebrities talk to Army Hammer. I literally give zero fucks. FaceTime. Shared cannibal texts. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Pointers, you know. But he's, has he been helpful? Because he's been through a very you know, traumatic legal battle himself, which he ended up. I didn't bring this to him. He didn't bring his to me. It was more of a social call. How are you? Good to see you. Glad you're still alive. You know, that kind of thing. Mickey Rourke once said to me when he was in the wilderness in Hollywood before the wrestler brought him back, yeah. that the stench of death around someone in Hollywood when things are bad can be seen as mm. contagious. And that's why people avoid you. Mm. They don't want to catch the failure or cancellation virus. Do you, does that resonate with you? I'll tell a story that I just, I just told recently to someone there was a guy, and I, I don't want to get too specific, but there was a guy named Clark who very early on in my situation, a couple months in, I was just starting to get sober. I was complaining to this guy, Clark, and uh, I was like, I can't believe all of these people. Like, people are sending me private emails saying, I know this isn't you. Like, this is crazy. Who This guy, like, I've known you for years. This guy who they're talking about, like, it's just not you. And I was like, why are you sending me emails? Say something about this. Like, why is everyone saying to me directly, like, we know this isn't real. Say it publicly. Like, help mm. me. And Clark looked at me and he said, you know, what kind of friend are you? And I said, what are you talking about? I'm a, I'm a great friend. I would do anything for my friends. Literally anything for my friends. That's the kind of friend I am. And he goes, yeah, you think you're such a good friend? And I go, I know I'm a good friend. He goes, really? You set your house on fire and your house is burning to the ground. And now what? You want your friends to run into a burning house with you? What happens to your friends when they run into a burning house? And I said, they would get burned. He said, do you want your friends to get burned? And I said, no. He said, if you were a good friend, what would you want for your friends? And I said, I would want my friends to stay as far away from the fire. This happened, yeah, this is, I hate to say it, but this is true. When I was going through my stuff, uh, many, many years ago now, so crazy how long it's been. But even when I was going through my stuff, uh, yeah, it's not like, a, like there were a couple people, people I'm grateful to, who helped, obviously. But a lot of people didn't because it was too messy. And it probably was for the best in the long run. But more than that, people just didn't know what was true. And it's hard to know what's true. It's hard to know about people's character. And that's why I say, again, it's already hard enough. Okay? It's already hard enough in the world. And there's no such thing as a perfect victim. There really isn't. It doesn't exist. But damn, this is why it's so hard. Because there isn't a perfect victim. So when you see somebody, it's hard to know if they're a victim. Could it be that Army Hammer is a victim in this situation? He definitely cheated. Right? Like, that's true. He definitely did a lot of things. But did he grape somebody? Because that is not okay if that's a false accusation. And again, we'll get into her side of the story. But let me tell you, uh, it's not looking for good for her. Apparently, she's put out a lot of really weird text messages and tweets. 
which by the way, was the saving grace in my own situation with the stalker many years ago, who I don't name for legal reasons, obviously, um, that basically the text messages she provided, the evidence she provided was the reason the judge ruled that we had no guilt because she basically told on herself. And it was kind of like a saving grace that she was sort of insane and a stalker because her illness, which is so sad, was also the proof that we never did anything to her. She had made it up. And so that was the problem, right? Is that it was sort of a saving grace, but also it was so sad. But think about what it takes to be a stalker. Think about how inappropriate you are. Think about what you're willing to do. It doesn't mean she's not a victim of her own mental health, by the way. Stalkers are victims of their own mental health, right? They're like suffering people. They're, they're suffering from a pathology. It's really sad. So a part of me has no ill will towards her now. I've, I've definitely moved on and healed from that. But I also know that it was really hard when I was going through it. It was really difficult. Like being falsely accused of anything just sucks. And, you know, I have a good sense of humor about it now. Obviously, look at boys on the internet called me a cultist. Girl, you wish I was running a cult, girl. You wish so you could join. Let's be real. But like, obviously, I can handle it now better because everything that like what happened years ago, I've already fought and won. I already feel good about my situation. I don't have to bring it up anymore. But it's one of those things where I think you have to be in a place in your life where you really understand why people did it in their first place. And it's always sad. There's something really sad about how miserable people can be. And what's worse, how sad you'll let yourself be in terms of that misery. I'm glad that Army doesn't seem miserable, but I know he's not done healing, but I think he's heading in a good direction. But I will say this, we are not done going into this story because we want to hear her side just in case this white man is tricking us. So hold on to your butts. We are not done with this story. Fire as possible. And he reached over and he patted my leg and he said, now you're thinking like a good friend. And he walked away. See, I don't agree with him. No? No. Okay. I would never forget the ones who ran towards the fire. Oh, 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 and, I, and, I never, be, and I never would. They would be my proper friends. By the way, I never the will who, forget The ones who ran the other way from the fire? Yes. Uh, not so much. Correct. But there's a difference between me appreciating and celebrating the ones who ran into the fire yeah. on their own volition and me expecting or asking anyone to. But I, I just think all these situations, I talked to Kevin Spacey um, at the very studio, you know, and mm. uh, I just think anyone who's been through these things, it's unbelievably traumatic for the person in your position. And neither of you sat here and claimed to be angelic by any means, but neither of you have been convicted of any crimes, and yet you both got unceremoniously cancelled. And I do think, you know, I've been through not as bad things, but I've been through ups and downs in my career. Yeah. I never forget the people that contacted me, but I also, I never forget or really forgive the ones who run away, sure. who were in touch all the time, and then the moment yeah. the wind blows the wrong way, they're out of dodge. I don't forget yep. that. I bet yep. you're the same. Yep. And I mean, you even had people who came to your defense without doing anything on their own yep. who suffered consequences from that. Yes. And it's... Yeah, it's I mean, scary. Sharon Osbourne, my good friend. That's who I'm thinking. Lost, lost her beloved job on American television because yep. she said, she asked the, had the audacity to ask, what had I said that was racist? Answer nothing. <laughs> it was absolutely unbelievable. Yep. Um, I want to play a clip from Kevin, actually, from the interview he gave me. This is about... The whole Me Too thing. We've touched on this earlier. I wanted to see what you think. Of Do you think the pendulum oh. post-Me Too, you were caught up in that song? Really? It's like, no offense. Okay, but he just named like the worst people ever. <laughs> he just named like the worst people ever. Like, Pierce is a horrible person. This is like Keemstar calling all his favorite buddies around and being like, we're good people though, right? Like, I don't want Sharon Osbourne... Piers Morgan, Army Hammer, or fucking what's his face on just no. First wave, the hysterical first wave, I saw many people taken down. But do you think it's gone too far? Well, I, I, I could say yes, and not just in my particular case. There have been others that I feel, you know, they may have been inappropriate. They may have done something that they wish they hadn't done. But I, I didn't think that what it was and maybe what they even admitted to was so <laughs> heinous that they should have lost their career mm, that's it you know i think look if you're an entertainer you lose your career when nobody wants to watch you entertain and that's it okay like entertainment entertainers are only you only have a job so much as the audience wants to watch you and that's why Piers morgan is on youtube by the way he's a youtuber now he's not on tv this is not a tv show this is a youtube show it's just produced like television so just to be fair, okay, 
or just to be clear, I should say, you weren't just canceled. You didn't have an audience who wanted to watch you in the same way on a program that could justify having you there. You know, we all work for somebody. I work for YouTube. They work for agencies. If you're not doing good by the brand, they have the right to kick you off the platform or do something different. Because ultimately, like, you know what I mean? Now, Dr. Disrespect is still on YouTube. He's just demonetized. So keep that in mind. I wonder if Cody Cole will be demonetized. Probably not. But still, I don't, look, I don't think you're always a bad person, but I would not want to be in a room with any of these people. Let me just say that. Career or their ability to, to make their livelihood. Um, I think that is, that is too far. Um, but I also think we have to be mindful that it doesn't swing back too far in the other direction. What do you think of that? I mean, I, I, I agree with him. I, I, I think the genesis and origin of this movement was necessary. For a long, long time, people in power were in positions to abuse it with no recourse uh, and no fallout. I'm sorry. Um, that other guy, uh, what's his name? He just said it. The other guy, didn't he, um, wasn't he like with a kid? Wasn't that his accusation? Which I understand, like, a lot of our ancestors were with kids. I don't know how I feel about saying that out loud, but you know what I mean? Like, but shouldn't we stop that generational curse? Shouldn't you feel pretty grossed out by that? Shouldn't you like, we, we need to face ourselves? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we acting like you didn't just get, look, bro, with peace and love, Kevin Spacey, thank you. With peace and love, bro. Okay. You gave people the ick and it's real. The ick is a real thing. I can't watch Kevin Spacey anymore. There's no fucking way. Right. Even though when I first heard that story, I was being nuanced as fuck and I still am. And I recognize people do things. I don't like any of these people. These people all feel like Keemstar to me. And I do not like Keemstar. Like, I don't trust it, you know? Mm -mm. And that's not okay. I think that the pendulum had swung so far in that direction. And it's probably expected that there be a bit of an overcorrection. Well, have we pendulum. lost as a society the ability to forgive people who genuinely atone for what they did? Yes. Uh, and not allow them a second chance? It seems to me both you and Kevin, having gone through a lot of legal stuff and come out without any conviction, you ought to be entitled to come back. And yet there seems to be no mechanism yeah. post Me Too for anyone but a do. You can't demand people want to watch your movies. Like, he's not going to sell tickets. They're not going to sell tickets. Like, become YouTubers. Join join OF. Okay? Like, nobody wants to see your movies. I'm not going to go see a movie. I used to see movies because Army Hammer was in them. I won't do that anymore. Kevin Spacey was really good on House of Cards, but, like, no one's going to fucking go see... Like, bro, nobody wants to see your movies. Get over it. Do that. It's like you're almost, you know, you're, you're tainted in a way that seems to me to be unfair mm. because you weren't convicted of any crime. And... A lot of it is he said, she said, or he said, he said, whatever. But if there's no actual criminal conviction, why are you not allowed to come back? Ugh, people always feel so entitled, don't they? You can come back. Nobody wants to hire you. No one stop it. Go ahead, come back. Somebody still has to put you in a movie. You're not going to sell tickets. Do, do you feel that? Yes. What's your message to Hollywood producers who, who may be thinking, you know what, I know, I know they dropped the thing, but I can't touch him. I think that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. What? Um, you know, if they were smart, they could get guys like two-time Academy Award winning actor Kevin Spacey. I'm going to, even Johnny Depp, look, with peace and love, I'm, you know, if he in any, any way got vindicated with Amber, that's great. I can't watch your movies. Okay. Like, I don't, y'all just seem so toxic and entitled, and I don't care about any of you. Like, thank you for all the great stuff. I'm not interested anymore. And I don't know why they're acting like there's a crowd for them to sell tickets. I'm sorry, you're competing with like huge movie stars now. So like, everybody relax. Nobody wants to see you. For probably pretty cheap right now, for a good project. And probably a better actor. And mm. I suspect you would be too. I would, I would hope so. emotional range you've had to go through for real would probably enhance your ability as an actor. Mm. I think that there is an access to myself and to my emotions that would have been difficult for me to get to if I spent my entire life numbing out my emotions. There's a kind of irony, isn't there, that the social network made you very famous, huge hit movie about the big- 
True. Johnny is still an abuser. Let's be honest. Oh, for sure. Him and Amber were super fucking toxic. Like, that's for sure. Beginnings of Facebook and social media had a big part in ruining your career. Mm. You know, so? Army the Cannibal became the kind of go to Twitter. Honestly, if he was just a cannibal, maybe that would have worked. So, okay, let's be real. Even if none of these things were true, his career wasn't ruined because none of them were true. They're, it's not even ruined because people believe them. It's ruined because people so, had a relationship with him as an image because, you know, it's all parasocial that ruined their their ability to market him in a way that brings in money. Right. It doesn't matter if he's innocent. And also, what was he even doing before? Well, I'm trying to think of what movies he was even in. Wasn't he in like indie films mostly? And he was what going to do a movie with J-Lo? Nobody likes J-Lo. God rest J-Lo. She really was like part of my queer upbringing, like my queer awakening when I was younger. But like, okay, it's not like anybody cares about J-Lo either. So what, he was going to do a movie with J-Lo? Nobody cares. Like these people act like your time is done. This was it. It sucks. But yeah, that's your story. This is the end of your career in Hollywood traditionally. And same with John. I don't want to see Johnny. I don't want to see you. I don't want to see any of you in movies. You're not going to get me out of my seat to go to the movie theater. None of you are going to be the reason I get off my butt to go to the movie theater. But let me tell you this. There is an OF waiting for you to capitalize on it. You would make money. You know, you should just go the Tucker Carlson route and get a Twitter show with all the losers. <laughs> Headline for people. Hmm. Um, I, I haven't actually thought about that. That's very funny. It is. Well, it's not funny for you, but it is. It's an irony, isn't it? In a sort of like gallows humor <laughs> yeah. kind of way. You know, that's the thing. It, it, I'm at a point now where I've realized the best way to get through these difficult times is to cry when you need to. And then to laugh when you need to. And you've done both today. Yeah. Well, as we head Full to, emotional gamut here. Well, as we head towards the end of the interview, how, how do you feel about the conversation we've had? I'm very happy with it. Uh, it feels measured. It mm. feels fair. It feels factually based. Um, it is cold enough in here to store meat. But other than that, it's <laughs> been a good conversation. I don't like to sweat on TV. Yeah, um, fair. You're still living in the Cayman Islands. Do you have a job at the moment? Um, I, I, I do. I, I started working with a friend of mine on a project that he's working on. Um, a film project? TV? Or? Well, this one is not in the entertainment world, mm -hmm. uh, but I have also written a script uh, with a good friend of mine that is pretty autobiographical, and it's something that we want to shoot and so, direct it's about together. about you? Uh, in a roundabout way, yeah. How does it end? Well, I can't tell you now. you got to watch it. Does it end? I mean, you know, the classic Jerry Bruckheimer, Don Simpson movie cocktail is you start with setting up the characters they have a massive pits moment then they have redemption and glory that's the, that's the recipe brother. of every hit movie yeah i would say that is very much the american model of films this is a much more sort of european styled film it's not going to end with you swimming out to the ocean no no your kids are with you in the Cayman Islands. do you share custody with with your I do. your wife i mean do you have much of an income at the moment or not um not no not very much and it's what it's is that tough. like for somebody who had so much money and flash it around so much and could squander it to your heart's content. What's it like to actually have very little money? I don't know that you will believe me, and I'm pretty sure that they won't, but it's very liberating. Really? It's, it's very freeing. Well, I guess nobody asks you for money, apart from the exes who've made allegations. Just, but, just lawyers. Right. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things mm. that's famous, everybody wants a piece of the action. If there's no yeah. action of a piece of, they all disappear again. Well, it's also, it's, it's when you give up all of the things that you think define who you are mm. or make you what you are, and you no longer have those things, it forces you to leave the external world and to go internal and to actually find out who you are and what you are. And money has very little to do with that. How old are your kids now? My daughter's nine and my son is seven. So I have, an, I have a 12 year old daughter and she's been heavily into Google for some time. Mom. When your kids tap your name into Google. Wow, Piers is so old to have a 12 year old. Inevitably they're gonna see the word cannibal. Hmm. Have you had that conversation? Have you tried to explain that, that part of it, the, the infamous headline part of it? No. Uh, it's not the time yet. I think that would be introducing the idea of sexuality mm -hmm. to kids who are too young to be introduced. That you tr um, sh some kids have their period as young as nine, so at least talk to her about her reproductive stuff. Reading that moment of having to... Or her cycle stuff. Yeah. Very tough conversation to have, but one you probably have to because... This is so weird. I hate Pierce's interview style. They're going to find out. Yes. Again, such is the nature of the internet. It's a scary idea, but an inevitable one. Are you a much better father now because of all this? You've yes. got much more time with them, I guess. Mm. 
when I'm in town, I take them to school every day. I pick them up from school every day. I am with them throughout the rest of the day and then I drop. Is that because you're jobless? Because you don't have a job? Them off Just kidding. I love that. Very their good. mom's house at night every single day. What and do they think Army Hammer does? Uh, well, they know that I was an actor. M was an actor because they've seen the age appropriate films that I've done. M or was? M. Yeah. Less opportunity, but am. Um, but more than anything, they just know me as dad, mm -hmm. which is all I care about. Army, thank you for being so open on this with me. Sure. Thank I, you. I think that um, I don't understand how anyone could listen to this or watch this and not think at the very least you ought to be given another chance. I, I don't understand why you would conclude that from everything I've read up about your story. I think it's, it's not the time. I think eventually, sure, maybe, but also he needs a little bit more work. He's a little more introspective, you know, because introspection is a journey. Everyone's introspective. Everyone's introspective, uh, except ones. Okay, just a reminder, everybody is introspective, except ones. That's why they're interesting. It's like they lack complete introspective introspection. Babies are introspective. The idea that babies don't introspect is so interesting to me because like my whole life I've worked with children. They're very little introspective bees. That's what they're doing. They're literally collecting data and discovering themselves. They're literally, you witness a child reach consciousness when they start to realize like, oh, I exist. I'm like, yep. And then they're like, oh my God, I exist. Like, what are you talking about? So again, he has a level of introspection. It's just, it's not fully developed. He's like a half caked bake. No, a half baked cake. And I'm waiting for the whole cake to cook. It's one of those things where you were caught up in a sort of Salem witch trial, along with a lot of people, some of whom thoroughly deserve their comeuppance. Mm -hmm. And to a degree, by your own admission, you probably did deserve a correction in your life and a bit of a comeuppance. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you deserved what happened to you. It, it's so complete, the cancellation. It took everything away from you. And I'm not oh, entirely sure God. why. They took everything away from me. This is, I'm just going to... Nobody wants to watch a cheating asshole, okay, in a romantic film. Get over it. Uh, I think it was unfair. But I appreciate you being so candid. Yeah. I wish you all the very best. I hope someone is watching this and thinking. Men talking to other men sometimes seems like a different form of Animal Planet, literally. You know what? Ryan Reynolds can't do them all. Like I Don't be jealous because Ryan Reynolds never cheated on nobody. If Ryan Reynolds cheats on Blake Lively, I will slap him figuratively said, you can get it for cheap these days. <laughs> I'm still looking for James Bond, you know that. <laughs> no, Good no, to see you, Army. Thank you very it. much. Yeah. So fucking weird. And look at Piers, Mor Piers Morgan with Andrew, Andrew Tate. Nobody wants to hear from Andrew fucking Tate. Okay, now. So this is the video they showed for a second. Let's watch this really fast. P.S. It's going to be graphic, so just a heads up. I'm at Army Hammer on Facebook. So this is the alleged victim. This was three years ago. Okay. 2016. Hold on, I'm gonna rewind it. I'm at Army Hammer on Facebook in 2016 when I was 20 years old. I fell in love with him instantly. Is she a Russian bot? No, I just, I don't mean that. Is she a Ukrainian, Russian? What is she? What is she? The relationship progressed rapidly and the emotions from both sides became really intense. Looking back, it is now clear to me who is employing manipulation tactics in order to exert control over me until I started to lose myself. He would often test my devotion to him, slightly removing and crossing my boundaries as he became increasingly more violent. He abused me mentally, emotionally, and sexually. <laughs> On April 24th, 2017, Army Hammer <laughs> violently raped me for over four hours in Los Angeles, <laughs> during which he repeatedly slapped my head against a wall, bruising my face. <laughs> he also committed other acts of violence against me, to which I did not consent. <laughs> for example, he beat my feet with a crop, so they would hurt whatever step I took for the next week. During those four hours, I tried to get away, but he wouldn't let me. <laughs> I thought that he was going to kill me. He then left with no concern for my well-being. I was completely in shock, and I couldn't believe this. What I loved did that to me. 
I tried so hard to justify his actions, even to the point of responding to him in a way that did not reflect my true feelings. During and since this attack, I have lived in fear of him, and for a long time, I tried to dismiss his actions towards me as a twisted form of love. Now that he no longer has any power over me, I have come to understand that the immense mental hold he held over me was incredibly damaging on many levels. His abuse traumatized me to the point where for months I was unable to stop crying. I couldn't sleep or I'd have night terrors. I was constantly emotionally distressed and I lost interest in living. I couldn't comprehend and overcome what he had done to me. Over the years since the assault, on many occasions the invasive flashbacks were so exc excruciating that they made me feel there was no way out but to take my own life. I just wanted the pain to stop. <laughs> my hope in speaking out about the abuse I endured at the hands of Army Hammer is that he will be held accountable. I feel immense guilt for not speaking out sooner because I feel that I might have been able to save others from becoming victims. By speaking out today, I hope to prevent others from falling victim to him in the future. I want other survivors of sexual assault around the world to feel empowered and know that they are heard, believed, understood, and loved. Thank you. Okay. Okay, but then, so that's her initial story. Okay, this is the Medium article. We'll go over in a second. But before we do, Reddit is reaming this woman. Um, this woman messaged Effie and said, Hey, Effie, I've changed my stance on your case with Army H. My sincerest apologies for not believing you, for judging you, and casting you out as a liar and comparing you to Amber Heard. Your case is quite different from hers. I pray you're able to heal from all you have suffered, and I wish you nothing but happiness and peace of mind, soul, and body, and spirit. And then she replied, absolutely not. I hope it happens to you and everyone who treated me that way. I especially hope it happens to Blair's daughter and Army's children. Only then will you understand how evil you are. And then my Discord found a screenshot from her allegedly saying, Robert Downey Jr., I pray that another man does to your daughter what Army did to me. And then apparently from one user named Shade or Shada says, being found not guilty is an evading charges unpacked unpack why you're fine with innocent people being jailed. And then she replied, Effie did. Instead, of, instead, how about you unpack why you, as a woman, think a man charged with three counts of rape is innocent? Then someone replied, named Jade, who said, it seems like Elfie, uh, Effie needs help understanding innocent until proven guilty. Then Effie wrote, uh, wrote back, no, that's something for you to explain to your daughter when it happens to her, hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay, so hold on. Let's do this. Let's see... Okay, let's see. So there is an Instagram with her name, but it's empty and there's nothing going on on it. So there's that. And then let's see. She might have an ex, but I don't think so. Let me see if she has an ex account. Um... So I'm not really sure. House of Receipts says in his candid interview with Piers Morgan, Army Hammer stated that his false accuser, Effie, House of Effie, has for the last year publicly wished for his nine-year-old daughter, Harper, um, who she's referred to as that cursed little biatch, okay, to be uh, basically abused. And then these are some of the screenshots. Ooh. 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 These are nasty. Okay, hold on. Please hold, please hold, please hold. I wholeheartedly hope Harper gets brutally raped and repeatedly. I don't know what this word is. Help me. Uncon unconscious, just like I was by army. My rapist daughter fully deserves to have my experiences. I will support any men Harper ever accuses of rape, just like you support my rapist. Got it. Army, I want your daughter to get R-worded so brutally she'll never be able to sleep and she'll see word her tiny little... Ri okay, I can't read this. This is gross. I can't... Is this real? I can't read this. Okay. 
this is not okay. And she will see word her tiny little wrists and you'll be forced to carry her lifeless little body to ER. You deserve this and most implants. She deserves it. Remember, Harper wants it. Harper planned all of the details out and all of the men Harper will accuse of breaking into her house and gang. Arting her will will say so. Enjoy kissy face. Though you have a fetish for drinking girls' blood, so maybe you'll find her, you'll just do that instead. So maybe when you find her, you'll do that instead. Though Army's feelings were the grape victim saying grape is bad is bad as spewing, which I am certain Harper's future grapist will say, should Har Harper ever tell anyone she got graped? Though I'm pretty sure that cursed little... I feel bad calling a little kid a bitch. Won't get the chance to spew. Army, do you ever think about what if other men did to Ford anything you did to me? I don't mention, oh, then this Queen B person said sodomy for an object. Oh no, fuck, quite on set. And then Effie said, I don't mention about him because I know he would really enjoy it. Like how he, you enjoyed your relationship with your pastor so much that you kept going to his house at night year after year. That's what you're claiming now. Ew. So this post is up. I'm not sure. I mean, how do we tell what's legit and what's not? Oh, I got to be careful. Hold on. X allows 18 plus posts. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, it's like a BDSM photo. I don't want to show it because I don't want to get in trouble. And so it's like a BDSM photo of her. Um, hold on. And then she says, when I was endlessly ranting to someone about my rib fantasies and joking, he should become a doctor to take my lowest ribs and make a show called Curbed Your Cannibalism. And he ended up going around creeping out Random vanilla girls asking if he can have their ribs removed. Okay. And then we're happy to provide context for these texts. Okay, so then these people want to provide context. I'm not sure who runs this account, though. Who runs this account? Let's look at it. House of Receipts joined April 2022nd. Um, I'm not sure how legit this account is, which is a part of the problem. So it says, like, we wish Robert Downey Jr. success in his new role. This account could be run by Army Hammer. Like, I don't know who's running it. But she said, I pray that another man does your daughter like Army did me to Robert Downey Jr. And then it was like these other, I've read these already. Okay, trolls are mad about my last story. So I'd like to clarify that I do hope Blair, if Blair has any daughters, another man does to them what the men Blair has defended have done. Hope this helps clear up any confusion. Okay, then I already read this one. Okay. Um, and then this one, House of Elf, Effie, do you have a experience? This is an ask me anything. Do you have an experience of being submissive before a army or is it your first BDSM relationship? She says, yes, I've been in an abusive DS relationships before and I was in one with when I met him. And then this ask me anything says, have you always been a dom? She said, yes, I've always had subby boys since high school. Okay, you can't be, you shouldn't be doing BDSM in high school. Cracked my parents up, took them years to believe I was a sub to someone. This is obviously just like a super toxic person. Okay, oops, hold on, I don't want any pictures showing. Um. Okay, so there's a picture of her kind of naked on a piano. He sent this to another girl, chats, not very often, but I was fucking one of the other SNCTM girls, what's that mean? For a while and I'd have to, I'd go with her when I could. For once, I hope you lied because you actually fucked my friends and went to the parties behind my back and I swear I'm gonna scorch the earth you walk on. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> this is a throwaway account and due to the restrictions of protecting my own identity, I'm unable to post anything in full detail because there's lots of people that have eyes on this Reddit page, House of Effie Receipts. EF is known is a known celebrity chaser and the army dude is just one of the unlucky ones that were dumb enough to get involved with her. People in LA, kink communities know about her and know she's trouble. This isn't her first time she's accused somebody of grape, but no case got opened with those. F got fired from both of the clubs she worked at for harassing some of the cl customers and threatening to reveal info about them that goes against club pol uh, both clubs she works at policy. She never made it as a model or actress because of the stuff she's done to the other clubs. She got blacklisted. Not sure where she, not sure why she decided only now that what happened with Army is great because she used to brag about fucking him all the time. And it was just super weird seeing that one photo she took with him because I was there with her. But yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, also physically knew they didn't meet on Facebook either. Okay. It's, you know, it's difficult because in our communities, there 
there is a lot to be said about how we protect everybody. And a lot of it is like reputation. And she doesn't, you know, if she doesn't have a good one, says uh, blank, also known as blank, was an acquaintance of mine who two, this is from Effie. Okay, so it was an army. So this is from Effie. It says blank, also known as blank, was an acquaintance of mine who two years into our friendship and quotations revealed to me that she was a adult worker. I told her she still seemed cool and I didn't initially mind. She was my first adult worker friend and told uh, until long story short, I felt she had an incredibly manipulative transactional mentality, which is what led me to being, to, which led me to kind of being anti-adult work. But really it was because of my horrible experiences with her and I have nothing against SWs. We did that photo shoot to please army. She knew this and she was 100% new. I never wanted those photos anywhere else, but I had posted a couple of them on my IG. She did not ever have my permission to sell my naked fucking pictures on her H-O-O-K-E-R site and I will be pursuing immediate legal action against her and reporting her to the authorities for having a sham marriage to get a green card, which they already are investigating for her anyways. So is Effie saying this about one of the girls? So, okay, let's go. Oh, hold on. Let me just make sure I'm not going to F up my thing here. Okay. So, oh, hello. Okay. <sighs> this is House of Receipts. I don't know who runs this account. As the reality uh, that some Me Too cancellations like that of Army Hammer were unjustly carried out continues to be discussed, we are reminded of why it's important to consider all the evidence and facts um, in a story as Effie's, I don't know how to say her name, aka House of Elfie, Effie and ha Armor Hammer's false accuser continues to defame Arm Hammer publicly. As we have mentioned before, there are very thorough two and a half year long investigations by the LAPD and the LADA chose not to press charges against Hammer because of the overwhelming evidence supports Hammer, not her, not Effie. Effie, a young adult woman working at SNCTM, a Los Angeles. Wait. Hold on. Wait. Okay, it's a club. Oh. Interesting. Hold on, look. Did you guys see? It's a club, a private members club. This club exists to serve the social and entertainment needs of our members and guests by maintaining the highest standards of excellence in the endeavors. It's just rich people LARPing. By providing creative and culturally rich programs and by providing safe and comfortable environments for personal exploration. Okay. So yeah, like remember that BDSM is like adult LARPing and we spend a lot of money doing it, but you know, uh, interesting. So like etiquette. Okay. Yeah. See, oh, I don't want to get in trouble here. The golden rule is consensuality. We always ask before we touch anyone who violates this will be removed by security. Okay. So it's like a high end BDSM club, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They usually do a protocol, but if she was fired for this club and she accused other people of doing stuff she's you know what I mean like this is exactly the kind of stuff that is you run into sometimes you know like my stalker or ugh, the stalker they didn't just accuse one person they accused like three people uh four if you count in the community and then outside of the community it was like 12 people because they were just looking for marks they were a stalker right they're just looking for marks to hit they don't care who it is they don't care how much they have to lie so if she's doing that, that's pretty bad. The question is, we weren't there, we don't know. But it might actually sound like she's lying, bros. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you guys think... Um, do you... I mean, is this an... You know what I... Is this just like a, a case of this guy cheated, which was bad. Don't do that. And on top of it, he got engaged, he got involved with somebody who's just so fucked up, you know, and then this is happening. So is, you know, if she has a pattern and people know her and she has a reputation and she's been kicked out of events, then I would say that she's definitely not a good person and not that army's innocent. It's not that it proves that he's innocent, but it definitely makes her story less plausible right like it makes her story sound worse so i'm not saying that army hammer didn't do anything i'm saying that given her reputation in the communities then why would we believe this person right um 
And then if Gloria um, Aldred dropped her as a client because they couldn't find evidence, trust me, Gloria would have shot for that money, girl. I mean, she's pretty and everything. Where is she? She's like pretty and everything. My boundaries. But it's not enough. Like her being pretty might win her over, but like, is she a victim? I'm not trying to, I'm certainly not trying to say she's not, right? Okay, now let's do this. Hold on. Um, well, that's not how you spell that word. Uh, okay, so, oh, the House of Hammer isn't on YouTube. I thought it was on YouTube for summer. The, the trailer is on YouTube. So, okay, that's kind of a bummer. Hold on. Let's see the trailer. We're not going to watch it then if it's not available. Like the stream. They're probably going to copyright me for this. I am here to talk about what happened in my relationship with Army Hammer. Are you okay to bring up your phone? Yeah. I haven't really digested this one. I have a fan. Okay. Let's see about having someone prove their love and devotion and tying them up in a public place at night and making their body free use and seeing if they will f strangers for me. My pet okay, don't make that sound like that's a bad thing. Okay, first of all, you can't make that sound like that's a bad thing. You never been in an orgy before? Okay, no. I just, first and foremost, that's not, first of all, sounds like a nice weekend. Don't, don't be sex negative, okay? That was going to involve showing up at your place and completely tying you up and incapacitating you and then being able to do whatever I wanted to do. People with that, what's that called? I don't like it. They will f strangers for me. My bet was going to involve showing up at your place and completely tying you up and incapacitating you and then being able to do whatever I wanted to every single hole in your body. Okay, don't. Don't flirt, okay? This is like basic flirty text messages for so many people. So I was done with you. In the beginning- Yeah, vocal fry. I don't like the vocal fry. It like annoys me. I felt like this was all perfect. This was amazing. He would say things, God, you're so perfect. How could you be this beautiful, this smart, so funny? It's like you were made for me. But then things changed. He pushes your boundaries a little bit at a time. You're his, completely. These are messages that are being sent literally within seconds of each other. I mean, he said, I'm 100% a cannibal. I'm freaking out. It was all he wanted to ever talk about. Then you get a note that says, I'm gonna bite the f out of you. And he was just like acted mad. The ropes were around your neck, your wrists, your ankles. I'm so sorry. I can't take It's too sex negative. I can't handle it. It's too biased. You're acting like what goes. This is like literally so I feel like 15 year olds. When I was 15, I was reading books about fantasies like this. You're acting like I can't. Are you guys prudes? Like what's happening? Like it's just it's just too sex negative. It feels so stupid. It feels like I'm watching a bunch of conservatives be like, oh, my God, people are having sex. God forbid you see what happens at anime conventions. Like, what are we talking about here? And you're like completely immobilized. And I'm just closing my eyes until it ended. Okay, well, that's bad. Don't do that. Like, what, what's happening? If you don't like the fantasies, girls, you don't have to do them. But also, he probably just didn't know how to tie rope well either. You should probably take a class on that. Once Courtney came forward, other women started coming forward. How did Army Hammer go from Hollywood Golden Boy to an alleged abuser? When all this came out about Army, I was not shocked. You just don't wake up and become this dark controller. Oh my God, he's vaping! Oh my God, he's vaping! Oh my God, he's vaping! 
I'm so afraid for my life. He's vaping. I'm sorry. Don't fuck with me. This is so stupid. Be serious, people. Was somebody graped or not? Be serious. The man is vaping. Oh my God. I hate him. How dare you? I don't even like Army Hammer. But he's vaping in this. Oh, I hate people. I just really hate people. Abuser. This behavior is hey, hey, deep hey, rooted. Hey, hey. On the outside, we were a perfect family, but magnify succession. Keep in mind, this is the aunt that is never, like, he doesn't have a relationship with her. They're all dysfunctional. The aunt that the voice you are hearing right now is his aunt, who he has never been in a lone room, alone in a room with. He never knew this woman. She knows nothing about him. And a million times. And it was my family. If you believe about making deals with the devil, the hammers are top of the totem pole. Every generation in my family has been involved in dark misdeeds. And it's so her too? Is she also a villain? Because if the men are the villain, the women are villains. Don't, there is no such thing as a perfect victim. And there's no such thing as a perfect predator. Well, there is kind of, but you know what I mean. If Army's a victim and a predator, what is she? Just because she's a woman doesn't mean she's not exempt from this family bloodline. She's claiming to be a part of it. So what did you do? Is that what you're saying? It just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah, exactly. Sensationalism really ruins the seriousness of this. It literally makes me not take it seriously. Like this doesn't, this makes me feel like, okay, well now you're not serious. Like obviously this isn't real. I know my grandfather had a dark side, but I saw my father's dark side firsthand. And I've seen my brother's dark side. It was like a monster unleashed. Now it's army hammer. It's just generation to generation. I've let the hammers control me my whole life. It's time to stop. I refuse to be silenced. My name is Casey Hammer, and I'm about to reveal the dark, twisted secrets of the Hammer family. Wow. Cheesy as fuck, bro. God, that was lame. Who edited that? Fire them. Fire whoever made that. This is so silly. Jesus, be serious, bro. Okay, be fucking serious. Here's the Medium article that is still posted on the internet, okay? My traumatizing experience with my greatest army hammer. Quote, I know what I am doing. I'm, wait, I know what I am doing the whole time I am doing it. End quote. Army wrote to me in the summer of 2017 after what he did to me on April 24th, 2017. Quote, I still have some pent up aggression to take out on your body. End quote. In summer 20. 17, I wrote to him that I couldn't comprehend how he could be so cruel that he severely damaged and crushed me. I called him a manipulative psychopath who graped and beat me. Over time, I had grown more and more scared of him. I explained I felt disassociated, overwhelmed with shame and self-blame, frequently nauseous, and had begun self-harming since he assaulted me. I wrote, I couldn't see him anymore. Quote, I didn't make, didn't, did I make a terrible, mis did I make terrible mistakes? Yes but it doesn't invalidate the depth and beauty of what we experienced, Ar Army wrote. My initial reaction was heartbreak. Do you remember how many nights we stayed up talking? We stayed up, or we stayed up all night talking. How much we shared with each other. It all meant something, and it was all beautiful, and no matter how poorly I handled the situation, very poorly, I don't think it should be, I don't think it should diminish that. You deserved way better. All signs here point to my fault, and I know I said before I am sorry. So, so sorry. He pulled into a night or he pulled me into a tight embrace and expressed he was worried I was going to commit unaliving because of his abuse. I broke up with him again and we sat on the couch where Army cried as he held me tightly like a baby for a long time. I kept asking him, I kept asking again that we cease communication, but he repeatedly pleaded we shouldn't stop. He called me when I was going through security at the airport leaving LA for good. He wouldn't let me go. By the time I landed, he had left me Many missed calls and barrages of long messages across multi-messaging platforms. In 2019, Army reached out to apologize to me. He said, I want to apologize and make amends. I allowed myself to cause so much pain. I have been in years of intensive therapy and it changed my life. 
Army claimed in 2019, the year before he met Courtney, who spoke out about her traumatic experiences with Army and said she checked into trauma rehab center because of his abuse, and Paige, who accused him of cutting her with a knife and branding her in 2020, he proceeded to describe himself as a wolf in sheep's clothing. My sadism has blossomed, Army boasted. I like newbies because I can totally train them. If I find a vanilla girl, I will make... Ugh. I will make it my job to find the kink in her and pull it out. Ugh. I want to find her limits and then push and expose her to more than she thought she could handle. Sounds like a cheater. Cheater is always looking for the thrill. He told me more about one of the women he was involved with. We met working together, she, he said. She was a vanilla until I turned her out. We got into blood play. What? Me drinking her blood army, clarified. Okay, first of all, have you ever seen edgy vampires on YouTube who drink each other's blood? It's a thing. What did Army find appealing about drinking blood? Ask the vampires. Blood is just so primal and pure, he said. It's the purest form of someone's life force. Oh, God. And if you want to eat someone alive, it's the closest you can get. <laughs> okay, if Army was... Okay, I'm going to say this out loud, and only my deep, deeply nerdy communities will understand this. If Army was uglier and more goth, he would just be another vampire kid. I said what I said. I said what I said. Okay. Army explained and proceeded to describe his blood drinking rituals. At the time, I didn't know Army was filled, or, or Army had filmed blood soaked videos with his friend in 2013. Pull back, I requested. You are the one with the concerns and fears, Army wrote. Army seemed to appreciate his fans. I'm just so fucking done with this ship or stand or whatever culture. It's so toxic and bizarre. I'm not doing the sequel to Call Me By Your Name simply to get away from the blood of the Vipers. To be fair, y'all went crazy with that. I've thought about you so goddamn much over the last few years. We've had a very intense bond. I check your Instagram all the time. Army started love bombing. Do we have any like, do we have any like facts about this? Like I'm confused. Like, yeah, this format is confusing. I don't understand where these things are from. Where is the proof that any of these things happened? Who checked this medium article if it's written by her? I'm just confused. <sighs> okay, so Army started love bombing. He said, it set the standard high for what I'm looking for. You are the goddamn standard I hold women to. You set the bar too high. You are like Michael Phelps of fucking the golden standard. Why do I feel like she wrote this? Everyone is held to it. Everyone falls short. Everyone else just doesn't have what you have. Amateurs. You are the Michael Phelps of sex. Okay, relax. I masturbate to you regularly and I have for a few years. I could hear your voice. I'm so confused about this timeline, yo. Is anyone else confused about this timeline? I thought they were having an affair for 10 months and now it's been years. I hear it all day in my head. Have you go out and I keep fucking you. You are mine and I'm yours. No matter what happens and we've tested that to the extremes. And if I'm, I'm not, I might die as well with you. Okay, relax. I eventually told him off. You are right, Army admitted. It, oh, I like how she keeps out her replies. What the fuck? You are right, Army admitted. It wasn't respectful. I'm just happy to be talking to you. I got carried away and hoped it wasn't triggering. I want to drink your drool. Blech. I want to drink your drool. I want to rub cum into cuts. <laughs> sir, this is YouTube, sir. I want to rub semen <laughs> into cuts and then lick it off and and like lick the blank and blood. Bet you didn't see that coming. I'll choke you to death. And as you die, I'll be hold. Well, if you kill her, you can't keep drinking her blood because it will run out. You can't just kill her because who will you have sex with? I'll choke you to death. And as you die, you will be holding a rope to a contraption that will cut my throat so we die so as we die we feel the warmth of my blood covering us okay but please know that's not why i reached out the beast took over <laughs> who wrote who wrote this no <laughs> it's not funny it's not funny it's very serious oh god um okay well i don't know what's happening here Okay. He invited me to New York. I declined and admitted I felt bad for having replied to him at all. He asked me to do something humiliating. I refused. I didn't ask. You'll do exactly as I tell you, Army wrote. I re repeatedly refused. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Next time I want you to apologize, he replied. He invited me to join him on a trip to Saudi Arabia. I don't know about that. He was on with his friend from the blood soaked video. You know, I hear a lot about camels. Anyways, not important. We can do whatever we want. Hopefully that includes torture because I'd love that army wrote. I seriously feel like he couldn't have written this. I declined. I kept sending voice notes as he does and pressuring me. Hold on. Is there, is this a link to some post notes or some notes? Hold on, hold on, hold on. How do I play this? 
Then again, doctors don't even know what the is going on. No one knows what the this thing is about. <clears throat> so I'll just have a show. Whatever. I'm drunk. How you doing? Oh, you know, just another day in paradise. Except for like, you know. Okay. It's not paradise. Hello? Like, Hello? Website. I think it's more like the world's falling apart. Yeah. Okay. They're talking about cigarettes and being healthy and how smoking's bad for you. Eight clients. I'm so hungover. I'm I I think I'm gonna be in bed for a while. Okay, hold on. Oh my god. Oh, this website's pissing me off. Go away. Oh my god. I want to read the tea. Why is this happening? Somebody tell my boomer ass, what is this? How does this go? Go away. Go away. So annoying. Um, pleasure choking someone to the point where they are about to pass out. Okay. I'm a little confused. I want to hear about each orgasm. I want you to tell me how it felt like. Okay. Why are we listening to this man sexting? How strong each was. How long it lasted. Those are mine. Don't forget. So you have to tell me everything. Okay. Yeah. It's just like cringy sexting stuff. Like, tell me when you come, baby. Tell me when you come. Yeah. 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 Okay. We get it. He's drunk and he's lonely. Cool, girl. Okay. This is what, guys, I'm so tired. I'm so tired about accusations. I'm so tired about everybody accusing everybody of being a fucking everything. Just get some fucking evidence. And then, like, and I know evidence is hard, but Jesus, this is, this feels very unlikely. I'm sorry. It just feels very unlikely. It just feels very unlikely, you know, but okay. Um... Okay, he invited me to Saudi Arabia. We can do whatever we want. Hopefully that includes torture. Okay, I declined. He kept sending me voice notes, pressuring me. This is this is the initial girl for those asking. This is Effie. This is the girl who said he slammed her head into the wall. This is Effie. This is the main girl who got kicked out of, allegedly, according to Reddit, other uh, clubs around LA and nobody wanted to work with her, allegedly, because she kept accusing multiple people of things. Okay. Okay. Whew, okay. Uh, I declined. He kept pressuring me. I declined. He demanded a video chat. I refused. No, you are video chatting. It wasn't a question. Army declared. I refused again. I don't care. Are you saying no? Are you saying no with a period? I will talk to you again when I feel like it, but I don't know when that will be. You brought this on yourself. Army replied. I called him cruel. He sounds crazy. Everybody sounds crazy. I hate everybody. I am being cruel. You will learn to be my little slave no matter how tired you are. All I want wanted to do was finish looking at you. Now, are you going, when I say finish, he's saying C-U-M for the record. Now you are going to make me punish you, Army says. That was seriously fucked up, I responded. I was just trying to punish you. He kept a asking and I kept refusing. He kept pressuring to do degrading acts. You can drink water after, Army wrote, in case I vomited when he wanted me to do, when he wanted me to do. He invited me to Canada and asked me to burn myself for him. I cannot wait, Army said, to see if you would die for me. And when you die, I will kill you. When you die, I will kill you. Mm, I don't think that's how that works. That's the only way you can die. Do you understand? Choking you to death while looking into your eyes. One day it will be you dying safely in my hands, my mouth on yours, tasting your last breath. <laughs> This, okay, can I say something? If you are a healthy person, you report this to the cops, right? If you think it's real. If you're a toxic person, you think this is just sexting. This is a toxic relationship. But does he actually want to kill her? Does he actually want to murder her? Does he actually want to do these things? I don't think so. And that's the problem, right? We must know, guys, a healthy person sees this and goes, um, call cops Unless they're in the relationship and they think it's all fantasy, because it is. If it's all fantasy, it's just cringy, bro. It's just cringy. But if it's really a threat, why wouldn't you call the police? Why wouldn't you do, like, or why wouldn't you tell people in your life, like, why would you keep going with it? Why would you even tolerate him talking to you? 
because you're like, there's gotta be so, there's so many things here missing from the story. I guess you could be a victim that might think it's a fantasy and it is real life, which would also be scary. Like that would also be scary. But that's the problem is like, is this sexy talk? Because this is sexy talk for a lot of people. And I know a lot of sex prudes out there will be like, what? It's cringy. But for a lot of fucking people, this is just their sex talk. Okay? Don't even get me started. Again, I don't like to bring up receipts here, but I did see on Twitter, somebody was leaking somebody's sexting messages and I'm never going to kink shame, but I know a lot of people would take that out of context and say horrible things about that person. And I'm not going to do that. So I'm not going to put that in the water, but let me just tell you, I'm not a sex prude. So when I see these things, I'm just like, okay, well, as long as it's a fantasy, again, if you get to fantasize about your God saving Trump and not the children in Gaza, I guess Har Army Hammer can fantasize about choking a girl out that he never intends to kill. Who knows? Okay, let me see. It's not great. I would not date this person for the record. If this is a man in your life, block him and never answer a phone call from him again. Do you hear me? This is a toxic man. Is he actually going to kill you? I don't know. Don't risk it. 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 Okay? Don't risk it. That's what I'm saying. We're playing a game of risk. Do not risk it. Okay, um, okay. He said, uh, if there's another country or even in the Caribbean, I will fly you out and meet you. I told army I'm severely traumatized by him and I'm afraid of him. Let me see that text message, girl. He said, I don't know where this is coming or this came from other than PTSD, which I do take responsibility for. Well, how do you know that? Did you guys go to a therapist? Did you get diagnosed with PTSD? What? You know what I mean? Like, this just feels like a teenager Twilight fantasy to me. Literally, 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 literally. Okay. Um, did like, I don't like this talk. Some people say this, like, oh, I got PTSD from this. Like, it, were you diagnosed? Are you sure? Like, that's a pretty big accusation. I mean, it's possible. Did she go to therapy? Cause you have to get diagnosed. Like, did you, there's a lot here. It was a time for army to leave Saudi Arabia and fly home to his children. Almost started crying. May have something to do with not wanting to go home, Army wrote. I recommend self-care. I recommended self-care. So that's so I love how she leaves out all the proof of her messages, but none of, do you get what I'm saying? And by the way, these aren't screenshots. I'm just reading a text. She could have, the, all of this could be fake. You know, please fix my soul, Army begged. I need you to help me. I want to eat you alive. I want to bite fucking pieces off you. I need to devour you. That's my skin. I would eat it if I was there. I would swallow it. I chase you down and pounce on you so... So fast, if you tried to walk away, you'll need something strong to hold me back from you. I'm feeling very possessive. Look, okay, I think we've all been 15. This might have worked then, okay? But you need to slow down, sir. My heart wrenched with trauma bond, and I said I felt as if he was holding it. <clears throat> Army said that just made me so hard, so hard. Thinking of... <laughs> I'm sorry. Thinking is very serious. Thinking of holding your heart in my hand and controlling when it beats. I'm 100% a cannibal. I've cut the heart out of a living animal before and eat it, eaten it while it's still warm. I shot it, ran up, pulled out a knife, and cut the heart out and ate it. Raw, still warm. I doubt it. You look like a pussy, bro. <laughs> you look like a pussy. There's no way he did this. The feeling of the muscular fiber, the taste of the iron in the blood. I couldn't stop. I smeared the blood on my face. No way. No way. I'd eat your heart too if I wasn't stuck without you after. Army wrote, oh, so now you want to kill her. Now you don't want to kill her. Make a decision. Ain't no way this pretty boy killed no animal with his bare hands and, and ate its heart, bro. You too pussy for it. 1,000%, bro. You would vomit, bro. Ain't no fucking way this happened, bro. I wanted to find excuses for him and wondered whether his disturbing behavior was due to his drug use. Okay, relax. It's too easy to just pass it off as drugs and feel dismissive. Don't blame the drugs. It's much more complicated than that. Army wrote, I'd give you the tiniest cut and fall asleep sucking on it. The taste of you, the taste of your irons and minerals. <laughs> The taste of your irons and minerals. Can you send me a voice note back? I miss your voice so much. Fuck. Nah, this is too funny. I'm so sorry. I'm really, I was so, I was so deep in. I'm so sorry. It's too funny, bro. This is so funny, okay? 
Definitely Primal Play. Yo, this Primal Play, BDSM, like, he probably went on Fat Life, bro. I can imagine Army's like, Fat Life. He's like, ooh, Army definitely read some fucking, I don't even know, bro. I fucking, ugh, okay. Okay, fine. Ugh. See, this is what I'm saying. I feel like not the irons and minerals, not the irons and minerals. Look, I almost want to host a class to stupid men who want to be kinky with women, but don't know how to and how to sniff out the bad women. And honestly, look, it's really hard because you never know, but you have to be very diligent. I mean, in order to be extra safe, you have to cut these people out. Foom, like right away, the moment anything suspicious shows up, cut them out. And that's very hard because that's a lot of people. Okay, this crazy though. I dare you to read this with a straight face. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I refused and he protested. I asked if maybe he'd watched Game of Thrones too much. I'd rather grape you than watch two actors I know badly act on it, Army said. I'm convinced nothing in the world compares. I felt like a god as a result. I feel the power. Most can't imagine. I need to grape you again. Remember when you were on the floor and I walked away and grabbed the knife? You were crying on the floor and I left you there in a pile of tears, grabbed a knife and held it to your throat and graped you. You were screaming and crying so much, graping you on your floor with a knife against you. Everything else seemed boring. You see how he repeats? Look, not to be an English teacher, but you're repeating the same line multiple times, which feels like bad English. What's happening here? He did that earlier as well. And again, not to be a grammar Nazi, but he did that earlier where like he repeated the same thing twice. And it just feels like you're taking me out of the fantasy. Like I'm in it, but then you take me out with your grammatical errors. So might want to work on that. Might want to submit this to an editor. Okay, let's see. Um, and by the way, I'm being very sarcastic because I just don't think this is real. I'm going to be so real with you. I don't think this is real, right? Like I don't, I think this, these could be real. I'm not seeing any proof of a text message. It, I, I'm being very obviously facetious because I just, this sounds like every edgy Redditor fantasy story. Like I'm going to, you know what I mean? I just don't, I don't know about this. So this is Effie. I think. Effie might be a, uh, a liar, maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. So I'm just being very sarcastic because I just can't tell what's happening here. Okay. Also, I do feel like a lot of vanilla women might be traumatized by BDSM. Like truly vanilla women, which is kind of interesting because I think they wouldn't know what to do with it. If I'm going to be real, like truly vanilla, like just not interested, like people who need the lights off and they only do missionary. You know what I mean? I mean, there are women out here who won't do anal. You think they're those same women who won't do anal are going to be open to rope play or bondage or knife play? You know what I mean? I feel like we have to be very careful about who we're asking to do consensual stuff with because they might not know what they're consenting to. Not Effie, but maybe the other women involved, right? What if the other women involved just genuinely didn't even understand what they were consenting to? And then that's the that's the, that's why the responsibility has to fall on the person who knows more, but what if Army just also doesn't know more? Cause he's claiming Effie introduced him into it, which also could be true. I mean, why would we assume Army knew BDSM before Effie, right? I just, I just think like there, this was a recipe for something crazy. Okay. Uh, okay, let me see. Da, 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 da. Okay, you were screaming and crying so much graping you with the on the floor with the knife against you everything else seemed boring you were crying and screaming me standing over you see why does he repeat screaming and screaming you were screaming and crying so much you were screaming like why do you repeat this it makes no sense i felt like a god you were a helpless little kitten and a wolf slipped in and ate you that's very normal bullshit like uh, i mean you know he's a wolf and i'm a lamb and he's gonna eat me that's like very common dark fantasy uh text that's why i'm like oh i've read this fantasy story before not the kitten's fault, blame the wolf. Okay, you know, she goes, I called him a monster. Okay, but like, are you just adding to his kink? That's what I'm saying. Like, are you communicating? Are you guys like really communicating? Or does he think you're playing into the fantasy? I called him a monster, which we don't have proof of. She's not even adding in her own verbatim quote. I feel, I'm a full-blown monster. I'm the devil and I love it, Army proclaimed. Yeah, every edgy boy thinks they're the devil. There's a darkness inside of me and I'm the devil. 
I told him I got severely triggered and had nightmares. He invited me to Spain and Italy and asked me to call. I refused. He announced he was flying over my country on a plane. When I told him I was crying and tried to explain to him how I adversely, how he, how adversely he affected me, Army got very angry at me. He claimed I was the bad guy for telling on him and threatened to punish me. For it fucking severely, I told him he made me cry that, that I felt unaliving. I will not abuse you, I promise. He replied and brought up a sentimental memory when he cooked vegetarian for me. Um, okay. Um, I don't know. Chat says there's absolutely disturbing aspects to what he's saying coming from someone in a DS relationship. The focus on the screaming and the grape because this is role play or not. I th like, here's the, here's the problem. Okay, guys. Okay. A consent violation can be an old lady touching your hair at a supermarket. And it can be a man pinning you to the ground and graping you. They are both consent violations. Cheating on your wife is a consent violation, okay? Feeding somebody you know is vegan, meat is a violation, is a consent violation, okay? Let's say I have a friend who's vegan and I send them pictures of slaughtered animals. Do you think that's fucked up? I think that's kind of fucked up, right? Why would you send your friend who's vegan pictures of dead animals? Unless you're fucked up, right? You wouldn't do that. Would I, do I send my mom Jesus memes? No, it's offensive. You don't send things to people that are offensive unless you're deeply cruel or you think it's okay. So then you have to ask yourself, is Army Hammer being deeply cruel or is he thinking it's okay? And then if it is, if it's, it's him being thinking it's okay, then why does he think it's okay? Is it because he's deeply cruel and he's going to do it whether she likes it or not? Or is he thinking she's into it and she keeps replying to me and this is the love and back? This is why I don't like toxic relationships because so much of toxicity is predicated on the back and forth, right? This is why when people ask me like, oh, now that you're in a healthy relationship, are you worried your relationship is boring? Do you want this type of relationship? Because that's basically what you're saying in so many ways. Healthy relationships are not boring. They just don't have abuse. And it's when people are so toxic, they think toxicity and abuse is passion that you end up in these types of situations because healthy people don't have these relationships. Healthy people can have these messages back and forth in a consensual, negotiated, structured manner, right? But this particular way of communicating, this back and forth, her being confused, all of this happening, something got fucked up. Something got truly fucked up okay and the question is what was it what got fucked up okay how did the communication get so bad that this happened okay now oh my god i'm sweating it's so hot in this room <clears throat> i will not abuse you i promise he replied and brought up a sentimental memory of when he cooked vegetarian for me okay i communicated to army that he traumatized me severely and i needed to leave him, but found it very difficult because of the trauma bond. Army had other ideas. Would you come and be my property till you die? If I wanted to cut off one of your toes and keep it with me in my pocket. So I always had a piece of you as a piece of you in my possession. Okay. First of all, the toe would rot and smell. So you got to really think about how to do that. And also, do you guys know there's a, a jewelry shop that will now convert your loved one's ashes into jewelry so you can keep them with you forever? I saw it on Shark Tank. Is that weird? Is that cannibalism? See, what's the difference from turning your loved one's ashes into jewelry you wear, which appeared on Shark Tank, and keeping a vial of people's blood around your neck? Because honestly, bro, both are weird. Both are weird. But okay, you do you. But also, like, who cares? Who's it hurting? Okay. Um, I'm deadly serious. Merry Christmas, kitten. I tried to leave him. Don't. I need you through this. Army pleaded. Just be supportive. It's been really hard for me. What's he going through? His drinking? He invited me to France and asked for photos. I want to see your mouth. I miss it so much. My son just fell asleep on my chest, but I can't stop thinking about your mouth. How are you even real? Okay, first of all, why are you mixing in your son with the sex message? But okay, fine. I asked him to meditate and told him about a headboard meditation device, which detects your brain waves. What? What is she talking about? Your brain waves? Show me. I want to see everything. I want to see your brain, your blood, your organs, every part of you. 
why, she said, or at least in the article, I would definitely bite it, bite it a hundred percent or try to fuck it. Probably both. If I fucked you in, if I fucked you in a vegetative state, I'd keep you, feed you, wash you, army replied. All right, bro. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just screamed into my mic. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I looked at chat and then I read hand on PP text. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hand on PP. -pee. <laughs> Oh fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hand on pee pee to I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh man. Oh fuck. <laughs> oh. You guys are fucking killing me. I'm gonna die. This is why I can't reach hat. Okay, while well, I'm reading. Oh my god. Hand on pee pee. I'm gonna <laughs> Can I put that in? I should make that into merch. Hand with PP pee, -pee dang, sting. Hand with pee, hand on PP. Pee -pee. <laughs> no. Oh god, that hits my funny bones so good. I think it's just the word pee. <laughs> I'm a five, guys. Total five moment. <laughs> pee pee. <laughs> okay, stop. This is very serious. It's very serious. Oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, I'm literally dying. I'm literally dying. Okay. <laughs> stupid. It's so stupid. Why is this so funny to my brain? Oh, my brain thinks it's so funny. Okay. Whew. I, I offered to heal him with spirituality because I thought that was the only thing left that could maybe save him since years of intensive therapy obviously didn't work. What a mother, what a mother Teresa. What a mother Teresa, bro. <laughs> I thought special to help him. Anyways, he said, back to my blood, Army continued. I can't stop thinking about fucking your actual brain. Brand, brand you, shave your head and keep your, this is obviously fake. He can't fuck your brain and still be with you, girl. It's obviously fake. It's not real. It's not like he wants to do these things. Brand you, shave your head and keep your hair with me. Cut a piece off of your skin and make you cook it for me. Okay, gross. When I tell you to slit your wrists and use the blood as lube for anal. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. Drinking it while fucking you. Me rubbing your blood all over. I want to grape you so badly I felt like a god. What does he repeat that? The knife standing over you while you screamed and cried. Watching you try to crawl away. Stalking you with my little... Like my little prey. This is not real, bro. This is silly. He's not actually threatening to do these things, girl. You would go to the... Guys, go to the cops. This is crazy. I don't even like the police, but this is crazy. This is not real, okay? <sighs> it's silly. This is just silly. Okay. I felt nauseous. I told him I was surprised he hadn't broken any of my bones considering the severity of his past violence. Those are my bones, and I want to break one to prove it. I will. Fingers, toes. And if you still need proof, your fucking neck. Army wrote, I objected. He's just saying whatever. He literally is just saying whatever. He's literally not even thinking. That's what I'm saying. This is just some guy masturbating and writing weird things that he probably went on, like, FetLife or on, uh... He probably went on, like, one of the many kink websites and was like, uh, kinky things to say to your girl. And then he was like, oh, I'm going to slit your throat, bitch. And then he's like, I'm coming. Are you coming? Like, it's just it's stupid. You know, it's just like none of this makes sense. He watched some edgy fucking films and made an edgy fucking little fantasy out for himself. But obviously that's the problem is like, I'm sorry. This is also why fantasies are so sacred. OK, if you're going to have these kinds of fantasies with people, you should have them with people that are safe. But also none of these are real. None of this is real. You know, saying things out loud are cringy, but none of it is happening. He's not killing anyone. He's not doing any of these things. And also, I hate to tell you this, like, I don't even know how to say it. It depends on which bubble you're in, but none of this is leaving the texting, right? And she did claim he physically assaulted her. 
But apparently there was like, was there evidence of her bruises? Was there evidence of the trauma? Was there evidence? Apparently she's a known liar in LA, allegedly. I don't know if any of that's true. I'm just saying based off what we're seeing, it's hard for, and then the fact that she wanted violence to occur on a child, like guys, can we just throw this out? She's an imperfect victim. She could be a person who wishes grape on a child and is a grape victim. That is a possibility. But the fact that she wished grape on a child, like I, I'm not even sure what we're talking about here. Like she needs help, bro. And it looks like she needs more help and Army needs help too. But like, I don't care about either of them if I'm going to be absolutely blunt. Both of these people are way too toxic and I want, I would, don't call me. I mean, I feel like I could ask Army interesting questions, but don't call me. Okay. <sighs> I mean, maybe. I mean, no, no. See, oh, see, my curiosity brain wants to interview him. And then my brain's like, why do I even give these people a chance? Oh, they're kind of, it's like a train wreck. It's kind of like a car crash. But see, don't call me because I'm just going to talk about why you're fucked up, but also why it's so human to be fucked up. Anyways, okay. <clears throat> Um, uh, okay. If you tell me what I can't break, I will break them all. I'm going to finish thinking of breaking your bones. I told him I was busy and I had to go. I'm thinking about breaking your ribs. Army replied, cutting you into pieces and fucking the pieces. Well, that's not how it works. What do you need to walk for? You just lay on a pile of the floor and I'll fuck you until I walk past you. Wait, what is this? You know what this sounds like? I've read this book. There's a book. Wait, this is a thing. Gore porn? He's into gore porn, right? Oh, corn. There's this book. Um, why am I blinking on their name? What's that? What's that Southern? What's the, what's the horror author that I used to mention back in the day as being like the most horror gore porn I've read that's published? And they're from the South and they're trans. And their name is... They wrote this porn about cannibalism and eating people. And it was gay. It was about gay men. I swear he's read their writing. Because this sounds so similar where it's like, I read that it was about, a. there was multiple books. There's like multiple books. And I picked it up from a library as one does, of course. The library is just full of all these kinds of books. But it was about a serial killer who would like, grape and assault gay men, hang them up, kill, and then like fry their skin like bacon and kill them. What was their name? Oh my God, I can't believe I'm blinking. I used to know how to reference them all the time. See, this is, if it's not active in my brain. Anyways, the point is, I've read a lot. Like when I say I've read thousands of books, I've just read everything. I would just pick books up and read them and be like, okay. And then I read this and I'm like, the world does not revolve around you and your bubble. The world is crazy. And it's, it's, it's full of everything. It's full of traditional smut, which we love. It's full of like writing. It's a uh, puppy zebrae. Poppy Zebrite. Poppy Zebrite has some of the best novels I've ever read, but also some of the craziest things I've ever read in books. Poppy Zebrite. Yes. Oh my God, Alice, you said it just as I said it. Yes, girl. Poppy Zebrite. Crazy writer. Very interesting. And it's not even smut. It's not like Poppy Zebrite writes romance novels. Poppy Zebrite's writing fiction that has to do with serial killers, but it's smutty, bro. Poppy Zebright is the name of that author. Crazy books I've read. I read that like, what, 10, 12 years ago? I don't even know. Um, but I got it from a library, as one does from their bookstore. Okay, let's keep going. Um, <clears throat> uh, breaking your ribs. You'll just lay on a pile on the floor. Okay, I have to run. My daughter wants me to play with her. All I, all I will be thinking about is graping. Well, that's super fucked up to say. And again, why are you bringing in sex in your kids in the same messages? He later sent me recordings of himself masturbating. I repeatedly told him I was busy, but rejecting Army Hammer's demands had consequences. Like what, bitch? Girl, like what, girl? Oh my God, girl. You'll wait outside as a punishment. Go, no jacket. So hard thinking of you shivering, but not till not going in until I give you permission. Army wrote and sent me another recording of himself masturbating. He didn't appreciate my hesitancy to go outside alone at night with no jacket in the dead winter. What is this? <clears throat> you will send me a voice note while your teeth chatter. You will, Army insisted. I refused again. Then you will stay outside. You cannot go until you send me a picture. No more excuses. Die for me, Army demanded. I stopped responding. Did you freeze to death, Army asked? If so, that turns me on so much. Be serious, girl. 
How are these accusations? Listen to what you just said is an accusation. Did you freeze to death? Well, if you did, how would you text him? If so, that turns me on so much. Obviously, none of this is real. Like, none of this is real. That's what I'm saying. You can't accuse a guy of doing something to you. Like, you can accuse him of being toxic. You can accuse him of being abusive. You can accuse him of a lot of things. But you're, this is very, this is very silly. This is just very silly. He obviously isn't trying to kill you because he expects you to text him back after you've died. <clears throat> I bet the cops just read this and went, dude, come on, like, go, go solve serial killer issues, guys. I finished Don't Fuck With The Cats this morning. The third episode had moments that definitely turned me on. What? Oh, with cats, like the show? Army messaged me in the morning. Have I told you my beach ball theory? Your beach ball is how much you like to fuck, what kind of fucking you like to do, etc. You can hold that beach ball underwater for some reason, but eventually that beach ball will slip and beach balls don't gently rise to the surface. They shoot up in the air. I told Army that I felt unaliving and blocked him for some time. Mm. But due to the trauma bond, I went back and kept trying to heal him with spirituality. What? Pourquoi? What? 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 I kept trying to heal him with spirituality, which needless to say didn't work. I tried to explain to Army how awful he was making me feel. Army replied my email, reply, replied my, by email on February 14th, so Valentine's Day. I can totally see why my actions made you feel this way, and I'm sorry. I take full responsibility. It went from, I want to apologize for how I treated you to stand outside in the cold for me really quickly. Ha, huh? I think the connection between us makes it hard for it not to go to that place right away in the history. What can I do to help you feel better? Is there something you need that I might be able to give you? I confronted him over email five days later on February 19th, 2020. When you reach out, you presented an image of someone who had changed for the better. You said you were now healthy. You were misleading me from the beginning. You brought so much hurt into my life again, and I'm so fucking tired of you manipulating. For some reason, it didn't seem like that was the kind of answer he was expecting. I confronted Army with an email March 20th. Okay, so this is finally her, I guess. You knew it messed me up when you graped me. I told you I wasn't ready. I told you I got self-destructive afterwards by starting to drink. Even after it happened, you realized it wasn't okay. When I finally managed to bring myself to speak and muttered what you had d just done to me, it was... What you had just done to me was too much. You sat down, covered your face with your hands and started saying things that made it sound like you were seemingly regretted. You like you seemingly regretted being violent while it was happening. I couldn't believe it. I mentally checked out. That's why I couldn't open my eyes for 45 hours where you were doing what you were doing to me. While I was crawling away, you got a knife. It was to cut the ropes free. It was cut the ropes and free myself. Wait, when I was crawling away to get the knife, it was to cut the ropes free and Oh my God. When I was crawling away to get the knife, it was to cut the ropes and free myself. Okay. So she was tied up and she could crawl away enough to untie herself with a knife. I had told you this. I've tried hard to repress it from my memory throughout the years. I've wondered if you've done this to others. I had my suspicious suspicions way back when you said you felt you were losing control and wanting to drag the flight attendant off the flight you were in the back, you were on into the bathroom. I couldn't escape it no matter how hard I tried to forget. It crushed a part of my soul and ripped it apart. Nobody will ever understand. It's near impossible to live with. It made me have intrusive, unaliving thoughts for years. And for years, you've been trying to take my voice away and silence me. And it made me want to scream and die. You told me, you recently told me you tried to uh, fuck a vanilla girl the way you did me that one time and that she wasn't into it. I wondered if you were realizing what you were saying. You're very smart about the girls you pick for that. They're vulnerable, the kind that won't speak up. The ones you think can, you can get away with it are the ones you think you can get away with. I'm terrified how many others that there might have been and will it be, and it, well, sorry, oh my God, and will be if something doesn't change inside of you, but I'm not sure you want to get better. Army wrote back. Oh my God, okay. <clears throat> If you felt more uncomfortable than I thought or more uncomfortable than we discussed afterwards, I'm so sorry. I think it's a good idea that we talk about it to make sure we get on the same page. I can't tell you how sorry I am. So that implies like this is the first time he's hearing about it, right? Because she implied in her email that he was remorseful in the moment, which maybe, 
I don't know. Okay, just listen and take it in, I replied. It's been incredibly hard and taken me a long time to gather courage. There were times when it, was a, it wasn't it was actually brutal, when you would just walk in and immediately whip your dick out and stick it in my face and demand blowjobs. And I'd pull away laughing nervously, and you'd bring it closer and give puppy eyes and say, please, this isn't acceptable behavior. And the thought that you've put God's, God knows how many women or how many girls through that haunts me. Okay, okay, just to be clear. Just to be clear, okay? This alone, right? Like, oh, you take your dick out and just assume I was gonna give you a blowjob? Why would that haunt you? The thought you've put God knows how many girls through this haunts me. Why? That a guy walked into a room and whipped out his dick and was like, blow me? Like, why? Because if you're sexual partners and you're intimate, that's not like... I mean, is that weird? I don't know. It's your relationship. Okay. I'm scared what else you could be doing to other women that you don't admit to, which is one of the main reasons I felt compelled to confront you about that type of behavior. You even said that it was because a problem. Wait, you even said it became a problem because you can't stop yourself. Okay. Well, that's not good. You will never comprehend the extent of psychological and emotional damage you've done to me. I don't think you care about women you hurt. Oh, I don't know how many others there are out there. He might not care about them, by the way. I'm not sure he does. I don't know what it will take for you to want to stop hurting women. Army wrote over an email the next day, March 2020. You've been open and honest with me about how you're feeling and I want you to feel heard. I know you had to deal with a lot of shit as a result of me and I'm truly, and I'm sorry, truly. You didn't ask for that. You don't deserve that. And I'm sorry. And I will be sorry and regret how I handled my side of things forever probably thank you for telling me and thank you for calling out my bad behavior i should have taken what you said about how you felt felt and feel without trying to defend myself how can i make amends a hmm not gonna lie i'm sorry i replied <laughs> sorry i read that text i read the text it says not gonna lie that sounds hot chat stop distracting me okay i replied me being well it can be hot in a consensual situation everything is hot in a consensual situation guys People pee on each other. Like, for the record, people pee on each other. They get tattoos with each other. They do orgies with other people. If it's consensual, anything can be hot. I mean, people give blowjobs while people are on the toilet. It's called a blumpkin, and it's disgusting. But people do it, okay? I don't care what you're doing. I care if it's consensual. I also care about your ability to have conversations about your own consent. Okay? So just relax, okay? It's not, don't ick other people's yum, okay? But also make sure it's consensual. And I don't know that he cares about any of these women because it sounds like he barely cares about himself, obviously. Okay, now, toxic people. Okay, guys, you can be in a toxic, abusive relationship that also doesn't include like the end of someone's life or grape or anything else. Like, there's so many things that could happen in a toxic relationship that doesn't necessarily need to go. Like Dr. Kirkonda said that about gaslighting how gaslighting can occur. And it's one of those things where that person doesn't necessarily, like it happens sometimes, like things happen in a relationship. So the question is, is it something you need to tolerate? Here's my, like, here's my most blunt opinion. If you're in a compatible relationship, these things probably aren't going to happen. If you're with a healthy partner, these things aren't going to happen. They do happen when you're with unhealthy partners or you yourself are unhealthy. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, this isn't healthy. It's not that the fantasy isn't healthy. It's that the relationship around the fantasy isn't healthy, right? It's not that the kink is unhealthy. It's not that the porn is unhealthy. It's not that drugs are unhealthy. It's your relationship with these things. It's not that your relationship, okay, can't be healthy, but obviously you're doing a very bad job of making it healthy. So again, she is an unhealthy state right? She's not blocking him. She keeps going back to him. She blocks him and unblocks him. This is why I say it takes two to be in a toxic relationship, right? I mean, ultimately there's no indication of like grooming that I can see. And what I see instead is like two grownups who involved themselves with each other. She knew he was married. She was willing to cheat. Okay. I don't think, can you groom someone who's willing to cheat with you? That feels stupid, but maybe right? Like, I guess you can brainwash people. By the way, the other day on stream, I said, can you groom adults? I always thought it was considered brainwashing, but now I'm realizing like brainwashing is different than grooming. So then I was thinking about, oh, like when I think about adults being groomed, I think about brainwashing, but I guess it could just be grooming. Okay. So just for clarification, 
So again, this is what I say, like, I am so grateful that my life doesn't look like this at all. But there are people who want their life to look like this. And they think they're good at relationships. And they burn bridges with everybody. Okay, so let's keep going. Me being honest, it makes one of us, you don't learn. You only care about your self-interests and don't care about how much chaos and pain you cause. Even though you're still in denial about your actions and want to blame others, you've permanently damaged me. And I can only hope there aren't too many gr other girls you've abused uh, suffering in silence. You need to stop hurting women. Okay. Oh, sorry. I skipped this part. Me being honest makes one of us. You don't want to learn. You only care about your self-interests. Okay, then I will never forgive you. Army tried calling me numerous times. So here's my theory, right? What if he's in this toxic fantasy relationship and then she writes this long email and he goes, oh my God, wait, wait, are, is she serious? Like, are we actually having problems? And then he has the realization, like she's accusing you of not fake grape. Like my brain is wondering if he thinks she's dirty talking with him. Is that fucked up? Like a part of me is like, does he think she's dirty talking with him when she's like, you graped me? And he's like, I know, I graped you. And she's like, no, you graped me. He's like, I know, I graped you. Like, does he think she's dirty talking? Because this is the first time in the way that she writes out their conversations that he's like, wait, what? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, n like he, this is the first time he sounds like he's getting sober. Do you guys get it? Look at the way that the texting even changed. Like the way she wrote out the article. So big, big email. He's like, wait, what? He writes a very like normal sounding email. Hey, no fantasy, no nothing. Like, hey, you did not deserve if you felt that way. Then she goes, I'm never going to forgive you. And then he goes, wait, what? And then Ar Army tries to call me numerous times. Okay, declined. Huh, fucking call me back, he messaged. I communicated that I wasn't ready to talk to him. No, you need to answer the damn phone. Very different than anything that he's written before, Right. He sent me glamorous photos of him from a magazine photo shoot. I replied that his face triggers me and ended up reaching out to the unaliving hotline. An anonymous graphic rape allegation against Army surfaced online in 2020. It shattered me. He called the allegation made up and dumb. The grape allegation sounded so much like what you used to do to me when I was certain it was true when I read it. And I was certain it was true when I read it. I messaged him. I was so worried because you went too far. So, so you're dealing with a guy that you claim graped you in your head. You saw another woman come out with it. And then you messaged him that you graped me. Interesting. Okay, fine. Maybe. Humans do all kinds of things, okay? I'm not going to judge. Um, the story about how I went too far is benign compared to that. I just a bit aggressive. And when she said, stop, I stopped. No grape. All consented sex army claimed, as usual. Then screenshots message between Army and another woman who had been bullied into silence in 2018 resurfaced again in 2020. We had to kill the story about it with several outlets, Army wrote. I'm driving out to the desert. I'm leaving town to get away from this conversation specifically. He continued and went to the motel to set up in a small town in LA. And I responded, he's so dumb to think. He's so dumb. I responded, it's better not to hurt people rather than worry about silencing them. I mean, based. A Los Angeles district attorney declined to prosecute him. Sexual assault cases are often difficult to prove. True. In this case, prosecutors conducted an extremely thorough review. The statement read in part, even though I don't know who those prosecutors are and they've never spoken to me. Another woman took out a restraining order. Ooh, okay, that's good. Restraining orders, by the way, anyone can get. Like my stalker tried to get a restraining order against me and I was like, get one. I don't want to talk to you. Like the irony is that like you're, and she didn't, it didn't go through. But like you can get, as far as I know, because I wasn't there for it if that happened. Can you get a restraining order without the person knowing? No, of course not, right? I've never gotten one. But like, she, that's what I'm saying. Like people can get, try to get restraining orders, but you also have to prove that you can't be around them. So if she got a restraining order that does give credence to her situation, but it also could mean nothing, but it also could mean something, right? So this is important. Um... And I never knew that until I was court in court for restraining orders. And I didn't realize like how it works. It's so weird. The court system is so weird. It's very intimidating. But okay, if he has a restraining order against him, that is not good, right? Now, the other women I'm concerned about, sorry, the stalker. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Bryson, the stalker. Um, I want, I am curious about this. Like I am curious about the other women because they might have an actual case. And then this girl might just be, clinging to it, 
right? Um, Army Hammer set to appear in court over a new sexual misconduct claim. The actor had a restraining order against a case against him dismissed on Wednesday after he and a 26-year-old accuser failed to appear at court. The woman claimed Hammer had choked me during sexual intercourse that led me to lose consciousness. Okay, first of all, that could just be a night at the dungeon, right? That's the problem is like, well, was it consensual? Because like if you watch, and this is the example I give because it's non-sexual. If you watch Jackass, there was a lot of consensual, non-consensual activity that happened during that show that triggered a lot of people, that was scarring for people, that traumatized people. And yet they came back for three, four movies. And we need to have conversations about how we put ourselves in situations, maybe because we're desperate for money or maybe because we think it's funny or maybe for a lot of reasons. But like Jackass is like BDSM for vanillas, like in some ways, you know, because BDSM can be non-sexual, but it's like you watch people hurt each other on purpose and then laugh because they think it's funny. Yeah. Now add in a power dynamic and add in somebody like making you wet at the same time. It's like it's a perfect recipe for it to go very well or very badly. You know, OK, the actor had a restraining order. OK, they didn't go to court. Ugh, can I not? OK. A judge dismissed a restraining, this is Rolling Stone, a judge dismissed a restraining order against Army Hammer on Wednesday after the actor and 26-year-old woman who accused him of choking her unconscious during a sexual encounter both failed to appear for court hearing in Aspen, Colorado. Oh, so they both didn't show up. The woman whom Rolling Stone is choosing not to name filed paperwork in Pitkin County on February 1st. The accuser did not reply to a request for comment. Earlier this month, Hammer insisted in an interview that all his sexual encounters were consensual after he was accused of rape, having violence, base kinks, and cannibal fetishes. Or fetish. It's probably not a fetish, right? The judge had granted a temporary restraining order February 3rd and noted on Wednesday that both parties were absent. The case would be dismissed. The judge added that the woman could refile if she chose. Army's attorney, Andrew Bettler, Brettler, had previously denied the woman's accusations of Rolling Stone, asserting that Hammer, di Hammer didn't even... Hammer didn't know the woman and that the... And that Hammer had proof that he was not in New York City on the date alleged in the application for the order. Mm. We do not anticipate that the court will be granting the restraining order. Okay. In the woman's application for the restraining order, she claims that she and Hammer had a consensual sexual history in which they agreed to use a safe word and make signals in situations where it was too much for one of us. Okay, that's good. During one encounter last summer in New York City, the woman alleges Hammer choked me during sexual intercourse that led me to lose consciousness. According to her restraining order application, noting her previous encounters with Hammer, the woman alleges Hammer's violent behavior got worse, but this was the first time where I had felt that this went entirely too far because I begged for him to stop and, develop, and deployed our safe word and tapped him on the shoulder. Ooh, all good safe words, by the way. Okay, all good safe words. Tapping on the shoulder... Um, saying the safe word if you can't, very, okay, that's really good. And New York has a great BDSM scene, I've heard. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's great. Okay. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Mm, okay. The woman uh, claims Hammer was under the influence of alcohol and ecstasy and ketamine during the assess alleged assault. On January 27th, she alleges Hammer had reached out to her after months without contact, saying, I would like for the contact to stop. Oh, no. She said, I would like for the contact to stop, she wrote. In her application, the woman identified herself as a victim of sexual assault. It had been two years since Hammer had effectively shunt, was effectively, had been effectively shunned from Hollywood and his career derailed over allegations of sexual assault and cannibalistic fantasies. Once a leading man in films such as Call Me By Your Name and Rebecca, the 36-year-old was swiftly dropped from several high-profile projects and briefly began selling timeshares in Cayman Islands to maintain income while well, he tried. His fall from grace came after Effie, an anonymous Instagram account called House of Effie, began posting dozens of screenshots of explicit DMs allegedly between the two. Amherst, Hammers seemed to be engaged in a years-long affair with the woman. Now I'm very confused. On Piers Morgan, did he not say they were in a 10-month affair? Am I stupid? And then Effie in his text messages did make it sound like it was years. But did he not say? Did he not say in the Piers Morgan interview it was 10 months? What? So Hammer seemed to be engaged in a years-long affair with this woman, according to the alleged messages, repeatedly discussed his sexual fantasies of great violent acts during sexual encounters and cannibalism. More women subsequently came forward to detail their alleged unsettling relationships with Hammer. Influencer Paige Lorenz 
claims that she and Hammer began dating in 2020, September 2020, and shortly after, Hammer announced his separation from his then-wife, Elizabeth. During the few months they were together, Lorenz claims Hammer had discussed eating her ribs and had carved a A near her pubic bone with a knife licking her blood from the wound. Okay, but that could mean anything. Beauty app founder, by the way, I think he's trash and you should block him. I am not defending Amy, Army Hammer, but this sounds very sexually repressive to me. So I'm very like, I'm very, mm, you know what I mean? Like he sounds incredibly toxic and basically just very unsafe. But these women also sound very sexually prudish. So I'm confused about like, what's the issue? Like, is the issue that he did scarification? Because you might want to talk to tribes all over the world that do that. That can't possibly be the issue. What about tattoo artists, body modifications? Like, come on, have we not normalized tattoos yet? Like, what are we doing? So is that the problem? You know, beauty app founder Courtney, who alleged that while dating Hammer in the summer of 2020, the actor had love bombed and manipulated her into participating in extreme BDSM sexual acts, things that frankly scared me. Oh, I believe that. After breaking up, she claimed she checked into a month-long intensive therapy program for PTSD. Okay, I do believe this is possible. Right? Like, he sounds incredibly toxic and incredibly horrible. And I think he was downplaying it in the Piers Morgan interview, which is where we got the creepy vibes from, right? Like the fake vibes. I am not taking Army Hammer's side. And these women, I think I feel for them because it sounds like they were not prepared for this type of relationship. And I'm letting you guys know that this could have gone way better or way worse. But this is what happens when toxic people have a relationship with you, whether it's vanilla or BDSM, they scare you. They love bomb you. It's mutually usually toxic because you're participating because healthy people don't stay in these types of relationships. Healthy people get uncomfortable and they usually leave. It takes a very long time for, in my opinion, in my opinion, I'm, this is not from a psychological perspective. I'm not a therapist. This is from a human perspective. I deeply believe that healthy people see bullshit in front of them and traumatized people are pretty good at seeing bullshit in front of them. But also when we're unhealthy, we make excuses for people's behavior. And so we tell ourselves, oh, we're wrong. It's just us. We have like a toxic relationship with people pleasing. He's not that bad of a guy. He probably doesn't mean it. Maybe, maybe it's not, maybe it's not as bad as I think it is. I get it. I get it. I get it. I've been there, girl. And I'm telling you right now, for me personally, when I got healthy enough, I also stopped putting up with a bunch of stuff because I realized like, no. And sometimes I'm even overly cautious and sometimes I'm too lenient. I'm still working on it as well. Sometimes I want to believe in the benefit of people, but also I'm going to be extra cautious because I just can't take the risk. I can't take the risk to do this emotional labor for these immature boys that are so toxic, they're going to hurt you. But also think about the women they attract and think about the women they're with and think about the women who hear these men bragging about how they serial cheat. Think about the woman who's willing to date Sneeko at this point in his life after everything that's come out. Think about the woman that's willing to date a destiny who's cheated on all his partners he's ever dated as far as I know, right? According to his own storytelling. I don't know. Sneeko, who's cheated on every girl he's ever dated. Just think about the women who are willing to know this and see this and date. Think about the women who choose Andrew Tate. <clears throat> Like you would have to be so in a bubble, so isolated from these online personalities to not research them to know their life. Think about the women who are willing to date Myron. Like how much research did you have to do on these guys in order to go on a date with them? What kind of a girl are you that you would date them? Because women can be just as bad as these men. Just because she's a woman does not mean she's not just as bad as these men. Because if you're willing to date these men, protect these men, fight for these men, vouch for these men, like at some point, you're just complicit. The question is, if people aren't perfect victims and nobody is, right? If if people can be imperfect victims, which everybody is, is there a victim in this story that needs help that isn't like therapy? Is there is there a is she a victim to Army Hammer in a way that he needs to go to jail? Or does everybody in this situation need major therapy? major mental health reconstruction, right? Because I feel like everybody involved in this like needs deep, deep work. 
But I don't know that anyone here needs to go to prison. Is anyone breaking any laws here? You know what I'm saying? Maybe they are. I'm also anti-prisons. I believe in rehabilitation centers. So those people should go to rehabilitation centers. Also, you can get PTSD from a good experience that went badly. So that's also important. And I, I think like this is why, again, a lot of people just choose their peace because people are messy. People are messy. This is messy. It's messy. But my heart goes out to the girls that were impacted. Not Effie. I have a feeling she's lying. But the other girls, my heart goes out to them because I have a feeling they were deeply unprepared to date somebody like this. Right? <clears throat> Effie appeared at a press conference alongside Gloria Aldred in March, accused Hammer of raping her over the course of four hours in Los Angeles, April 2017. I thought he was going to kill me, Effie said. Hammer denied that he assaulted Effie, claiming the encounter was consensual and preplanned. The same day, the Los Angeles Police Department confirmed it had opened an investigation into the claim. As, for this, as of this week, this is an old article, the investigation is still ongoing. So the investigation concluded. They found no evidence against Army Hammer. He was free to go. Okay. So that's where we are there. Um, Army Hammer will not face criminal charges. This is 2023. So the, this is, they did not decide to press charges on this. I'm curious, what was the girl's name? This is Effie. These are text messages from Reddit. Let's see here. Okay, where, who was the girl? So this is that girl, 20 followers. Who was the girl? Who, okay, hold on. Hold on, I got this. Hold on, please hold. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna turn out our- A little loud. I keep GMA covers. It says, Army Hammer's estranged wife speaks out. This is one year ago. Story. Actor Army Hammer's estranged wife speaking out for the first time about her split with the star right on the heels of an interview he did about the allegations that derailed his, his career. Stephanie Ramos here with the details. Good morning, Stephanie. Hey, good morning, George. After 10 years of marriage, Elizabeth Chambers filed for divorce from actor Army Hammer in July of 2020 during the pandemic, soon after those dark allegations emerged against him. And though their divorce is not finalized yet, she says she is moving on and making it clear she will stand up for what she deserves. For the first time since filing for divorce from actor Army Hammer, Elizabeth Chambers is speaking out about moving beyond the breakdown of their tumultuous marriage and into a new era. The See, if anyone would know, it would her. It'd be her. I feel like if anyone knows the real truth about Army Hammer, it's the wife who's been with him for a decade. Let's be real. She knows. If she knows something, she knows something. In my opinion, but maybe not because like people are married to serial killers and they don't know. See, that's the problem. Would she know? Mother of two telling Elle magazine, the last thing I ever want to do is let someone else's actions, which have nothing to do with me, make me angry. Chambers distancing herself from the onslaught of disturbing sexual assault and abuse allegations against Hammer. Elizabeth was learning about the accusations against her ex-husband as the rest of the world was. Elizabeth's sister, Catherine, told me that his accusers were actually reaching out to Elizabeth in mm. real time. And Elizabeth reached out back to them. I don't want you to regret anything. And I hate the thought that maybe I may have messed you up. Chambers says her relationship with the Call Me By Your Name star. Also a controversial movie, right? Because he's like a grown up with like a kid. Officially crumbled as they quarantined in the Cayman Islands with their kids during the pandemic, months before the allegations surfaced. My heart was broken in nine million pieces. You can give, you can love, you can be there for someone, but you also need to hold people accountable for their actions. Hammer, who entered rehab in 2021, also recently giving his first interview in two years, admitting to an extramarital affair with a woman he met online in 2016, but denying all the accusations of wrong oh 2016 so it was a years long affair because yeah the assault took place in 20 oh well a year long affair hold on doing telling airmail when it comes to his sexual relationships every single thing was discussed beforehand chambers is moving on with a lot of different projects okay that certainly wasn't the interview i was hoping for okay hold on 
Uh, okay, this is the wife. Elizabeth Chambers. Is that his wife's name? I want to know what are her, what are the uh, army amendment. You hold on. Uh, we're on my podcast a year and a half ago. So this is Paige. So Paige is the other girl that accused him of stuff. Oh, yeah. you had a relationship with Army Hammer. That was a huge, like, public There's thing. There's a documentary coming out soon about it. Stop. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy. Like, are we going to talk about it in a second? You can keep going. No. No. <laughs> Wait, you can't just say that. There's no, like, lots it's just, so there's a, a documentary coming out about his whole family. And I've been asked, like, a lot by the media to comment on it. And I'm, I'm in it. Like, I think clips of me and the things that I've done and some statements I've made in it. But I decided to not be a part of it why oh. is that it, it was really hard for me like all of it was pretty hard for me like, traumatic the, it the situation was traumatic and then like the media aspect of it was super traumatic mm -hmm. i came forward because we'd gone photographed together we there were photos of me on my instagram that i had bruises on me and stuff people knew people knew well and there's so many other women yeah there right? were so many other women and i i did so i actually like Women were coming forward and I was sitting with my sister and we were beating and my sister's just the best and she's dating a girl and we were just all sitting there. Her and her girlfriend were sitting there and they were like, yo, like this shit's coming out about Army. Like, what do you, like, did this happen to you? And I was like, I make a joke out of everything. Me too. So I was just the like, worst I was like, shit. yeah, this shit's so insane. But like, yeah, like this is, these are some things he did. And my sister and her girlfriend were like, Paige, like that's not fucking normal. Yeah. And right. I was like, Thank you. I was muted. Thank you. Boomer Brittany moment. Thank you guys. Thank you. I appreciate you. I was muted. Okay. I just want to make sure we're not associating kink with abuse. So my concern is like, she tells her sister and the girlfriend like, oh, this thing happened to me. And I think she's the one who he carved the little initial in her hip maybe. And I'm thinking that they like, if they're just, are they just icking the kink? Or are they icking the abuse? Because the abuse is not good. But are they are they connecting the kink to the abuse? And so that's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned that when people are like, oh my God, it was so fucked up what he did to me. It's like kink. Versus, oh my God, what he did to me was so fucked up. It was abuse. Abuse is fucked up. Kink is just kink. You know, so I don't know when people are telling these stories, which one are they talking about? I was like laughing, but they were like, that's not funny. Right. Like, that's not funny. That's not cool. That's not kosher. That's not safe. That's not BDSM. Like that's just. Oh, fucking okay. So they know about BDSM. Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, okay. And weird and twisted. And like, mm -hmm. he's a sexual deviant. And it took for them. It okay. Well, I mean, isn't BDSM itself deviancy? I mean, let's be real. Okay. 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 To point it 100%, out 100%. And that's why people are like, oh, well, like you didn't say it like to begin with. And like you, you all of a sudden people started getting media attention. Then you, whatever, like jumped on. I go, no, like I had a conversation with my family. And then they were like, Paige, this isn't right. Cause I was so manipulated. I was love bombed. Mm -hmm. I was manipulated. I really thought that it was BDSM. I thought it was just like, oh. I thought there was this community of people that did stuff like this. Mm -hmm. There is. And I think there, there is, but like in the way that what you not, did it was no. not cool. No. Oh, oh, this is based. I believe her. I believe her now. I believe her. I believe her. I believe her. I believe, I do believe her. I believe her. See, this was it. This was what I was looking for. Somebody who validated, but also said like, I don't think that's what these people are doing because it sounds like he is very toxic and abusive. It sounds like he is so toxic. Maybe not prison worthy, but rehabilitation, therapy, deep work, IFS, whatever you got to do, let's go. Like Army Hammer needs a lot of work, right? But this is what I was like, okay, shout out to Paige. We believe her. Oh, no. um, and I like hadn't had a relationship with that 
type of like sexual activity. So I didn't know what was normal and what was not. Especially when it comes to- Yes. That is always my concern when people bring people into BDSM for real, for real, right? Because if you bring BDSM, people into BDSM for the first time and you don't do contracts, you don't sit down, you don't take classes, like even my mentor who brought me in, I mean, we never played together because she was doing a mentor role. And sometimes mentors play with their mentees. Sometimes they don't. We decided not to play together. She had me read like eight books before I could go to my first dungeon party. And it feels like ARMY is not doing that. So if this is the vanilla girl he like brought into BDSM, that's fucked up. And that's a problem. Look, I know you guys saw me slap Destiny and Abba slapped me on that one stream a couple years ago. And then that conservative BDSM girl who's very confusing to me accused me of violating Destiny's consent. Listen to me when I say this. That's not BDSM. For her to say that's BDSM tells me she's not in BDSM. Slapping people is not BDSM. And even for views and clicks, we called it BDSM because like that's what like would be funny. It's not actually BDSM. You're just slapping your friends and hanging out and joking around, right? I'm a boy. Slapstick humor is funny to me. It was funny and it should have been a funny moment. And I checked in with him. I made sure it was okay. Three people were there to witness it. The idea that I could have violated his consent on stream in front of three witnesses and I checked in with him is so offensive. But the fact that I never talked about this because Tree is useless. She's like a content creator who's just like a useless, weird conservative girl who's also a SW slash kinks. She's very confusing. I don't know what she does. We're not in the same BDSM bubbles. And she kept saying like things about me that weren't true. Like Brittany's not a dom. Brittany's not a top. Brittany's not this. Brittany's this. Brittany does that. She doesn't know nothing about me. I don't know what BDSM bubble she's in. I've never been there. I am in a very specific BDSM bubble. Like, I don't know if she's even been to Kinkfest, Folsom. I don't know if she hangs out with gay people. I don't know what her thing is, okay? But she had this whole rant she went on, which was so silly. Like, this is what I'm saying. We're talking about serious consent violations, and you're going to tell me a grown man in his 30s that I checked in with would ever say that? I don't think Destiny would ever say that I violated his consent in a real way. And the fact that Tree ran with that narrative is gross because then you're saying that on stream in front of three witnesses, a grown man who consented and I checked in with after had his consent violated right there on stream. Then what are we even talking about if we're talking about how to get consent? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a silly thing, but here we are throwing around accusations and I'm saying, I need to know what we're doing here. So the reason I like Paige it's because Paige said, I know people are doing BDSM. This might not be it. It's true. But people do do BDSM in a toxic way. People do everything in a toxic way. Monogamy. They do love in a toxic way. They do parenting in a toxic way. Remember, real BDSM is a construct created by people who think real BDSM is only safe. But BDSM is a construct too. Plenty of people have done BDSM for thousands of years in consensual and non-consensual ways. You don't just want to do BDSM. You want to do safe BDSM, safe, sane, consensual, or risk-aware kink. You want to do everything, monogamy. You want to do commitment. You want to do relationships. You want to do friendships. You want to have consent at the forefront of the conversation. That's the point, okay? So all of these conversations are going to be super convol like convoluted and complicated and just so gray and mushy if everyone's operating on a different level. And this is why humans are messy. They're so messy, you know? Oh my gosh, I've had someone try to use BDSM as a tool to sex traffic me. I researched and learned about BDSM through Brittany. Her content helped me keep safe in a new world I knew nothing about. Let's go. That's the hope. And that's why peer education is so important. And it's why I understand that nobody wants to give a fuck about Army Hammer in a world where people are always trying to take advantage of people, right? Like, I understand that, which is why I do like, I do bet he was so toxic and abusive and he probably just had no idea what was going on, but it doesn't matter. He like, this is the problem is like as adults, we do have to take responsibility for the things we do without like, look, it's not like you can ever be redeemed. And also you need to be held responsible by your values. I don't know if Army Hammer's values understand that he did something wrong. It doesn't feel like he thinks it. I think he thinks he's innocent. I think he thinks he's a victim completely almost. And that's the problem is like, you were pretty toxic though, bro. That's why I talk about when I was toxic. So I can say like, hey, I was there and I wasn't, thank God, this toxic. Oh my God. I was like very lukewarm compared to Army Hammer, obviously. Toxicity is a spectrum. I've never like cheated or beaten a partner. I've never done anything. I've never like, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, my toxicity was like about functionality, right? 
And so when you think about that and you think about the relationship you're having with yourself and other people, you have to remember that there's there's something good in the future. There's health. You can be a healthy person. You can be a functional person. It might mean realizing you can't do everything you ever wanted to do, right? It might lead to a lot of, wow, soul searching and maybe things won't look the way you thought, but things will always be better when you get help. Things will always end up better if you face yourself. Things will get better if you get healthy. It just, it will. There's just no disadvantage to getting healthy, but there are lots of disadvantages to staying unhealthy, right? You sex. 100%. And pushing boundaries and you want to experiment. Yeah. It's hard to know what's okay yeah. and yeah. what's not. I also just like wanted to be down. Like I wanted to be a down ass bitch. Of like, course. I wanted to be like a girl that would, and that's like a, that's something I've learned a lot. Like I've learned, I'm mm. a different person. When all yeah. that shit happened, like I'm a very different person. Like saying no is cool. Mm-hmm. And like being down all the time, is it hot? Like, no. like, and I like, well, I like, I'm, I'm into some stuff. Like I have things I'm into that's not vanilla, but like saying yes to everything is not the move. Like, no. But a, so a many guy, girls do, yeah. you know? A guy is not going to like you more. No. Because you're the girl that's down to right. do whatever the fuck And that's what wants. I learned. Like I'm, I learned that because you lose respect for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's the most valuable thing. Like, they might be like, wow, cool girl. But when you lose respect for yourself, it's like, that it doesn't even matter. Yeah. But what upsets me is the public and their opinion yeah, it's and really. them saying, yeah, you're just, you just want attention. Right. Why didn't you say it earlier? Why didn't you say it like this? The crazy what? thing is we already like, paparazzi together. Before all that came out, like I was already mm-hmm. like any any clout that I gained from him, like I already kind of had like we were pub- we were paparazzi. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't gain anything. Like the only thing I gained was like my family having to read that. Like yeah. that's with me forever. Like when I have kids, like that's on the internet. Like I'm not yeah. naive. Like that was gnarly. Yeah, it was gnarly. Like for the, my sex life and my like that deep. Na- dark shit to come out was like mm-hmm. not positive. The fact that the public and this is like this happens all day, all every day. Harvey Weinstein, Bill yeah. Cosby, like all of them. the girls have haters that come out. Well, yeah. it's men too, though. One hundred percent. It's they. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's when a woman speaks up about being abused in some type of way. Do we think Effie joined the club because she just was like, she muddled the waters, that Effie girl, right? So the Effie girl who said really disgusting things about the kids, I think she muddled the water for a lot of these women, which sucks. So now Army Hammer can go on this like, oh, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. But the truth is, is like, you can't, Arrest somebody for being toxic. And honestly, we shouldn't. We should get people help. But if they think they're innocent or if they don't know how to get help, that's the problem. Send these boys home to their mothers. Do not try to rehabilitate these men or women. Send them home to their mothers and never talk to them again. They are not your problem. They are not your problem. Yeah. Society, men in general, want to shut it the fuck down and make fun of it and cross it off. Yeah, because they think we're a joke. Like, yes, it has to be a joke. It has to be. She's trying to get fame. It has to be that. And how is that you? I think Effie probably was trying to get fame, right? If the stories are true about her being uh, blacklisted in L.A., right? No, 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 no. Cognitive, you said, I mean, she said she didn't have a problem with it and she was joking about it until her friends and family told her that it was consensual sex. Said she, no, no, she didn't say that. You misheard. She said there were other issues in how they were interacting that caused a lot of the problem. You can have parts of a relationship you consent to and parts of a relationship you don't consent to. Like she said, she's into BDSM. She's not into his toxic relationship with BDSM, which is different, right? Like you can consent to healthy BDSM. It doesn't mean somebody is allowed to then abuse you because you consented to something healthy. So she was confused, which is valid, right? If somebody tricks you or somebody says, oh, yeah, I'll be really good with you and then doesn't, like that's not what you're consenting to. Her family is not icked about, her sister was not icked out about the BDSM. Right. I don't know if you got to that part, but like she's not icked out about the BDSM. They said that was a healthy BDSM, which is important. Why was Elfie blacklisted? Allegedly, according to the Internet, could be wrong. Eh, Not Elfie, sorry. Effie 
was blacklisted from different clubs around LA because she was accusing other patrons of similar things or was causing issues. She also allegedly, 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 according to the internet, was also here on a faulty green card. I don't know if that's true. So, so again, the cool thing about Paige and their and her sister was that they're not anti-BDSM. They just wanted to be healthy. Hey, me too. Trying to get famous. I'm like, yeah, this is not po- this is not positive press, guys. Like the the details you get. Yeah, this is not positive press, by the way. Fuck everyone who thinks it's positive pre- press to be known as like a sexual assault victim. Look how men on the internet are trying to use that against me now. Fuck you. Fuck you for thinking it is good publicity for a woman to come out about her assault. When it is literally used against her at every oh, she must be upset because she was raped. Um, maybe I just disagree with you fundamentally on an argument, sir. Like you literally, they use it against you. So don't even come at me right now and say like women benefit from like talking about their assaults. They only benefit in safe spaces where people actually want to talk about how they're healing through their process. They don't benefit when a bunch of men are discrediting them and their opinions because like, oh, they're grape victims. Cool, bros. Very fucking cool. Boy bubbles suck and they know it. They're so toxic and they're not even interested in any way of having a real conversation. They just want to shut everybody down and be like, oh, they just wanted clout. You think this is good? This is not beneficial. This is not beneficial. Gay. Yeah, no. About what he did to you. You're like, oh, yeah, that happened because I was trying to be famous. Like, what is wrong? 100%. You know what it is? I think also he has a really cult following from one of his movies, Call Me By Your Name, which is actually like respectfully like a pretty amazing film for Mm -hmm. the gay community Mm, it's a good film i would say it's probably not great for the gay community the age gap relationship was very suspicious and it did a lot for the gay community because there was not a film like that Mm -hmm. and and that's that's him that's not him as a person that's him as an artist so but the cult following he has from that film with timothy chalamet who was also a cult following right created this gnarly storm of like right fuck this girl, like conspiracy theory, whatever. Like, I'm so this, I'm so that. Mm -hmm. But but I I also like, as a confident person, I knew that I have, like, I know why I have a career and it's because I'm good at what I do. Mm -hmm. um, With peace and love. I don't know who she is, but I'm curious. Okay, this was good. This was interesting. This definitely like humanized the process. Okay. So again, healthy versus unhealthy. Right? Whatever is happening with ARMY, it's obviously fucked up. This Piers Morgan interview was just such a little, ugh, it was so in bad taste. Look, ultimately, ARMY's obviously messed up as a person. And I'm glad we did this deep dive because it was a refresher for everything that I, I forgot or missed. We added in new victims' voices, and I think we can all agree, don't text ARMY Hammer. Don't engage with him. And actually, I take back even my hesitation to say, would I interview him? No. I do not care. I'm so tired of abusive and toxic men. Okay? And I'm not actually curious about how your brain works. You know what? I'm going to leave that up to the psychologists and the the neuroscientists. And I'm not going to engage. So Army Hammer, I'm so sorry. You may not email me. (laughs) That was a lot. And it is two hours past my bedtime. So please like the stream. And I really do appreciate you guys being here. What a wild ride. So I don't, yeah, Army didn't do anything that deserved jail, but he did a lot that deserves alienation, getting canceled, and having people be warned not to hang out with him. 100%. Look, consent is a very serious thing, but even when old ladies touch your hair in the grocery store, it's a consent violation. So let's not react, okay, with guns in the air over every consent violation, but also we need to react appropriately. We need to react appropriately, right? And that's the thing that I think people are missing. We have to have the right reaction to situations. And I understand as somebody whose hair is always touched, it can get very annoying and to the point where you almost want to yell at old ladies like, hey, you do that one more time, I'll chop your little fingers off and I'll eat them like Army Hammer. <laughs> that's a joke because he's a cannibal. It does get frustrating. That's why I say... I like philosophy and meditation and realizing like humans are going to human. They don't mean it. And I will be the one to tell them 
Also, maybe I don't feel like doing the emotional labor today, so I will ignore them. Or maybe I will feel like, you know what? You can touch my hair today because I feel nice. It is opportunities for us to make a decision to be our higher selves or not. You don't always have to be your higher self, but know that you can be. Okay. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for being here. In my head, in real life I'm in bed, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then